in a trailer. Where I was or how long I had been sleeping, I had no idea. Was I napping? Was I in a coma? Who knew? But I turned to my best friend as an American, the TV. I didn't seem to recognize my surroundings as I went searching for what I did not know. Until I found it. The frying pan. Somehow, I instinctively knew that I would need a weapon and that the frying pan would come in handy. After I got caught up on my favorite TV show, I decided to head out into the world. I woke up merely an unemployed gym rat, but my new profession? Killing zombies. Or, can you really kill them if they're already dead? Murdering zombies? Re-deadening. Re-deadening the zombies. Somehow I was not surprised to see them there. All I knew is that I didn't want them there anymore, so I got rid of them. Violently, with the frying pan and my feet. Somehow I knew that standing on the zombies would prevent them from doing anything. They would just lay there like a shark on its back. I took them on two, even three at a time. Shoving them, punching them, kicking them, smashing them with the frying pan. It wasn't long before I resorted to stealing from the dead. This guy had a great pair of military boots that I wanted, so I took them. Who was going to stop me? The dead guy? That I just re-deadened? I returned to my good friend the TV and read a book while I was at it, because I knew I would need to learn, and learn fast. For knowledge is power, and power is my name, Max Power. This is my story. My looting of the zombies was starting to make me look like a looter, but it was all in the name of protecting myself. Apparently, my neighbors were jealous of my attempts to better myself, so I had to dispatch them, or re re-deaden them. This guy was tougher than usual. After murdering Dozens of my neighbors, I finally found what I was searching for. A watch. I could finally tell time. Ah, an unwelcome guest. Get out of here. My newfound watch told me that it was very late and I was very tired. So I took a risk. And went to sleep. Would I wake up? This time I did. But next time, who knows. I decided to risk more TV and reading time. The knowledge would pay off later if I could survive. My skills were pro progressing nicely. But the undead are relentless and remorseless and re re all the R words and I had to kill them to get rid of them. Another R word. Ooh, an extra pair of booties. Mass murder is hungry work. After harp hopping from trailer to trailer, I decided that the, the front office building would make a good place to make my stand. So I quickly dispatched the HOA and moved in. The double front door would make a good defense. And the TV would be my new best friend. I quickly closed all the curtains so zombies couldn't see me. I quickly secured the perimeter. And hid the bodies of the dead. Just in time for my favorite TV show. Finally, some good luck. The radio already had the emergency broadcast system programmed. I knew I was going to need more supplies, so I headed back out to fight more undead and loot their stuff. I searched everywhere, even the burned down house. Till I finally found what I desperately needed, cigarettes. I broke yet another frying pan on another undead's face, so I had to go and grab another. It was getting late, so I decided to head home to rest my weary head. But the undead had other plans. We engaged in mortal combat. I was hungry, tired, panicked, wet, and a nervous wreck. But somehow, I still overcame. I decided to check the storage lockers that I found to my south. 
and used a pickaxe I found along the way to try to open them. I killed a few undead along the way and found some supplies that would set me up for success later, including all the generators I could ever want. Over the next few days, I went back and forth to the storage lot many times and cleared it out the best I could. I never found what I was truly looking for, a sledgehammer. But I did find a park ranger hiding in a room. And he was nice enough to give me a digital watch to replace my old-fashioned watch. I now knew what day it was and the temperature. We were making... This went on for several days until... Ah... Uh, I settled in for a long day in the house. I did some cleaning. I did some cooking. And, of course, I did some reading. Then I disassembled all the furniture in my house. And turned it all into spears. And it's a good thing I did, too, because somehow the chopper had brought the dead to me, even though the chopper could not see me. They had surrounded my base. I broke many spears, clearing them out. But clear them out, I did, relentlessly, without remorse. I re-deadened the dead. And took their loot. There were some close calls when my spears broke at bad times, but I was successful. I fought off the waves and survived. There were so many of them that I ran out of spears and had to resort to my pickaxe. But pickaxe them I did to death, or re-death. Now that that craziness was behind me, I found a car that I liked and claimed it by putting my stuff in the trunk. Unfortunately, the car I wanted didn't have the keys. So I learned to hotwire it by breaking down watches. Don't overthink it. From there, it was a simple matter of stealing some gas from a nearby Foss Oil truck and then hotwiring it. Um, maybe hot wiring it? This time for sure. Okay, but this time, right? Yes, finally. I started it up and headed back to my base. I spent a day or two loading all of my worldly possessions into my van, and then I set up a fire trap to try to clear out some zombies, but it did not go as planned. There just wasn't enough zombies in the area for them to catch fire. Womp womp. Now that all my possessions were loaded up, I decided it was time to move, and I decided that the factory nearby would make a great place for a permanent base. Unfortunately, I did not realize there would be just so many undead around. It took me a long time to clear out. Maybe I should have cleared it from my base first before I moved. Hey there, buddy. Working hard or hardly working? Oh, neither. I've heard of banging your head against your wall at work, but this is ridiculous. They say that banging your head against the wall burns 150 calories per hour. I wonder how much calories it burns to bang someone else's head against the wall. I had just decided that the smaller storage area of the factory would work better for my purposes than the large factory when I saw it. A duffel bag. I had to have it. So I took it. Things were going my way, slowly but surely. It took me multiple days to clear out around the factory and my new base, and I had to risk sleeping in my car. Fortunately, it worked out, and I woke up.
After finally clearing out the factory, I started making it my own. First, I put up some fences so that I wouldn't fall off the roof. And of course, I added some escape routes for emergency getaways, just in case. This was also a great way to level up my carpentry. I decided the upper level of the factory would make a fantastic area for my kitchen, living room, etc. And if I could ever find a sledgehammer, I could make it 100% safe. I had all the tools I'd ever need, except that darn sledgehammer. I had a pretty good view from my rooftop sanctuary. I felt relatively safe, so I started moving in and taking inventory of everything I had. And it was a lot. I couldn't make myself 100% safe without the sledgehammer, but I could do almost as well. I started barricading up all the doors and windows, and I started parking cars in front of them. I was no pro-criminal. I cut my hand breaking into one of the cars. But I was able to break and enter into a few cars and hotwire them and move them into position. I took the sink from the lower of level of the warehouse and moved it upstairs to my new living area. And then I plumbed it to a water catcher I had placed on the roof. We now have water. We are on our way to surviving long term. All this base setup made me hungry, so I thought I would hit up the local diner, but a, an alarm went off and sent me running. After things settled down, I looped back around and cleared out the looky-loos who had gathered nearby to see what was happening, and resumed my move. Unfortunately, my trip didn't work out that well, as the food was already rotten. The only thing that I got for my troubles was a nice jump scare. And some delicious salami. Mmm. I ate that right away. The trip wasn't a total waste as I picked up a popsicle fridge from the nearby gas station. And I returned to the gas station and stole everything that wasn't nailed down. And even some things that were nailed down, like the fridge. My kitchen was shaping up nicely. Next up, my new house would need a bed and a TV, and I thought the local farmhouse might have what I was looking for. I was also hoping for a sledgehammer, but it was not to be. I carefully checked the area for zombies, had a quick snack, and then found what I was looking for, a smaller TV with a VCR so I could play skill tapes. I grabbed it and head for my van. I decided that even though I'm living in the apocalypse, I deserve nice things. So I took the large fancy bed. Oh, I'm so fancy. I felt pretty good about the day's looting, so I head home to celebrate. Now that my base was starting to take shape, I figured it was about time to head into town. My first stop was the police station. I was hoping to get a bulletproof vest, but all I found were zombies and cigarettes, which I took, and lots of ammo, which I didn't care for. My next stop was the local blockbuster, or I mean, uh, hit videos or hit vids. But the locals really didn't want me there. I convinced them of the error of their ways. They decided they were going to steal my car. But I quickly disabused them of that notion.
Until disaster, my crowbar broke, and I didn't have a backup weapon on me. I quickly switched over to my hammer and started hammering their faces. The hammer is not an ideal weapon, and I really didn't want to use it. I wanted to save it for carpentry, but I had to do what I had to do, and we made it work. Finally, I made it to the block, er, hit vids, and I looted all the skill tapes that I could find. After I looted all the tapes I wanted, on a whim, I headed over to the chiropractor's office, and there I found it. How to use generators. I read it immediately. My salvation was here. I would have power. Yes. My survival wasn't assured, but we were taking a big step in the right direction with this find. I quickly secured my loot and made my getaway. I wasn't letting this loot go to waste. I spent a few days watching all my loot on the TV and reading some books. And then on day 26, I started organizing my storage and breaking down the warehouse and rebuilding my base from the ground up. I installed my bed and my TV. I built a bunch of new storage and I even built an entire new room up on the roof. This would be my new bedroom. All I had to do was furnish it. Days of building and nights of watching TV passed, and I had done it. I had lasted 30 days. I was safe for now. But survival was not assured. It was day 31. I had survived a full month of the apocalypse. Things were going well, but I still had a lot of work to do. I continued sorting and dismantling the warehouse inventory because it all belonged to me now and I could do with it what I wanted. And that's when I found it, the antique oven. This would serve me well later in the winter. It would be key to my survival. I installed it right away in the safety of my upper level. And I started collecting scrap wood and loaded up the fireplace with scrap wood. Now that I would be warm this winter, I set about getting a renewable food supply. A roof rooftop farm would serve me well, so I started to get to work. It took a lot of digging and hard work, but it would pay off later with renewable food. I had all the seeds I would ever need from the warehouse, so I decided to plant a variety of vegetables and even some fruits. I was in luck. It started to rain as I was working, so I would not have to manually water my crops. With my farm up and running, I decided to head back to my old base to pick up some things that I had left behind, including, most importantly, the generator, which I would need to power the gas station. While I was there, I cooked myself up some steak. I would need the calories to carry the heavy generator. After I had picked up everything else I wanted, I grabbed my generator. My precious, precious generator. It was as good as gold in the apocalypse. And I immediately used it to power up the gas station. I now had access to virtually infinite fuel. My survival was one step closer to assured. My next objective was to head into town and help the local post office. I heard there was plenty of reading materials here to help me learn. The locals were not pleased to see me. But I found what I was looking for, all of the reading materials I would ever need. My skills would flourish with these books. I still didn't quite have the zombie slaying confidence that I would develop later. So I decided to avoid this fight and made a hasty retreat. While I was in town, I decided to raid the local pharmacy. 
from the looks of things, I wasn't the first one to have that idea. But I made quite the haul. I had all the medical supplies I would ever need. I was leaving quite the body count in my wake. I wanted to grab one more load of supplies before I left, but the dead had other ideas. And I was so tired that my combat abilities were starting to suffer. So I ran for it. And quickly drove back to base to secure my valuables. I fell into bed and crashed without even sorting my material, my newfound gains. After I woke up from my nap, I started sorting through my materials, getting them into storage. And by that time, my garden needed tending, so I took care of it. I decided it was time to start trapping. Until disaster struck. I missed my rope and fell and broke my leg. This was quite the setback, but in the long run it may have been a good thing, as it forced me to stay home and work on my skills. I splinted myself up and started hobbling around placing traps. Foraging proved difficult with a broken leg, especially in the dark, but I made it work. I would need the supplies. And I was hoping for a comfrey to apply to my broken leg for it to heal faster. Fortunately, I had already cleared this area of zombies, so I didn't have to worry about being attacked in my weakened state. I also added an extra sh sheet rope to make sure this wouldn't happen again. And my now flourishing garden kept me busy as well. Since I was stuck inside anyway, I decided to grind tailoring skill. This would save my life multiple times later on, but I did not know this at the time. I was just waiting for my leg to heal. A couple weeks passed and I was starting to feel almost healed when it happened. I fell and broke my leg again. More time passed and I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to get out. I hobbled my way back into town and started clearing out the zombies. And that's when I saw it. A trailer. I would need this later. But it was an excellent find and I had to take advantage. The dead didn't want me to have my prize. But I convinced them to see the error of their ways. It took some, shall we say, clever driving? But I escaped with my prize. Over a month passed, and I woke up, and finally, at last, at long, long last, I was healed and back to full. Finally, back at full strength, I headed out because the bloodlust was overtaking me. I may have been a mild mannered, unemployed gym rat in life, but Living alone in the zombie apocalypse, I had become the zombie slayer, and I wanted to slay. So I did. I re-deadened every undead that I could find. And find them I did. Everywhere. They are billions! I killed them solo. I killed them by the twos. I killed them by the threes. I piled up their corpses. The only thing that could stop me was an alarm going off. I ran for it. Later in my adventures, this would have been a strategy, but for now, I had to get out of there. I still wasn't the com confident zombie slayer I would become, so I made my escape to regroup. And to regroup I did, and rearm. And then it was back out in the field. There were more undead to re-deaden, and I was the man for the job. I killed hundreds, 
and broke dozens of spears. Again. And again. I was growing bolder, more used to combat. I took on fights I never would have dreamed of previously. And I won them. There were a couple of close calls due to broken spears. But I persevered. Eventually I ran out of spears and had to switch to my nightstick. But that didn't deter me. Eventually, I quit, quenched my thirst for blood and turned my attention to more important matters. I needed a sledgehammer to secure my safety. My base was 90% safe, but I wanted to make it 100% safe. So I searched the hardware store. I searched the construction site. And I scoured my warehouse. But there was nothing. I even searched through the factory next door, and still nothing. The dead did not appreciate me poking around. But I won that argument. Eventually, I gave up and headed to the Gigamart for some supplies. There might be a sludge here, too, but there wasn't. Spoiler alert. Most of the supplies that I would have wanted were already rotten, but I picked up a few things. And killed a few undead. And had another close call, because of the spear breaking. But I was able to fight through them. Apparently, my efforts had not gone unnoticed, and I almost met my demise when I ran into a tiny tree. But fortunately, my car held up, and I was able to make my escape. Very slowly. I did not notice it at the time, but I drove right past the prize I was seeking. There was a sledgehammer on the ground there, at the intersection. Oh well, if only future Max could go back and talk to past Max. Somehow I must have known, though, because I took my frustrations out on the dead and almost got bit for my troubles. Hey, little guy, what you doing on the ground there? Here, have some stick. I woke up early on morning number 80... Unsure of what was going on, it felt like more like a week had passed as opposed to just one night. So I took some time to reorientate myself and remember what I was doing and what my progress was. At this point, I was getting tired of driving back and forth between town and my base, so I decided to set up an outpost in the outskirts of town for overnight trips. I originally thought to build my outpost at this house here because it was close to town and had a fence but then I changed my mind and decided to go to the two-story house a little farther away that I could make more secure as always the dead had other plans I had to fight my way through them They were relentless, but so was I. Eventually I fought my way to the house and started securing it. I began by closing all the curtains so no undead could see me. Then I set up escape ropes so I wouldn't be trapped. I began disassembling all the furniture. I would need the wood and nails. And I used them to barricade the windows. I also barricaded the door. This would be an inconvenience for me, but it would help keep the dead out. 
since I didn't have the sledgehammer to make it completely safe, I decided to double barricade both sides, inside and outside. That being done, I was able to sleep in my new base in relative safety. After acquainting myself with some of the new neighbors, I decided to head back to my main base. I needed to do some reading. I had skilled up. I was now becoming a Master Carpenter. After finishing reading Master Carpentry, I went back to my outpost and started building. I needed a platform for a rain collector for my sink. Of course, no base would be complete without power for, from generators, so I headed back to the storage lockers near my original base. And picked a couple up. One for the base, and one for the downtown gas station. I decided I needed another vehicle, so I went searching around the parking lot. And like an idiot, I punched the window with my fist and cut myself. Fortunately, I had plenty of medical supplies from my pharmacy raid earlier. I found a cab in relatively good condition and decided to make this my second vehicle. This time, I remembered not to punch the window when I broke in. It took a couple tries, but eventually I was able to hotwire the engine. It even had a full tank of gas. Things were looking up. New vehicle secure, I decided it was time to try out some guns. It did not go well. I did not know what I was doing. Fortunately, I still had plenty of spears from leveling up carpentry. I didn't give up, though. Unfortunately, all my popping off did was attract unwanted attention. Later, I would find this to be an effective strategy, but for now, I had fighting to do. Other than my dismal shooting, my skills were progressing nicely, and I alternated between leveling up and reading. I was now a Master Forager. It was day 95 and it was starting to get a little chilly, so I decided that I needed to get some firewood. I took my new cab with me and went out in search of a nice area to do some lumberjacking. I decided the area outside the storage sheds would be the safest place. So I started cutting down trees. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I loaded up the cab, including the trunk and all the seats, and headed back with my firewood. It was hard and tedious work getting all that firewood into my oven, and I'm not really sure how it all fit. I wasn't sure how much firewood I would need, but I had about 400 hours now. Now that I didn't think I would freeze to death, I decided it was time to start learning to metalwork. So I started dismantling things at the factory. One level down. And only eight to go. I disassembled everything in my path. And quickly skilled up. It was time to read again. But oh no, I didn't have the metalworking book I needed. I looked everywhere. No intermediate metalworking. I thought I might have remembered seeing it in the storage lockers at the storage place, but I was mistaken. Though I had to make a trip back to the post office, I was sure I would find it there. I gassed up the cab and headed out. The dead thought they could reclaim the post office, but I proved them wrong once again. I found what I was looking for almost immediately.
I took a little extra time and searched through and found anything else I thought I might need as well. Not wanting to waste a trip to town, I killed a few more zombies. One even tried to run away from me. And did some more looting. And I found a rifle. This would serve me well later. Later, but not now. Now I was still terrible with guns. Hey, I killed one! My poor shooting skills did more harm than good and attracted unwanted attention, so I made, made a hasty retreat. The next few days I passed doing maintenance around the base and foraging and trapping. And of course, tending to my garden. I even did a load of laundry. My first batch of crops was finally ready to harvest. I would eat well. I built an entirely new bedroom and plumbed it with a sink and everything. As I got ready for bed on the hundredth night, I was feeling pretty good. My skills were coming along nicely. I had access to clean water and renewable food, and I was relatively safe. I had survived for 100 days and killed over 700 zombies. But winter was coming, and the dead, well, the dead are always hungry. I woke up on the morning of day 101 and decided to continue leveling up my metalwork skill. So I grabbed some breakfast and my trusty propane torch and welder's mask and headed over to the factory and ate an entire box of cereal on the way, straight from the box. It was delicious. Once at the factory, I started dismantling everything I could find. Vending machines, refrigerators, microwaves, even countertops. All these countertops. These barrels lying around were fantastic for leveling up to. I had dismantled everything I could find and leveled up. It was time to read again. I wanted to start reading right away, but it was late at night and I was very tired. So I had a cigarette and went to bed. I awoke the next day to a thick fog and decided this would be a great day to get my reading done. So I did. I sat on my roof and read the entire advanced metal workbook. I decided to test out my new skills by building a little bit of storage. And I sorted through my materials a little bit. It was hungry work, so I made myself some frog meat salad. I had got the frog from foraging. I was looking forward to this meal. Yuck, this is bad. And then it was back to the factory. Get back to the mines. The lockers would be fantastic for dismantling. After that, the toilets were next. These are great sources of pipe. Source of pipes. Not even the urinals were safe. Neither were the showers. In the name of equality, I started doing the same thing to the women's locker room. And got a level up. One more and it would be time to read again. It took a few days to dismantle all the metal in the factory. And the subsequent offices. God, I was getting so bored. 
So I tried sprinkling some tailoring to l lighten things up, but it didn't work. I was still incredibly bored. How about some more tailoring? No, still didn't work. What about electrical level ups? Hey, we got a skill up. We can now read another book. This went on until I couldn't take it anymore. I needed to take care of myself for a little while. Though the next few days were spent recovering and working around my base. I got a nice farming skill up along the way as well. And I read my master farming book. And just my luck, it started to rain. I had just wasted all that time watering my crops. And now it was raining. After reading, I tr decided to, to, to do a little bit of exercise. And I alternated this with reading when I needed a break. I had several books to read, so I decided to keep alternating between exercising and reading when I needed a break. All that exercise caught up with me, and I woke up sore. So I decided to take the time to read my book. I had severe exercise fatigue. On the plus side, I was now a master farmer. To celebrate, I decided to cook myself some bread. I love bread! The keto life was not for me. I really wanted this bread. I ate the entire loaf at once. And it was delicious. And then it was time to get back to reading my advanced electricity book. Kept alternating back and forth between reading and exercise until I finished my electricity book. Which I then promptly burned. Uh oh, generator's getting low on fuel. Better take care of that. While it's turned off, we might as do do might as well do a little maintenance on it to make sure it doesn't explode. After I finished reading all my books, I figured I wanted to take a look at the school in town. I wanted to try to find maybe some skill tapes or some other books that maybe I had missed or magazines. So I loaded up my cab and got going. I hadn't really been to this part of town yet, so I was a little bit nervous about how many zombies I might find. Oh, how nice. A greeting party. Thanks for the welcome, but it's really not necessary. No, seriously. You did not have to go through all the trouble, guys. I approached the school with caution. Honestly, kind of terrified about what I would find. Hopefully I wouldn't have to kill any children. I mean, zombie children. You know, re-deaden them. You know what I mean. I'm not a psychopath. To my surprise, it was relatively clear inside. But not completely clear. This is what I was looking for, the bookcases. I looked around for any magazines that I hadn't read yet, or any skill tapes or anything that might be interesting. My skills were progressing very quickly, and I wanted to take advantage of skill tapes before I wouldn't need them anymore. Unfortunately, it didn't seem that the school had any. I stopped by the cafeteria in the kitchen in hopes of finding some food. But the only thing that wasn't rotten was the pickles, which I took. I continued my search through the locker rooms, the gymnasium, and the nurse's office, where I found some welcome medical supplies. I picked up a few supplies from the kids' lockers and desks, but nothing of consequence. 
With the first level cleared out, I decided to head upstairs. And found mostly more of the same. It was a relatively uneventful and unsuccessful trip. It was much less infested than I expected, and there was much less loot that I needed than I expected. Not wanting to waste the trip, I searched around the parking lot a little bit and found a car with the keys in the ignition and a quarter tank of gas. It was in relatively good shape, too. So I started it up and decided to use it for a little bit of Carmageddon. I ran over the zombies front ways and in reverse to save the durability of the car a little bit. I was really too tired to fight right now, but this was a great way to clear out some zombies. As a Sunday driver, I really couldn't get the gar car going fast enough to kill them outright, so I had to run over them a few times. After wiping out a pretty good sized group, I checked them for any loot, but I didn't really find anything. I felt like I was too tired to make it all the way back to my main base, so I decided to rest the night in my temporary outpost. I spent all that effort to make my outpost safe from zombies, so I might as well use it. Well, I mean, relatively safe anyway. I had spent a few days away from base, so it was time once again for some routine base maintenance, including farming. I had quite a bit of crops to harvest. I would eat well today. I also did some foraging and trapping. It paid off with some delicious eggs. My traps were not proving that effective, so I decided to build a few more. And it's always in the last place you look. My last trap had a rabbit in it. A delicious, delicious rabbit. I decided to fix up my gear a little bit when it happened. Max tailoring. My first maxed out skill. I quickly used my newfound skill to add the best possible strips of leather to my gear. I was at... Max possible protection now, and this would serve me well later. I wanted to test out my new protection, so I went looking for a fight. And find a fight I did. It was a dramatic showdown in the rain. I decided instead of going house to house, I would try to get them to come to me. So I yelled for them. I thought this little building might have a sledgehammer, but it did not. I had made a potentially grave miscalculation. I had exercise fatigue from my exercise before. This could very potentially be fatal. My yelling seemed to prove ineffective, so I decided to drive around honking my horn to try to get attention. It sort of worked. Hey. 
I broke a couple of spears on their faces, so I had to switch to my nightstick. But that didn't stop me. I kept whapping them in the face. And stomping them. Someone had to re-deaden these zombies. Might as well be me. The nightstick was proving much less effective than the spears. Fortunately, I brought extra spears with me in my, my trunk. And the re-deadening continued. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. Oh no, my spear turned on me. It almost got me killed. After driving around honking for a, a while, I finally found the fight I was looking for. Oh no, they're coming in from all sides. On a quick out of character note, my puppy Joey decided that now was a good time that he wanted to jump on me. So he was pulling on my arm while I was trying to fight this horde. So if you see me acting irrationally like that, that's why. <laughs> and I'm not really sure how I survived this fight. With Joey working against me. I don't know why he was teaming up with the zombies. But somehow we survived. And we cleared out quite a path here. I cleared out the trailer park of all the zombies. I felt this was my duty, as this was my place of origin. My hometown, if you will. It was day 117, and I had killed about a thousand zombies, and I woke up to my first snowfall. It was time for another trip back to town. I decided to double check the police station for anything of value. Now that I had figured out somewhat how to shoot guns. But there really wasn't a whole lot useful there. Heading further into town, I found quite the welcoming party waiting for me. This would be a tough fight. There were very many of them. But I got a plus one long blunt skill. Wait a minute. Isn't that usually supposed to be a fat blunt? fought my way through the horde. One zombie at a time. And that's when I saw it. The sledgehammer I needed. I just had to get through these zombies. But at long last, the sledgehammer was mine. My safety would be assured now. I quickly stored it in the seat of my car. And I got back to business. The business of killing zombies. And business... Well, business is good. I was conflicted. Part of me wanted to keep slaughtering the undead, but another part of me wanted to, me to take my sledgehammer back to base and make use of it to make myself completely safe.
in the end, Slaughter won. And I proceeded to wipe out another big area of the undead. Until I got tired. And I almost got myself killed. Fortunately, my armor protected me. Thank you, Max Tailoring. My shoes were destroyed, but fortunately I had extras back at the base. Don't ask me how that zombie got my shoe when she bit at my neck. I decided not to take any more risks, and my first stop was at my out outpost where I destroyed the stairs so that I could sleep 100% safe at night when I needed to. Next up, I headed back to my main base. Step one is, was to destroy some of the railing so that I could replace it with a wooden fence. And put an escape rope on it. Then I destroyed the stairs that led to my second level. I was now completely 100% safe from zombies. And it felt great. I added some additional flooring to my second level base, just to have a little more room for storage. I thought about building out the entire second floor of the factory, but I decided that would be a good project for another day, and I just didn't need it right now. Once again, I turned my thoughts to the coming winter. I wasn't sure if my rain collectors would collect snow or not, so I decided I wanted more of them just to make sure I would have enough water for the winter. So I built a bunch of them. And one for my crops as well. I was driving around looking for a new car that I wanted. I wanted a sports car when I decided I came upon the abandoned fire truck here and I decided to go ahead and turn the siren on and maybe attract some zombies. And attract a few zombies it did. Not as many as I was thinking it would, but a few. So I went ahead and took care of them. With that fun out of the way, I continued my search for a brand new car! This one's a piece of junk. Oh, this is nice! I had found my new vehicle. So I broke in. And then took the window off the other car to replace the one I had broken. There you go. Good as new. It took me a while to figure out how I was going to tow the car back to my base. But eventually I figured out that I needed the sports car to tow my cab. And we were off. I had yet another car to add to my collection. After I got my cab back to the base, I decided it was time to take the new sports car for a spin. So I gassed it up and we were off. And wouldn't you know it, some more good luck. A trailer. I had to have it. Well, I mean, I already had one, but I wanted it. It took some, shall we say, creative driving to get this thing in position where I could tow it. But eventually, 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 I got it. And we were off with another trailer to fill up. 
With all that excitement, it was time for another few days of maintenance, and I maxed out my farming. Very happy to see that. And I started building a new addition to the rooftop base. I wanted another room. I was thinking I would move my kitchen up here at some point. I built until I ran out of wood. Then I went some and got some more and kept going. I hit max carpentry while I was putting the walls in. This was a huge accomplishment. I was super excited. After I built up the base, the walls, and the roof of my new house, I decided to go into town and slaughter some more zombies. I didn't really feel like I needed had a reason to go into town. I just really wanted to kill some zombies. So I went and did that and then came back and got to work building once again. And I needed to read my metalworking book to continue my kitchen. After spending a few more days working around the base, tending my farm, getting some firewood and gas for the base, I decided it was time to head back into town once again. I tried luring them to me with shouting, but I had cleared out most of this area already. I killed them until my spear broke. And then I switched over to my pickaxe. Honestly, I think the pickaxe might be one of my one of if not my favorite weapons in the game. I found a cop car in really good condition and I wanted it. So I broke in. And then I didn't realize I couldn't get into the front seat. So I got out and got back in. By smashing yet another window. It had a gun in the glove compartment. I would make use of that. But first I had to hotwire it. Success on the first try. And it even had three quarters of a tank of gas in it. Very nice. Now let's go have some fun. I grabbed the gun and the ammo. And then I turned the lights and the siren on. This attracted all kinds of attention, and my gunfire attracted even more. But I wasn't very good with guns, so I kept missing. So I switched back to my trusty pickaxe. And once I cleared out the group that was chasing me, I decided to try my luck with the guns again. But that didn't work out, so I switched back to the pickaxe one. Back to pickaxe axe once again. It took me a minute to figure out how to reload this pistol, but eventually I did. You have to load the magazine first and then put the magazine back in. That being done, I decided to try it again on this nice little horde that was gathered around the police cruiser. I still didn't know what I was doing, 
So I was still doing more harm than good by firing this thing off. And now I had their attention. And I had not taken out a single one with the pistol. So I switched back to my trusty crowbar. I was trying to save the durability on my pickaxe. But maybe I should have used it for this fight. It was a tough one. I decided to try the gun yet again. Once again, I barely did anything with it because I didn't know what I was doing. And I just ended up with a bunch of zombies chasing me. Fortunately, the crowbar never lets me down. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Fortunately, I knew what to expect for the, the results of my crowbar. Okay, but this time for sure, right? Right? Oh, I winged him. I got one. Got two. Wing to third. I'm starting to get a little bit of damage in. I still haven't quite figured it out, but I'm getting a little bit lucky now. I'm doing a little bit of damage. And there's my first reload skill. Oops, I forgot to put the magazine back in. Winged him again. Come on, I can do it. I can do it. I believe in myself. Come on. Take him down. Time for Trusty Crowbar to take over once again. Just a few more to clean out. Would my gun work this time? All signs point to no. But my crowbar still works. I decided I like this strategy of having the police car drawing all the zombies to me, so I thought I would keep doing it. These guys are stuck behind the fence. If only I had a spear, I could poke them. Oh, past Max. This is future Max. If only I could tell you what to do. You are so close to figuring it out, but you just haven't got it yet. Stand still and aim, dummy! Can't you figure it out? Figure it out already! Stand still! There you go! You got it now? No. No, you don't got it now. Well, you better figure it out quick, because look what you've done. Look at what you've done. Oh, man. So many zombies around that police car. What are we going to do? I crept around, leveling up my sneaking, and light-footed, and nimble, and was hoping to fe peel off a few at a time, and was relatively successful. I decided to try to hotwire the truck nearby to maybe make my escape, or at least maybe do some Carmageddon. But it just would not work. The battery was completely dead. Yep, yeah, that thing is going nowhere. And I am not getting near that cop car.
I decided to sneak around while the zombies were distracted and maybe pick up some loot, but there really wasn't anything good around. There was no way I was getting back to that police car tonight, so I decided to just let it run all night and we'll see what happens later. But uh, I had to head back to base and get some sleep. It was getting very dark and I was getting tired. Rested, rearmed, and reloaded, I headed back towards the police car to see what I could do. I grabbed an already beat up car and decided to engage in some Carmageddon. I figured this would be the quickest and easiest way to get them away from my police car. That's my police car. There wasn't quite as many of them as it had appeared last night. Looked like they were dissipating because the siren had stopped. But I wanted to dissipate them even more with the hood of my car. had to be careful not to hit the police car while running over the zombies, so that made it a little bit harder. I was also concerned about the car dying and leaving me stranded in the middle of the Ford, so I decided to back over them a little bit and save the front of the car for a little bit. The car was dying quickly. But I really wanted to clean them out even more. I figured as long as I could keep them from surrounding the car, I could still make an escape if the worst happened and the car, the car died on me. I had thinned the horde out a little bit, so I decided not to risk it, and I got out and used the trusty crowbar to finish the job. I had eaten my Wheaties this morning, because I was one-shotting these zombies left and right. Oh no, the creepy crawlers! I decided I wanted to pile the zombies up. So I did. I was surprised to see the police car still working. Even the light bar. I decided to take another shot at shooting fish in the barrel. Ha! Get it shot. But I still couldn't quite figure it out. I missed most of my shots, even though they could not get to me. I decided to make use of the police car once again to attract the zombies to me so I wouldn't have to go searching for them and risk an ambush. They're coming out of the woodwork! Well, I wanted a fight, and a fight I got. I got everything I wanted, and then some. Oh boy, they just keep coming. I might have bitten off more than I can chew here. Here they come again. And I had cleared out this group. It was a hard fight, but I made it alive for now. Oh no, what have I done? I decided I wanted to do some more Carmageddon, but would the car take it? I wasn't so, so sure, but I didn't really think I had another choice. Look at them all. Look at them all, Anakin. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is not going well. get a head start and really plow into them or maybe plow into only half of them oh boy this is not good the car is not pushing through we might be in trouble here 
Let's try backing over him. Beep, 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 beep. Come on, car, you can do it. You can do it, car. Do I risk one more time? All right, we'll risk one more time. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's not going well. Come on, car. You can do it. Almost through. And we're through. And we'll back over him one more time. Oh, the car is flashing at me. It's just about done. All right, we better not risk this anymore. Let's see what we can do with our trusty crowbar. Here they come. Wow. Okay, we have done it. We have killed that horde. That was hard work. More creepy crawlies. And they're gone. Dare we, we risk this strategy yet again? Yes, I think I dare. Maybe we've cleared out most of them this time? Maybe? Never mind. There they are. Let's get out of here. We gotta regroup. They're coming from all sides. Alright, let's see what we're working with. How many of them are left here? Sneaking. Bam. Bam. As long as they're coming in one or two at a time like this, I am okay. I can deal with this. It is when they get those big groups that like that that it's really dangerous because I can get tired. And then they can get to me. Whoop! Oh boy, that was close. Am I okay? Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Bam. It's like they never end. There's just so many. They keep coming. They are billions. What the heck are those guys doing? They were like stuck on the fence or something. Okay, maybe I should stop with the police car already. It's drawing them from everywhere. I thought that's what I wanted, but maybe I don't. Not sure how we didn't get bit there. Ooh, are we okay? We're okay. That was a close one. Hey, this lady has a spear in her gut. Let's take it. Now we can poke people through the fence. This feels like cheating, but I mean, they're zombies, and I don't want to become a zombie. So, we gotta do what we gotta do. Just watch out behind you. They're sneaking up. Here's some more we can poke through the fence. 
Yes. Yes. Love it. What about you? Can we reach you? Yes. Love it. Aha, a fair fight. Uh, maybe not so fair. Thank you for walking up to me so where I could stab you through the fence. Don't mind me, I'm just sneaking up on you. Whoops. Uh-oh, we seem to have attracted attention. I took care of that group. No problem. And you too? And your little friend too. Oh, you want a piece? There you go. Yeah, I got something for you too. Bam! Seriously, where are you guys coming from? Oh, hi there. This is a pretty big group. Uh, yeah, let's panic. Oh, don't panic. Don't panic. Whoops. Missed. We're running into the tree. That's a bad idea. Oh man, there's just so many of them. We can do this. We can do it. And we've done it. Woo. So many of them that we're exhausted, but we have done it. I think it's about time to head back to base for a well-deserved break. Hi, Brain. What are we going to do today? The same thing we do every day, Pinky. Use our police car as bait and slaughter the zombies. I think today we'll try out the shotgun. Let's see if this works any better. Nope. 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 Oh, there we go. Got one. Nope. Nope. Click, click. Oh, no. Alright, pickaxe. Time to save the day. Well, thank you. Good old pickaxe. You never let me down. No matter how many zombies come, pickaxe always takes care of me. I've been on my own too long, I'm starting to talk to my weapons. Hey, we killed one! Alright! Can we get another one? Hey, we got another one! Alright! And we hit level 1 aiming. Maybe we'll actually be able to hit things now. Hey, we hit another one. We're on a roll here. It's a kill streak. Oh, now we're on a missing streak again. Keep firing! Keep firing! Keep firing! We're bound to hit something eventually. Man, I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Good thing I've got my crowbar. Crowbar and pickaxe. The best combination. Oh, is that guy still alive? I mean, undead. Redead. Now, well, now he's redead. If I ever figure out how to aim, it's over for you fools. Uh oh, I think we've attracted more unwanted attention. Or, well, I kind of wanted the attention, but maybe not this much? Alright, shotgun. Don't let me down this time. Yeah, as if it's the shotgun's fault. Hey, we hit something! Stand still, you fool! You fool! Wow, that guy's head was hard. It took three pickaxe shots to kill him. Oh boy. There's quite a few coming in here. I'm gonna, uh... Uh, strategic re retreat here for a second. 
now would be a great time to figure out how to use the shotgun properly. But at least I know how to use the pickaxe properly. On and on, I fought the zombies, switching between my gun, my pickaxe, my crowbar, any weapon I could find. I slaughtered them, hundreds of them, but it was never enough. There was always more. Until I just couldn't fight anymore. I was too tired. We had to call it a day. Miraculously, I was able to fight through the horde and make it back to base, and a couple days later... We had our first serious snowfall, and I was headed back into town. But that's when I realized I was terrible at driving in the snow. I figured this would probably be my last trip into town for the winter, or at least when it was snowy out, because I just was doing a terrible job of driving in the snow. I could not see the road, it was slippery, and it just was not going well for our hero. But Christmas was coming in a few days and I really wanted to get myself a nice present to celebrate. I had been alone for almost 200 days now, and I was getting lonely. I, just, I figured I deserved a reward. So where else would I head but the bar? This area should be relatively clear of zombies, because I had fought here often, but I decided to be cautious nonetheless. Once I was sure I was alone, I, came at, I went for my prize, all the beer and alcohol I could drink, or all that I could carry. I could drink a lot, but I wanted to grab it all. Beer, wine, hard liquor, bourbon, I took it all. I was treating myself. Don't look at me like that. I had been alone all this time. I deserved a little something. There was also a baseball bat that I could make use of, so I took everything. My Christmas present to myself secured. All I had to do now was survive until Christmas, which was not guaranteed. But survive I did, and when I woke up Christmas morning, I half expected to see a present from Santa. Maybe the apocalypse would be over? Maybe? Well, no, that didn't happen. Oh well, Merry Christmas to me, bottoms up. I started drinking. And drinking. And drinking. I was starting to get tipsy, but I kept going. I was really getting plastered now. Good thing I didn't have anywhere to drive. And it's not like I was going to get pulled over for drunk driving anyway, even if I was. So I kept drinking. I was drinking so much that I was putting myself to sleep. So I decided to take a little nap. I woke up sober and I couldn't have that. This was my holiday and I was going to celebrate. So I started drinking again. I drank myself to sleep a second time and when I woke up, Christmas was over. So I decided to get back to business. Unfortunately for me, back to business in this case meant exercising to get rid of the beer gut I had given myself. After a few days of exercising, trapping, foraging, and farming, it was time to get back out into the world again. So I gassed up the sports car and headed to the country club nearby. But the undead had other ideas, as always. But as always, I didn't let them stop me. There was another sledgehammer in the road. If only I had driven this way at the beginning, I could have saved myself a lot of hassle. I grabbed it. I wanted to have a backup, just in case. I was a little bit surprised and unprepared for how, just how many undead were in my way. I mean, who would have thought that there would be so many people at the country club at the time of the apocalypse? I 
I was relieved to see that the parking lot was relatively empty. I thought this was a good sign, but it proved not to matter. Once I got a little closer to the entrance, I saw them. They were everywhere. I could not believe how many there were. But there was nothing left to do but to stomp them. So I did. My car seemed to be attracting too much attention, so I decided to turn it off and go for a more sneaky route. I thought about hopping the fence into the back area, but it seemed too risky. Then again, what waited for me out front looked pretty risky, too. But I fought my way through them. There were so many, though. Every time I fought my way through a group, I saw another group next. But I had another problem. I was getting hungry, and I didn't appear to have any food left with me. This was a terrible oversight on my part. I started searching the cars around in the parking lot. But to no avail. There was no food to be had. Surely the Sp Spiffo truck must have some food, right? Well, it had one can of pop in the trunk, which I drank quickly. It was better than nothing, but it wasn't going to help me for long. I kept breaking into cars and searching. But there was nothing. Not a single piece of food in any of these cars. I thought about trying to fight my way inside to find a vending machine or something, maybe, but it just looked too risky with my health in de je jeopardy because of the low food. Now I was getting tired, too. I had no choice but to go back home and rest and reload and get ready to come back. Better equipped to handle the situation. And that's exactly what I did. I rested and reloaded and re-equipped myself and headed back. Things looked just as bad as when I left, but there was nothing for it. I had to start clearing them out if I wanted to get into that country club. At least it seemed like their death balls had dissipated a little bit, and maybe we could fight them a few at a time instead of all at once. On the negative side, now I didn't know where they all were, so they were coming at me from all sides, and it was, quite frankly, a little terrifying. I found the main group. It was too close to the door for me to do anything, so I tried to peel off them. But they did not want to be peeled. They wanted to stick together. I started making a pile of corpses in front of the building. The zombies were kind enough to trickle towards me so I could pile them up. This was start going to start to smell pretty soon. Fortunately, I didn't need to stick around that long. I was starting to question if this was even worth it. When I finally got the attention of a few from the large horde. So I took care of them. Unfortunately, I missed the pile, but that's okay. We started a new pile. Finally, I fought my way into the building. I had just now made it into the building after all that fighting. You've got to be kidding me. And no rest for the wicked. The inside was full of zombies too. I decided to bring my car up closer to the door. And I decided to honk the horn along the way to try the, to draw the zombies out of the building. Because I do not like fighting inside. And guess what? It worked. Maybe a little too well. Maybe. Just a little too well. Here they come. From all over the place they streamed. 
And some even came up from behind me and almost got me. That was a close one. I couldn't believe how many were coming at me from the area that I thought I had cleared. And now I was in trouble. There were a lot of them, and they were between me and my car. So there was no quick escape for me. I would have to fight my way through. That was a close one. This fight was filled with close ones. But eventually, I started to whittle them down to a more manageable number. I was starting to get exhausted from all the swinging, but the numbers were thinning. If I could just hold on, I could do it. And I had done it. I had defeated them all, at least as far as I could tell. The fog had rolled in, and I could no longer see what was in front of my face. I took a little break and then fought my way back through the fog. I literally fought zombies all day, killing dozens of them. And it was wearing on me, on my mind and body. I couldn't take much more of this. But the undead are relentless. They just kept coming and coming. And I kept slaughtering them. But it was wearing on me. I got slower and slower with each zombie. My swings losing their power. I had to do something, or this would be my end. So I parked my car as close as I could to another car so no zombies could get to me, and I slept. I needed it badly. I wasn't safe, but I needed the rest. I had to risk it. And the risk paid off. I woke up. Well rested and with a clearer mind, I decided to give up on the idea of getting into the country club and decided to just take a driving tour. So I drove around and took in the sights. After exploring for a little bit and killing a few more zombies, I decided I had had enough of the country club and that it was time to head home. It was New Year's Eve and I had arrived back home just in time to celebrate the new year. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! I spent New Year's Day the same way I spent Christmas Day, drinking myself to sleep. And then waking up and getting drunk again. After my 24-hour celebration of New Year's, it was time to get back into shape once again. Fortunately, I didn't have any more holidays coming up. My gut couldn't take it. It was getting huge. After I got myself back in shape, it was time to go back to exploring the world. I found a run-down little neighborhood with some for sale signs and a run-down construction site. I had to kill, kill a few zombies along the way, but there wasn't as many as I was expecting. 
a little farther down the road, I found an abandoned factory, and I just had to explore it. Other than a couple of zombies, it was pretty much empty. Nothing much going on. No loot or anything. I had finally figured out how to use my gun, so I figured I w might as well use it. I took out a few zombies pretty easily with it. Unfortunately, it did attract more. But I was able to shoot those as well. And then I busted out my pickaxe for the ones that got too close. Ah, they're coming out of the woodwork again. The fact that I had figured out how to use my guns was making me bolder, so I set another police car trap. And then I shot anyone that came near. I felt like I was about ready to head out into the world and explore different towns, so I wanted to figure out what the best way I could carry as much gear as I could onto the next town. So I started experimenting with different ways of towing things, to see if I could maybe tow two vans or what I could do. It didn't go well. The vans couldn't be attached to each other. And none of my vehicles were really strong enough to tow the others, so I just had to settle for my best van and the trailer. I decided to vent my frustration on the, the zombies and took my pistol and started blasting. Anyways, I started blasting. I went out into an area I hadn't been for before and I was shouting and honking my horn and everything to try to get them to come to me. Eventually they did, in bigger numbers than I was expecting. So I had to retreat. It was only a temporary retreat though. I came back, blasted. Eventually I had killed enough zombies that I was feeling better about my disappointment earlier. So it was time to start looking towards the future once again. I decided I liked using firearms to kill the undead, so I started heading towards the gun shop down south. There were a lot more undead on the road than I was anticipating, but I was able to clear them out with my gun and my trusty pickaxe. Until it happened. Disaster struck. I was sure I was bitten. I was sure I was infected. I was sure I was going to die. But I carried on, just in case. Once I was finally able to check on my hand, I saw that I was lacerated, not bitten. There might be still a chance, so I carried on. Eventually, I fought my way into the Army Depot store and had a look around and Got some nice loot. They had plenty of bags, including military backpacks, the best backpacks available. So I took a couple of them. The military clothing was cool, but it wouldn't help me, so I didn't take it. What I really wanted was behind this locked security door, but I was just too tired to try to break in right now. I had to risk sleeping, I was just too tired, so I pulled my car up as close as I could to the wall of the gun store and risked it. Would I wake up? This time, yes. After clearing some undead out of the immediate area, I headed back into the Army Depot gun store and broke down the door. 
There I found the mother load. All the ammo I could ask for. But where were the guns? I couldn't find any. So it was time for another shooting spree. I was very over encumbered. This fight was not going to go well for me. And my gunshots had attracted a lot of attention. But all I could do was keep blasting. And poking. And stomping. This was a very tough fight. Given how few there's how few zombies there were, it should have been much easier. But I was lucky to make it out alive. Executed. I just had too much gear and was too tired. I had to get out of here. Fortunately, on the way home, my wound healed and I was not infected. As I prepared for bed on night 200, I took a walk through my base and marveled at the life I had built for myself from the ashes of the apocalypse. I was safe, warm, I had entertainment. I had reliable, renewable food and water. I had an entire fleet of vehicles to choose from. And my skills were progressing nicely. But I thought deep down, this is not the way to live. I needed to venture out and try to find other survivors. On day 201, I had finally figured out how to shoot guns. So I used them to kill a few zombies. And then I figured out that a shotgun was even better. And it pulled all the zombies in an area to me. I had discovered my new strategy. I still wasn't quite proficient yet, but I would get there. starting to get proficient with a rifle as well. I enjoyed picking the zombies off from a safe distance. It was starting to get late, and I was starting to get tired, so I had a decision to make. I was a long way from home. I could try to drive all the way there and then drive all the way back in the morning, or I could find a safe place to sleep the night. I decided it was worth the risk, so I brushed my car as close as I could up against the house so that no zombies could get to me. And then I took a risk and went to sleep. Luckily, I woke up. It was still the middle of the night, but neither the time of day or the undead would keep me from reaching my objective. The small police station on the outskirts of town. I very carefully planned my entrance and scouted around the area. The coast seemed clear, so I made my entrance and started scouting around. I was looking for firearms and ammo. Eventually, I located my prize in the back room, and I took all I could carry. It was a little less than I had hoped for, but I had to make do with what I could get. The cops had arrived, so I had to do some more clearing. I secured my loot in my car. Then I decided since I was here, I might as well kill some undead.
and my shotgun broke. So I turned to my trusty pickaxe. I may have made a tactical error and bit off more than I could chew. I was able to defeat the first wave, but they just kept coming. It wasn't even safe hiding behind the police station. Here they come again. Fortunately, I had another shotgun that I could fall back on. And, uh, fall back I did. Until I cleared them out enough that my trusty pickaxe could get the job done. But oh boy, here comes some more. This was hard work, and I was getting winded. I almost took a bite there, but fortunately, my tailoring skill protected me. I couldn't keep this up for much longer. I was getting exhausted. I wanted to get to my car and get away, but the undead had other ideas, so I lured them away by blasting them in the face with my shotgun. I made clever use of corners and choke points. But they just kept chasing me. They were relentless. Eventually, I cleared myself enough room, wiggle room that I could sit down and relax for a minute and catch my breath. This was a big advantage. Unfortunately, I was getting farther and farther away from my car. But what else could I do? The undead would not stop, and neither would I. Can't stop, won't stop. Never stop, never stop. Until I ran out of shotgun ammo. So it was back to my trusty pickaxe. My trusty pickaxe never fails me. Until it did, it broke. Now I was in big trouble. I was basically weaponless except for my police baton, but it was a short-range weapon and not good for clearing hordes. So I tried to make my escape once again. It seemed my plan to lure the undead away from my car was mostly su successful, and I was able to sneak past a few and quickly dispatch a few more. I was def deathly afraid that my nightstick would break also, and then what would I do? Especially after I encountered another mini horde. I was feeling exhausted again. This was hard work. But my car was finally in sight, so I made a run for it. But the undead got in my way once again. A boot to the face detoured them. And I finally made it to my car. I checked around for backup weapons. And was interrupted once again. Eats foot. I was feeling confident, perhaps overconfident, so I stuck around instead of making a retreat. I should have at least stopped to rest. This was a tactical mistake. I was very tired. But I really wanted to loot this farming and rural supply store. Oh no! An alarm! Run for it! Once again, my overconfidence would be my weakness. I decided to hide for a little bit and see what would happen. After the alarm ended, I ventured out to see what had happened, and found Undead, of course. A lot of Undead. 
perhaps too many undead for my little nightstick. So it was shotgun time once again. But this only made things worse once again and drove me away from my car. They are billions! Oh man, I was in trouble. Look at all these zombies. And more coming up from behind. Until I ran out of ammo again. What was I going to do now? Oop, I almost fell. I was getting exhausted once again. And I had tripped and cut myself. This was a big problem. Fortunately, I could still hobble faster than the undead could run. I couldn't keep this up for long, though. I was getting exhausted. Fortunately, I was able to duck into my car, quickly start it, and drive away. Ooh, a trailer. I wanted it. But perhaps I had learned my lesson. Maybe. As tempting as it was, I knew it was time to head back to base. Healed up, refueled, and rearmed, I returned to the scene of the crime. Well, if there wasn't a crime before, there certainly was now. Murder. Mass murder. There's been another murder. Four ten. I was actually enjoying myself shooting all these undead. And the undead were enjoying chasing me around. I killed undead until I couldn't kill no undead no more. And then I moved my car into what I thought was a safe position and went to sleep for the night. Surprise! Zombies! I was able to drive away. Then by the light of my car's headlights, I resumed the slaughter. All these corpses around were starting to make me feel sick. My car died. Oh, oh god, oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Oh! I switched seats to get the zombie away. And then switched back, and I was able to start the car and drive away. Man, the smell of these corpses is starting to get to me. Oof. But I can't leave without at least doing some looting, can I? Nice, more guns and ammo. I grabbed what I could carry. I stopped by the hardware store next. But I didn't find anything I wanted. Next stop was the bookstore. And then a little more murder. Before it was finally time to head home. I felt I had accomplished everything I was going to be able to accomplish in Riverside. So it was time to move. I set my sights on Rosewood. So I spent a few days packing up all of my gear loading everything up as best I could. It was tough deciding what to leave behind. I had built an amazing life for myself here in the ashes of the apocalypse. The next day, I drove all the way to Rosewood and had an epic battle and killed over 300 zombies at once with a combination of my shotgun and pickaxe. Unfortunately, my computer crashed and I lost all the footage but I'll show you a little bit of the aftermath. As you can see, I am now over 3,000 kills. And there's a big chunk of zombies there. Here's another big pile of corpses over here. And they're just all over the place. I was, uh, I was kiting them around, taking out groups of them at a time with my shotgun. And there's a few more left up here at this car crash. Uh, not sure how those didn't pull, but as you can see... There's these big groups of bodies all over the place. And my character is now tired from fighting all day. Well, driving and then fighting all day. Here's some more of the carnage over here. There's another group there. Big group back there. And there's more up here in the woods. I was just kind of hiding around into the woods. I tried to stay off the road as much as I could, but... Uh, uh, 
you know, when you're being chased by 300 zombies, you kind of do what you have to do. I think the snow might have covered up some of the bodies, because there were a lot more than this. But anyways, uh, I apologize about the fact that that footage is missing. It was a, it was a very epic battle. I was actually very proud of myself. But now we are in Rosewood. I'm going to get back into character for the, for the next part here. After multiple days of fighting and sleeping in my car, I made it to the Rosewood gas station. And I started clearing it out. My rifle came in very handy. As did my pickaxe. Whoops, whiff there. Whoops, whiff, strike two. The coast looked clear, so I claimed my territory by taking a generator and plopping it down. I wanted to head inside to resupply, but management had other ideas. They were insistent, but my argument was stronger. Hello, naked man. After securing a gas station and some temporary supplies, I resumed attempting to clear to my new home. It seemed like all of Rosewood had come out to meet me. So meet them I did. In combat, both my gun skill and my pickaxe were getting a workout. One tried to sneak up on me, but I blasted him. After I cleared out the immediate area, I took a little break to loot the supermarket. Then it was back to working my way through Ro downtown Rosewood. How do I keep getting myself in these situations? Oh right, that's how. I killed so many undead that I broke another pickaxe. And had to resort to my nightstick and my feet once again. Eventually, finally, I made it to my new chosen home. And I started securing the immediate area. This is my house now, zombies. You're not welcome. Zombies have no respect for a claim. This is mine. Get out. It even came with a nice car I could steal. After that, I moved in and started inspecting the inside. Oops, occupado. Time to get these disgusting corpses out of here. It's time to meet the neighbors. Hey, my new car has a full tank of gas. What a stroke of luck. Now it was time to start making this house my home. Adding sheets and sheet ropes as escape ropes to the windows was my first course of action. I started breaking things down for parts. I destroyed the staircase so no undead could get upstairs. Then I started constructing a balcony. This would be a nice place for me to hide as well as where I would put my water collectors. I decided to install fencing so that I wouldn't fall off, and added an escape route for convenience. Interruptions, interruptions. My foothold in Rosewood was secure. I had a safe place to sleep, I had water collectors ready to go, and I had my generator for power. With my base established, I started looting and clearing the surrounding area until an alarm went off. I thought to use this as a lure to ambush some zombies, but wow, there was a lot more than I was expecting. So this turned into an epic midnight showdown. The more I killed, the more showed up. Fortunately, I was turning into quite the zombie slayer. Looks like somebody bought, brought a gun to a zombie fight. Of 
cords seem to never end, so I hop the fence to put a little distance between us. But that was short-lived. Just like this zombie. The horde was never-ending and relentless. But fortunately, I was well-stocked on ammo. It seemed like no matter how many zombies I killed, or what I did, the horde kept growing and growing instead of shrinking. I was in trouble. It was time to hop a fence again to put some distance, and regain my bearings. How could there still be this many zombies? I couldn't go on much longer like this. If nothing else, I would run out of ammo. So I decided it was time t to make an escape. I ran for it and ducked through the alleyways. This got me away from the main horde, but there were still some stragglers. I quickly dispatched this more manageable amount of zombies. Ooh, oh man, that was tough. Let's take a little break and eat. Oh man. Somewhere, sometime, within the mass of undead, I disassembled enough watches to level up my electricity to master level master electrical work. So I took the time to read my master my ele electrical expert book. And then it was back to more killing and looting. I needed a beer, so I hit up the local bar. Mmm, beer. And then it was back to grinding skills. I wanted to upgrade the wooden gate I built in front of my house to metal, so I started working on my metalworking skill. Disassembling things seemed to be the way to go. It would also give me the supplies I needed to do my vanilla working. Not even refrigerators were safe. Eventually, I had the skills and supplies needed to start my fence. But it wasn't enough. It would never be enough. So I disassembled more stuff to get more metal working supplies. Minus the occasional interruption, I was working hard on my skills. The laundry mat would pr provide a fantastic source of leveling and materials. But man, was I getting bored. I cured my boredom by standing in the rain and reading a comic book. Yeah, I know. I kept grinding away until finally I was able to read my master metal workbook. I was a master metal worker. I needed a break from all this grinding, so I decided to raid the police station. But first, I had to fight through the undead. Like shooting fish in a barrel. After I made my way inside, I took a little snack break then carefully explored the prison area. It's always in the last place you look. I eventually, I found what I was looking for, the armory, and I stocked up on some guns and ammo. And then I headed outside to make use of my newfound guns and ammo. It felt like cheating shooting them from behind the fence, but, well, they're zombies. Their whole wretched existence is cheating so I helped them not exist anymore. How kind of them to let me use them as targeting practice. I found a police car in fantastic condition, except the battery was dead. I would have to come back for it later. For now, I had my sights set on the prison, and man, there were a lot of zombies there. It took me several days of clearing. I should say, it took me several days even to get to the prison. 
the, the forest surrounding the prison was crawling. I broke multiple weapons along the way, including crowbars and nightsticks and baseball bats. Till eventually I made it into what was this, the visitor center? Either way, I found a katana, one of the best weapons in the world. And I had fun using it. School bags? What are school bags doing in the prison? In video games? Upstairs I found an armory with some ammo and guns. I grabbed what I could. And in the very last container in the armory, I found, made a fantastic find, an M14 rifle. This would be much better than the hunting rifles I was using before. I'm busy right now, can you come back later? I gave a parting FU to the zombies in the area. And then I made my escape with my valuables. Look at this carnage. Holy cow. That was a lot of zombies. Was being the key word. Wait, where did all these come from? I thought I cleared this area. Well, it's clear now. The next day it was back through the carnage once again. To revisit the prison, my work here was not done. It was almost like I hadn't done any work at all, there were so many zombies. I wanted to head into the actual prison itself to take a look around, but there were so many zombies outside. never ending on the outside I could only imagine what it was like on the inside every time I thought I was about to make it into the building more zombies showed up and drove me off Eventually, I did make it inside, and I took a look around. All I found were zombies. I could hear their growling everywhere. It was terrifying. They were coming from everywhere. It was freaking me out too much, so I made my escape. I would be back another day. But for now, the town of Rosewood itself needed me. Maybe I wasn't the hero the town needed right now, but I was the one it deserved. I decided to use the police cruiser I had found earlier as bait and turn the lights and sirens on. This would allow me to more efficiently slaughter undead as they would come to me, and I could kill them out in the open instead of having to go house to house. And come to me they did. I guess somehow, through the sheer weight of their zombie mass, they had turned my lights and sirens off. I paid them back for it by turning them off. Apparently, they had broken the light bar on the police cruiser. Thanks, zombies. Real, real nice of you. So I proceeded to break their faces. Well, if I couldn't use the light bar, surely the blast from this shotgun would attract the undead. Um... Uh, mission accomplished, I, I guess. Ooh, almost got good there. Be careful what you wish for, especially when what you wish for is zombies. Well, this looks familiar. Where have we seen this before? I found another vehicle with a light bar. And I used it to set another trap for the undead. At first I thought maybe I had killed them all already. But then, out of the rain, they appeared. Everywhere.
this was going to be quite the fight. intensified and I was exhausted, so I decided to call it a night. The rains continued the next day, but I was undaunted and I headed back into town. While slaughtering the undead, I came across a box van in near perfect condition. I would make this my new vehicle. Look at that. Great condition. But first, the undead needed my attention. So I provided in the form of a baseball bat to the face. And on day 237, I killed my 5,000th zombie. 5,000 down, and who knew how many more to go. I didn't know this at the time, but 5,000 would become all in a day's work once I moved on to Louisville later in my post-apocalyptic apocalyptic life. Since I had found a new car I wanted, I decided to do a little, shall we say, Carmageddon with my old car. And I ran over zombies left and right, smashing them in my wake. After the fun was over, I started fixing up my new car. It needed a new battery. And some gas. I siphoned the gas from my old vehicle to put in the new vehicle. Then I loaded up the truck and I moved to Beverly, or I mean, back to my base. It handles like a dream. For a giant van, that is. The car was in great shape, but there were just a couple things that needed work, so I took care of them, including a new tire. After doing this work, I decided I needed to improve my mechanic skill to do future repairs, so I got to work grinding on my mechanic skill. Eventually, after completely dismantling several cars, I leveled up my mechanics. So I immediately read my Master Mechanics book. I was now a Master Mechanic. All this busy work left me eager some, for some action, so I headed back into town and checked out the courthouse. There wasn't a whole lot of action to be had there. This provided me with a little bit of the action I was looking for when I headed to the fire station next. I gave myself a little tour of the fire station. Nice workout room. I thought this seemed like a cool place to make a base. But I just didn't have the time to stick around. I picked up some good supplies and moved on. This definitely would have been a cool place to set up a base. The next day I decided I wanted to level up my first aid skill, but I wasn't quite sure how to do that other than to injure myself. So injure myself I did. And once I had learned the first aid skill better, I started reading my first aid book. After killing some more zombies, I figured out that I could walk on broken glass and keep cutting myself over and over again to level up my first aid skill. This let, le ne let me level up my first aid very quickly, so I ended up becoming a master of first aid and read the book. After the fun of injuring myself over and over again, I headed back to the prison to see how things were going. Spoiler alert, bad. Things were going bad. I could not believe how many zombies there were. I cleared out some of them through the fence and then dispatched others that came running from the forest. What was I going to do about this mass of uh, former humanity? Fortunately, my shotgun was going through the fence and killing some of them, but not all of them.
It looked like they had mashed themselves into the fence somehow. The snow turned to rain, and the rain washed away the snow and revealed some of the carnage. This was a bloodbath. The next day, a fog rolled in, and I rolled in to the prison with spears, hoping to po poke the zombies through the fence. I had some limited success. With the zombies cleared off the fence a little bit, I went back to my shotgun, and it was able to clear out some more. And my spear was able to take out a few more. But to completely clear out the area, I knew I would have to go in there, and that wasn't something I was ready to do yet anyway. As the fog lifted, I contented myself to clear out the area around the prison instead of being able to kill those inside. This turned out to be a lot of undead that I had now re-deadened. The next day, I rode, loaded up my car and headed for the military base. It was a long, boring drive, and then a drive down a dirt road, and then a long, boring, but dangerous hike, till I finally made it to the military base, and I did some exploring. I took, a, I took two full days to explore, but I really didn't find anything of interest, not even any weapons or anything. I was disappointed. I wanted to find a weapon, maybe an M16, something. I felt like my time in Rosewood was coming to an end. I had cleaned out the prison and the military complex, and I had killed pretty much all the zombies in town, and I had scavenged everything I could find. I came here in hopes of getting help at the military complex or the prison, but all I found was more zombies. And I was getting lonely. I needed to move on to find another place to live, and hopefully find more survivors. I pulled out my map and started to plan my next move. I thought maybe March Ridge would be my next searching location. I had plenty of clues to go by from maps I picked up along the way, and I decided that the best place for me to build a house would be this two-story two building here, right towards the edge of town. With my plan made, I spent the next week sorting through my loot and deciding what I would take with me and completely clearing out the town and check, double checking for anything of note. With my plan in place, I decided to take in the sights of Rosewood one more time before I left. Obviously, the dead disagreed with my plans, but they were not going to stop me from visiting the drive-in movie. Unfortunately, there were no good movies playing. On my way back, I thought I could curb my disappointment with some delicious candy from the nearby gas station. And I was in luck. They had a full stock. I loaded up on junk food. Mmm. This would keep me going. But, bright and early next morning, it was time. It was time to move on. So I loaded up the truck, and I headed out. Goodbye, Rosewood. You were good to me, and maybe I wasn't good to you. But maybe we'll see you again someday. March Ridge wasn't that far away, so it only took me a few hours to drive there. I was feeling confident with how well I moved into Rosewood, so I just went for it. Even as laden down with gear and, and equipment as I was, I was feeling confident. I hopped out of my car. And quickly got to work. I made a serious tactical error and did not drop my extra equipment. 
and it was weighing me down heavily. But I got to work fighting. And for a while there, I was doing well. Ish. But I was already out of breath due to how much stuff I was carrying. This was going poorly. I decided to switch to my shotgun to clear out some of this crowd. And clear it out it did. Except it pulled even more to me. So it was a net wash. If I would have just dropped my extra gear, this would have gone much better. But now I was kind of stuck. I couldn't get away. And I couldn't fight well enough to clear them. So I was just kiting around. I thought maybe I could lose them over a fence when the worst thing that's ever happened to me in the game happened. I tripped, and not only did I cut myself, but I ruined my boots as well. Now I could not move quicker than the zombies. They were catching up, and I was tired and panicked still. Finally, I figured it out that I needed to drop some weight, so I started dropping things. But by now, would it be too late? I was able to put enough distance between us so that I could quickly bandage my foot, and that helped. I could move a little faster now. But was it fast enough? I tried to lose the zombies in the trees, but there were just so many of them that I only lost a few. I thought this was the end for sure, the end of our hero, but I kept throwing things on the ground and hoping. They were getting closer and closer. I had to take a chance on the trees again. I almost made it back to my car, but the zombies had it surrounded. I continued to shed weight until I was finally not overweight. Maybe I could move fast enough now. Could I get into my car this time? Oh, I made it. Just barely made it into my car before they grabbed me. And then I drove away quickly. I drove all the way out of town to get away from the zombies. And then I prepared myself better this time. I got myself new boots and I rested up. And the fight was on. Working from outside the town this time, it would go much better. had myself some lunch and some coffee and I was distracted so I ran into the stop sign and then I made my return this time more carefully and more strategically I had been humbled but now it was my turn and I returned the favor And return the favor I did. Now that I wasn't overburdened and injured, I was able to dispatch the zombies with relative ease. Now the trick would be finding and picking up everything that I had dropped. I needed all those supplies. Day turned to night and still I fought on. Mechan house by house, mechanically this time, instead of just rushing in. I would do this the strategic way. Methodically. One house at a time. Until at last I had made it to my new chosen home. And I began clearing the area. I was, at su I was surprised at how many zombies I found, given how many had welcomed me to March Ridge. Once the surrounding area felt a little bit clearer, I moved into my chosen house and cleared it out from the inside. And then I limped my way back to my vehicle, killing undead along the way, as needed, and brought my car to my new house. I just started moving in 
when the neighbors welcomed me to the neighborhood. How nice of them. I had a lot of work to do to make it safe and make it mine, but I had moved in. I had my new house. And March Ridge was now my oyster. I set about my usual way of making places safe, and I put sheet ropes in for escape routes. I covered the windows with cloths, and I destroyed the staircase with a sledgehammer so no undead could get to me while I was sleeping. And then I built my usual balcony. As somewhere safe to hang out and somewhere to put my water collectors. My foothold in March Ridge was established, and I was relatively safe, even though there were many undead in the area. While I was out exploring and clearing town, the sound of my generator must have attracted the undead's attention. They broke down both of my doors, but I could not find them anywhere. Apparently they broke everything and then left. How rude. So I set about rebuilding. Always with the interruptions. I decided to turn the generator off. It was just attracting too much attention. I would have to do without power for now. The next days were spent clearing out the neighborhood and trying to make it safe. I defeated the roving packs of undead. I decided to lure them to me by shouting, and it worked. I preferred this strategy to going inside and fighting inside. Fighting outside is much easier where you have more room to maneuver. Block by block, and house by house, I cleared the neighborhood. With the neighborhood mostly cleared out and safe-ish, I turned my attention to making a sanctuary for myself. I thought about building over to the rooftop of the cinema across the way, but I thought that I probably would not be staying in town long enough to make that worth it. But at last, I had done it. I had survived for 10 months, 300 days. And I had killed almost 7,000 zombies. But there was still much to do, and many other places to explore. As I woke up on day 301, I decided my first stop would be the local blockbuster, uh, I mean, HitFids. And I grabbed all the skill tapes I could find. And some entertainment as well. Some of the locals asked if they could join for movie night. Unfortunately, I had to politely decline. While I was in the area, I checked out the local restaurant. One star would not come back. Then I made some friends at the local pharmacy. Of the dead variety. Next, I tried to try my hand at some short blades. I didn't like it that much. So I switched back to my trusty crowbar. An essential step to survival when moving to a new town is to secure the local gas station. So secure the gas station I did. Man, this short blunt is short blade is difficult. I decided to keep practicing with my knife for smaller fights of one or two zombies at a time. But for bigger fights, I would need my crowbar. On my way back to base, I decided to grab the water dispenser from the local office building. And somehow, I managed to cut myself on the cubicles. 
I barely even noticed. All of a sudden, I felt pain. And I wasn't sure why. Then I noticed I was bleeding. That's weird. My local exploration and looting eventually bore fruit in a car that I thought I could use. I figured maybe I would use this as my local vehicle. It took a couple tries, but eventually I got it started and drove it back to base. I would use up this vehicle's durability instead of my big mover van. The rain picked up intensity until it developed into a tropical storm. Look at this terrible weather. What was I going to do now? The storm lasted for several days. But finally, it ended, and I could get back to work. This group of zombies was too close to my base for comfort. So it was time to fight. But the more I fought, the more attention I gathered. Oh boy, I had done it now. I had pissed them off. I kicked up a hornet's nest. I took out a couple of stragglers with my crowbar, and then it, I decided it was time to pull out the big guns. Literally. Here they come! Hold the line! I was becoming much more proficient with guns than I had been before. And I was e able to easily dispatch the horde with my shotgun. But of course, that only attracted more undead. They were swarming my car. Little by little, we are thinning the swarm. Oh, watch out behind you! Luckily, I was able to pull off a few at a time, so I didn't have to fight them all at once. So I got the job done. Or, um, uh, so I thought, anyway. There were more. There are always more. As if I wasn't having enough fun, I decided to yell and attract them from inside the, uh, dormitory, I guess it is. And here they come. They literally rain from the sky. I had myself a nice little choke point here, and I was able to dispatch them one on one. Hallelujah, it's raining men. Uh, zombies. I decided it was time to take a break from the slaughter and did some more looting. My next target was the local post office. I wanted to check for any books or magazines I had been, I was missing. It took me a couple of hours to sort through everything, but I did find a couple of things I needed. And a couple of things I did not need. And then it was once again time to start slaughtering the undead once again. I was feeling confident. Perhaps overconfident. I thought I was doing a good job of whittling them down. Until I saw it. The stream of them pouring out of the dormitory or apartment complex or whatever it is. So I picked off a few more with my shotgun. And then I decided discretion was the better part of valor and made my escape. I would be back with more ammo. Right and early the next morning, the fight was rejoined.
I had taken out the main mass of the enemy troops, but they just kept streaming in. They were endless. They are billions! I thought I had finally managed to clear the area. Boy, oh boy, was I wrong. It was a never-ending wave, streaming in from everywhere. So many zombies that even SWAT would call for more ammo. But there was no SWAT. It was just me. Me and my shotgun. So we did the best we could. And that was pretty good. Or so I thought anyway. But they just kept coming. This seemed like a unwinnable fight, but I was determined. I had to have cleared out most of the town by now, right? 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 Right, guys? Would I run out of ammo or run out of zombies first? That was the question. And the answer is ammo. I ran out of ammo first. Fortunately, there were only a few left, and I was able to pick them off with my axe. Look at this carnage. Holy cow. I had bathed the ground in the blood of my enemies. I had earned a well-deserved break, but there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay, miles to feed, and ain't nothing in this world for free. An annotated map I had found earlier pointed to the school as a potential source of loot, so I went to investigate. And all I found was dead people. Or, well, you know, zombies. So you know the drill, the zombies had to go. I got a nice choke point at a window and was able to chop them down to size. Whoop. Who knew the zombies would fight back? It seems my map had lied to me. I really didn't find anything of use in the school. I said of use. No, that's not useful either. Never seen a kid fight to get back into school before. I was just wondering where everyone was when I found them. And broke some weapons on their faces. Check that one off the list. It was risky, but I decided to keep looting at night and drove through the neighborhood, looking for the next point of interest from a annotated map. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that had that idea, but I staked my claim with violence. Lots and lots of violence. Are you kidding me? Another tropical storm? Speaking of storms, I found a storm of undead. Now that it seemed like the area mo was mostly cleared out of zombies, I started looking around through houses doing some looting. Turns out one of the points of interest on my map from an, from an annotation was a little bit of a prepper house. I was able to restock my ammo that I had spent trying to get here. And an excellent FIM and M14 rifle. Check this one off the list. I kept exploring March Ridge, checking on all my points of interest on my map and killing any zombies along the way. I was surprised at how many prepper houses I found. This would provide me with a limitless source of weapons, should I need them. I decided to put my new weapons to work 
and started clearing out the area once again. And I found quite a few decent sized hordes. I found many spears, so I decided to use them, and I broke many spears on zombie faces. I fought until I exhausted myself and the supply of zombies in the area. I could not believe how many prepper houses were in the area and how much loot there was to be had. I stayed and fought too long and I was too tired and too overconfident and disaster almost struck. A zombie knocked me down and scratched my leg. Would I be infected? Would this be the end? It was a severe scratch too. I hobbled away to lick my wounds and heal up, and hopefully not die of infection. Fortunately, it turns out I didn't got, have the zombie infection, and I wasn't going to turn into a zombie. And it was pouring rain once again, so I decided it was time to finish my electrical skill and become a master electrician. So I disassembled everything in sight, until it finally happened. Finally, Master Electrician. Obviously, my next step was to read the Master Electrician book, so I found a nice spot under my balcony out of the rain and did some reading outside. I found another annotated map, so I checked it out. It highlighted the bakery, and a hunter lodge, maybe. So I marked him on the map and went to check him out. I had already been to the bakery. The streets were pretty empty by this point. It was kind of creepy, no lie. So I consoled myself with some candy. Finally, some signs of life. I had learned my lesson from the last encounter. I stayed out of lunge range. And then did my own lunging into their faces with a spear. I was starting to think there wasn't much left for me here in March Ridge. But I kept searching. I had all these points of interest to check. This was yet another house full of weapons and ammo. I was fully stocked. So I decided I had to go use up some of these weapons. So I went looking for fights. And fights I found. I was honestly kind of shocked at how many zombies were left in town after all my huge fights earlier. Max level tailoring saved me my life once again. My armor had eaten that bite instead of my skin. I will avenge you, my gloves. It was another race between what would run out first, the zombies or my ammo.
This time, the zombies won, and I resorted to killing them with the weapons I had got from all those houses. Hey, get away from my car. That's my car. You're not welcome. Get your own. I could do this all day. So I did. All day. Literally. I killed hundreds, if not thousands, of zombies. There were so many of them. I literally spent days clearing zombies. Street by street. Block by block. I reclaim this town for the living. Seriously though, seriously though, how many zombies are there around here? Holy cow. On day 320, I decided I had had enough of March Ridge and it was time to move on. I packed up my things, I spent a couple of days packing and getting ready, and I set my sights on West Point. Then I hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. My journey almost ended before it started when I hit a tree while I was staring at my map and almost totaled my vehicle. Fortunately, I was able to get it started again, and the journey resumed. Man, look at this traffic. Holy cow. Talk about a traffic jam. To get to West Point from March Ridge, I had to drive through downtown Muldraw. And while my objective today was West Point, I knew that at some point I would want to come to Muldraw. So I started preparing the way for my eventual incursion into Muldraw by driving down the street Honking the horn. I rolled on into West Point at about 4.30 in the morning. And boy, if I thought there were a lot of zombies in the other towns, West Point was something else entirely. I wanted to make my base at the warehouse to the south of the town next to the gas station. And I'm just gonna let this battle play out because this is a lot of zombies. I had learned from my incursion into Marsh Ridge so I immediately started dropping weight to fight the zombies better. threw everything I could on the ground. I would I would have to find it later. The fog rolled in while the fight was ongoing, but still we fought on, me versus the Horde.
There was no retreat now. I was in it. This was do or die. It was me or the Horde. Every time I thought the fight was over, more of them would appear out of the mist. But I did not drive all this way to turn back now. All of my weapons were getting a workout today. As the mist started to clear, I was able to survey the carnage that I had wrought, and I had a strange feeling. Was it guilt? Was it pride? I wasn't sure. There were a lot of dead on my hands, but... I mean, they were already dead, right? It was them or me. And it's gonna be me. Where did that one come from? Every time I thought the battle was over, they they just kept coming. I was starting to get low on ammo. Fortunately, my melee weapons served me just fine. It almost seemed unfair to pick them off from long range with the rifle. But, you know, they're they're zombies. They're dead anyway. Why should I fight fair? They wanted to turn me into a dead guy. I didn't want that. Seriously, where do they keep coming from? One of the reasons I had chosen this location is its close proximity to a gas station. So my next objective was to clear out the area around the gas station. gas station was so close that it was dual purpose, clearing the gas station and clearing the area surrounding my base for safety. With the area outside of my base secure, I needed to venture inside and start clearing out from the inside. I strongly disliked fighting indoors because there's less room to maneuver, but it had to be done. I had to know that my base was secure, or at least clear of infestation. We would make it secure later. This was exhausting work and I hadn't secured my safety yet, so I took a chance and moved the couch back into the back areas of the lock room. This would put several doors between me and any potential zombies for the next couple nights at least until I could secure the roof. My next objective was to secure access to the roof and start moving my stuff up there. It was a crude staircase at first. Later on, we would use rope ladders had a lot of work ahead of me. I was going to build an entire platform inside the upper level of the warehouse. But there was nothing for it but to get building. I wanted this entire area. I wanted a nice, huge place for myself to live in safety. This was going to take a ton of work and a ton of wood. But in the end, it would be worth it. This would be my home for the next foreseeable future. Chopping down trees served a dual purpose. It supplied me with wood, and it also increased the area I could see to keep an eye out for zombies. I may have underestimated just how much work this was going to be, and just how much wood this was going to take. But I was determined. One of the most important first steps that I took was installing a sink upstairs where I would have access to clean water.
I set myself up a nice little kitchen and plumbed the sink to the rain collectors upstairs. War doesn't play fair, and neither do I. I sniped any zombies I could see from my rooftop with my long-range rifle. I finished up my entire floor and started to move in. First things first, I needed the couch for a place to sleep until I could secure a better bed. And then I started putting up my direct decorations. Now that I had a secure base of operations to work from, I started clearing out the surrounding area and gathering supplies that I would need. Oh, excuse me, I didn't know anyone was in here. I'm not sure why I was surprised, but I was a little bit surprised to find another horde of zombies lurking nearby, so I got rid of them. And then more came out of the woodwork. Don't sneak up on me like that. This was supposed to be a looting run, but I... I guess I was more bloodthirsty than I thought. And I needed to clear the area anyway, so it worked out. should have taken a break at this point. I was getting exhausted. But instead, I popped some coffee and got back to work. Maybe not the smartest idea, but it worked out okay. Zero dollar gas. Can't beat that. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life, and I realize there's nothing left. Because I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a zombie that didn't deserve it. Me being treated like a punk? You know that's unheard of. Okay. I had to get serious now. Enough playing around. I had to start securing my long-term survival. So I set up some traps to catch some food. And picked out a nice new refrigerator for my new kitchen. And let's not forget the rooftop garden. This industrial oven will go in my kitchen nicely. Kitchen was starting to take shape. Next stop was the storage lockers next door for some much needed supplies. Storage lockers were full of loot, including generators and some interesting furniture. But what I really needed was a new bed. I was tired of sleeping on the couch. So it was time to make my first foray into West Point itself. After clearing out the area a little bit, I brought in my mover van with its trailer and went to work looking for a new bed. I'm not super picky. This large fancy bed will do. Plus I like the nice black color. I'll take it. Sold. I decided this back corner of the warehouse was going to be my new bedroom, so I started getting it set up. What does every nice bedroom need? Some nice carpeting. So I headed over to the local hotel and started ripping up their carpeting to use in my bedroom. Of course, the undead wouldn't let me have it without a fight. They are notoriously rude like that. But I proved once again that I wanted it more than them. The next couple weeks were spent alternating between clearing out downtown West Point and working on my base.
until it was time to do something else. First up, I brought my car around back and started fixing it up. It had taken a little bit of a beating and I didn't want it to break down on me. Then in a fit of nostalgia, I guess you could say, I decided to drive back to my original base all the way back in Riverside. There might even be some gear back there that I could make use of. Driving through downtown West Point was uh, interesting to say the least. I did a little bit of honking to pull the zombies out of their houses for future clearing endeavors. Does the weather ever cooperate with my plans? Ah, uh, my old stomping grounds. I had good memories of this place, where I attempted to light a zombie bonfire and failed. Where I experienced my first alarm and had to run away from all the zombies. Where I slept in my car because there were too many zombies to fight. And finally, my old base. Everything appeared to be as I had left it. Uh, you know, more or less. All my food was rotten, things were starting to break down, there was no power, but other than that, just as I left it. Somehow, these magical potatoes were still fresh. I grabbed everything that was still going to be of use to me. And loaded it up in my truck and trailer. And in the morning, I loaded up and headed back to West Point. Nostalgia is great and all, but my new base was even better than this one. Plus, I had things to do in the east. The drive back was more or less just as uneventful as the drive there. The one year mark approached, I thought back and marveled at all I had accomplished. From my humble beginnings in a trailer in Riverside, 8,954 zombies later. From the ashes of the apocalypse, this unemployed gym rat had risen to become a master carpenter, a master cook, a master at farming, a master tailor, and a master at foraging. I thought back to all the places I had visited, from my trip to the prison and the army base, to clearing out Riverside. What a long, strange trip it had been, but it wasn't over yet. Where there ain't no rest for the wicked, money don't go on trees. If it did, I would be able to grow it. I got no bills today to pay, but I do have one mouth to feed my own. And they ain't nothing in this world for free. Somehow I knew how many zombies I had killed. Maybe a subconscious part of my brain was just keeping track or what. But I knew I was close to 9,000 kills. And I wanted to break that number, so that was my goal for today. Lucky for me, West Point still had plenty of zombies for me to kill. So it did not take me long to achieve. I even accidentally overshot my mark by a few zombies. Bloodlust satiated, I decided to do a supply run back to my old base in March Ridge. What the heck? Where did all these zombies come from? I can't have these zombies so close to my base. No way, no how. We gotta get rid of them. And of course, the weather didn't cooperate, and the fog rolled in. And the zombies kept rolling in as well. I could not believe my eyes. How many of them could there still be? Didn't I just clear this area? Oh man, this is getting scary. We're panicking. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. Stop panicking. Stop panicking, nobody panic!
I ran out of ammo, so it was down to the crowbar. But there were so many zombies. Could even the crowbar handle this many zombies? There was no choice but to find out. This was just supposed to be a supply run. I don't know how much longer I could keep this up. I was starting to get very exerted. Exhaustion was kicking in. But there were still so many zombies left. What was I going to do? I had to take a chance and sit down and take a break. Fortunately, it paid off, and I regained my endurance. And I went to confront the next part of the horde. Quickly, exertion set in once again. There was just so many zombies. Exhausted from swinging my crowbar, I switched over to my handgun and used up all the ammo I had left. As I finished off the last few zombies, the fog lifted. Was it symbolism? Was it a coincidence? Either way, it allowed me to see the carnage that I had wrought. And once again, I was struck with a feeling I could not describe. Intense guilt, maybe? Intense satisfaction? I wasn't sure. All I knew is that I had lived, and they had... Uh... Redied. Go help me, zombies. If you don't start behaving, I will turn this van around and cancel the trip. All right, that's it. Trip's canceled. No, but seriously, all jokes aside, I'm, I'm turning around and heading home again. I'm exhausted. This trip can wait for another day. With the trip canceled, I had my sights set on another objective. The laundromat. I wanted to set up a laundry room for myself. But uh, the zombies had other ideas, as always. I mean, yeah, I probably could have snuck away and got my stuff and gone, but, you know, why put off today? Why put off till tomorrow what you can do today? And I cleared out the zombies. Eventually, I had my fun, and I made my way into the laundry room and picked out a nice washer and dryer. But why waste a trip? So I raided the local pharmacy store as well. It was right next door. And then it was back home to install my washer and dryer. And then to start building the laundry room itself. Things were shaping up nicely. All it needed was some carpeting and to finish the walls. On second thought, I think tile would look better. Let's put some tile in. Yeah, that's nice. And finish the walls. And start plastering them. Alright, let's try this trip back to the old base again. Seriously? More zombies? Come on. You gotta be kidding me. I cleared this twice. Alright, we're back on the road again. Finally. We're heading back to our Rosewood base to check things out there. I think I want to stop by the prison once again, too, to see how things are looking there. Oh, man, I forgot about this traffic jam. Oh, man, how are we going to get through? Beep, beep, crash. Zombies, I don't have time for you right now. We got things to do. Ah, Rosewood. Can't say that I missed you, but I didn't not miss you. I really left this place a junkyard, didn't I? And we're back to my old Rosewood base. I can't open the door because a tree grew in the way. <laughs> Everything is all overgrown and 
rotten. Lovely. Not unexpected, though. Looks like I left myself plenty of supplies to survive for the few days that I was planning to be here. I didn't really leave anything here that I needed, but I did a quick check anyway and grabbed what I wanted to take and loaded it up in the truck. Now we come to it. The real reason for my visit back to Rosewood. To see the prison. Hey, my old car still runs. I'm, I'm amazed that this car still starts. Let's take it and check, take a look how the prison's going. Hey guys, how's it going in here? Oh, still, uh, still absolutely effed. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. Alright, let's check over here. I think I hear my siren still going off that I set up. Wow, that, that car battery lasted forever. I am super impressed. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Still crawling. Oh, man. Oh, man. So many zombies. I don't even know what to do with all this. All right. Let's just get out of here. This... That's scary. I don't want anything to do with that. What about if we go in through the front door? Nope. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Maybe I could just kind of sneak in here? Maybe? Maybe I can... Sneak up on them over here. Um. Oh, oh god, oh god. Oh god, no, 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 no. No, I'm out of here. Time to go, time to go, time to go. All right, Rosewood. So long and thanks for all the fish. I'm not sure if I'll ever be back, but you were pretty good to me as far as zombie apocalypse towns go. But we have bigger fish to fry than you, as it were. We've got Muldra, West Point, and eventually Louisville to clear out. Uh, speaking of Muldra, since we're going to have to drive back and forth on this road a bunch of times anyways, maybe I'll just start clearing it out. Alright, that's enough messing around. Let's get back home. Now that we're back home and had a couple days rest, I feel like we need to clear that road. I feel like we're going to be traveling it a lot. So let's go take a look. First, let's get rid of these zombies. Next, let's try to get these wrecks out of the way. Oh, look, more zombies. Look how strong I am. I'm just going to shove this car out of the way. hoo -ah! Shove. Shoving cars sideways sure is tiring work. What a surprise. More zombies to kill. I feel shocked. Now that that's out of the way, let's see if we can get some of these wrecks out of here. Man, 
man, this is using up my propane quickly. And propane accessories. Kind of busy right now. You think it could come back later? We're making some good progress here. We're starting to clear at least one lane to get through. Apparently, the zombies don't like me clearing out their car wrecks. But too bad for them. Now they're going to get cleared out. They could have just left me in peace. But no. They have chosen death. Or, um, you know, re-death. Hey, I might be able to actually drive this car. Alright, we can make use of this car, actually. Maybe we'll use it to shove other cars around? I'm not sure. We'll decide. Oh, wow, it drives pretty quick, too. Well, at the very least, it is out of the way. I think we have a clear path now. So I think that is it for the day. We'll call it a day. You get the point by now. The next couple days I spent doing pretty much nothing but murdering undead. I wanted to reach that mythical 10,000 kill mark. Why does it seem like every time I want to go fight some zombies it always starts to get really foggy? Well, I was looking for a fight, and a fight I surely found. The fog went away as I made the zombies go away. And we closed in on the magical 10,000 kill mark. The fight went on and on until finally, uh, after one year, 21 days, and 15 hours, it happened. We hit 10,000 kills. I had killed 10,000. I could hardly believe it. That is a huge number. And now I would take a well-earned break. And that break entailed taking a tour of the local police station. I checked out the entrance area. Ooh, very nice. And the briefing room. This must be where the detective work happens. The captain's office. Oh, look, someone else wanting to take the tour as well. Let's help them out. Oh, no! Our spear broke. Terrible timing. I'm sure this isn't part of the tour, but I really wanted into the arms locker. So I did. And I grabbed some much needed ammo. I also wanted these ammo lockers. They were pretty cool. I wanted them for my base. And then back to the tour. We checked out the locker room, the holding cell. And these must be the interrogation rooms. What a lovely tour and a great way to take a break from killing zombies. But now, back to killing zombies.
I spent the next few days just fighting more zombies, trying to clear out West Point. I wanted to make it safe. I had survived for 400 days. It had seemed like an impossible task. One year, one month, and 10 days later, and 10,360 zombies killed. I had cleared Rosewood, Riverside, and March Ridge and reclaimed them for the living. I had settled in West Point and was establishing myself with Muldraw next. And then finally, if I could, it would be on to Louisville. In the ashes of civilization, I had come into my own. I was a master at carpentry, cooking, farming, first aid, electricity, metalworking, mechanics, tailoring, foraging. And I was getting there in trapping, shooting, fitness, and strength. I was fast, strong. I could work with many weapons. The dead had no chance. But there were so many of them. How many more could I kill? How many more were there? find out in the future. But for now, I was safe and happy. Day 400 started out much the same. I had many zombies to kill. West Point was not going to clear itself, and I was the man for the job. So I took out my trusty pickaxe and started pickaxing away. I yelled to them to bring them to me. I hated fighting indoors, and I wanted them to all to come to the road. And come they did. Good doggy zombies. Watch out for the creepy crawlies! As usual, the zombies tried to steal my ride, but I was not having any of it. I had stolen that car. I was leaving quite the trail of bodies in my wake. They came at me from all sides out of the woodwork, and I slaughtered them. They busted out of houses. They came from everywhere, but my pickaxe and I were up to the job, until it broke, and then it was back to trusty crowbar. I hadn't decided on a favorite weapon yet, so I made use of everything in my arsenal. Next up was the spear. Guys, Halloween is over. No more creepy Carlies. My yelling wasn't attracting them fast enough, so I busted out my rifle and started blasting away. Watch out! This is why I always carry two guns on my hips. Once one runs out of ammo, just switch to the other and keep blasting. After that, it was shotgun time. They started to overwhelm me, so I ducked through the buildings to try to get away. And there were yet more of them. The showdown in the rain continued. tried to escape in my car, but I couldn't quite get in in time, so I had to keep fighting. I was getting exhausted. I tried to escape through the trees, and I made it to my car and drove away. 
but this was merely an interlude to catch my breath. The combat continued. After I slaked my bloodlust for a few days, I decided it was time for a looting run. I wanted some decorations for my new base. So I decided to hit up the local bar, Twiggy's. And the nearby gun store. I decided to try to lure the zombies out first to make sure I wasn't walking into an ambush. And then I made my entrance. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that fancied an afternoon drink today. After I cleared out the occupants, I went searching for supplies. I found plenty of beer. Mmm, beer. I grabbed what supplies I could find, but what I was really after was the furniture. I grabbed the antique bar taps and some of the matching counters. As well as a couple of stools to add to the set. Upstairs, I grabbed the pinball machine and some pool cues and pool balls. And I completed my set with these wall bar cabinets. After I got everything installed, I was very happy with the results. I had a nice fancy bar to relax in after a hard day of slaughtering undead. And then it was back to that gun store I had mentioned earlier. It was time to work on my armory. I had to make use of my sledgehammer to break in. It was well guarded. Or defended, at least. Not guarded. There were no guards. Then I grabbed all the ammo I wanted. And I took the cool gun lockers as well. I would set these up in the armory. It seemed weird to be taking everything out of these, only to put it back in them later. I finished up my armory and got everything put away. Look at all this guns and ammo. I was set for the foreseeable future. All it needed was some decorations for a finishing touch. With my new rooms finished, I decided that it was time to make another attempt on the trip back to March Ridge. This time, I was able to make it out of town without running into a horde. I decided to make a little bit of a stop in Moldraw to start clearing it out. It was on the way, after all. Might as well not waste the drive. I bit off a little bit more than I can chew. I wasn't really prepared for an all-day fight. I was planning to just make my way through, so things got a little bit tense. 
so I decided to make my escape. I ducked into my car and just barely made it before the zombies could grab me, and I drove away. By the time I made it to the other side of Moldra, I was rested up and ready for another round. And so were the zombies. My rifle made quick work of the zombies in the street, and that pulled them out of the woodwork. Always check your six. Watch out now. It was starting to get late in the day, and I wanted to hit hit up March Ridge before nightfall. So I hopped back in my car and continued my journey. And I pulled into my old March Ridge base, and everything looked about as I had left it. I had really left this place kind of a disaster area. I picked up all the stuff that I had left that I thought I could use and, and packed it away in the truck. After I had everything all packed up, I decided to do a quick tour around March Ridge to see if there was anything I'd missed. And surprise, surprise, I found more zombies. I also found a couple of cool arcade games, so I took those for my new place. What are you doing back here, you creep? Oops. Good thing this was my March Ridge vehicle and I wasn't planning to take it with me. And good thing I hadn't drove my mover van on my tour around March Ridge. Next, I stopped by the movie theater and grabbed some posters for my new place to spruce it up a little bit. I had thoughts about building myself my own in-base movie theater, but it seemed like maybe too much work and more trouble than it was worth, so I just grabbed the posters. After I grabbed my new decorations out of the old car and put them in my moving van, it was getting late. So I took a little nap and then headed back home in the middle of the night. Of course, along the way, I had to do a little more clearing in Muldra. Why waste the trip? I guess I had done a good job last time because there wasn't nearly as many zombies in the street. I was able to fix that with a combination of yelling and gunfire. Zombies, I brought you into this street, and I can take you out of it. Hello there, Mr. Prepper Zombie. I guess you were not prepared. Look out now. Is that a lacrosse stick? Does Muldra have a lacrosse team? I guess we'll never know.
Oh boy, they are everywhere. This might have been a mistake. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Run through the trees. I'm getting tired. I'm panicked and exhausted. Things are not going well for our hero. Might be time to make an escape. Am I out of ammo? I think I'm out of ammo. That's not good. I wanted to duck back into my car. But there were zombies in the way. That crowbar took care of them. Quickly. Before the horde could arrive. Or so I thought. Now's your chance. Run for it. Run for it. Made it. Look at all these zombies. Look at them all, Anakin. By the time I made it to the other side of Moldra, my exhaustion had cleared, so I went back to fighting. Oh boy. Coming out of the woodwork again. Oop, look out. That was a close one. Might be time to beat a hasty retreat. And I made it away. Am I the unknown activity? Well, that was fun, but I was back at base, and it was time for a much-needed nap. To take a break from the slaughter, I built myself a storage room. It wasn't that pretty, but it would do the job. Out of all the rooms I had built so far, this is the one I was the least proud of, but it was utilitarian. I spruced it up with a couple of decorations so that it wouldn't be quite so barren, at least. Put in some posters, added some carpet, and it was looking up. Next on the agenda was carpeting the hallway. And adding a nice dining room table to my kitchen. Well, I guess it's not a dining room table, but, you know, a dining table? I now had a nice place to eat my breakfast in the morning. Things were looking up. Next up on the agenda, I wanted another car for day-to-day dr day driving around West Point so that my mover van wouldn't get so beat up. After driving around West Point for a while, I found a cab that looked like it might suit my purposes. It looked like it was in pretty good shape. So I broke in and quickly hot-wired it, it. Hot hot wired it, and it was mine. I had just gotten it hitched up to my moving van and ready to move back to base when I saw another car that I thought I might like better. This nice black car, and it was in great shape too. I went back and forth for a while, I even siphoned the gas out of the black car and started stripping some of the parts off of it. But eventually the black car went out, so I decided to start stripping the cab of parts to install them into the black car. I think the deciding vote was that the black car had a slightly better engine. I took all the best parts out of the cab and put them in the new black car. And then took the gas out of the cab and put it back into the black car. Back and forth, back and forth. This had turned into an all-day project. But eventually I was satisfied, so I towed my new car back to base. I now had a nice day-to-day -day car to drive around West Point with without ruining my mover van. I got cars in different area codes. You know, there was something that had been on my mind for weeks. The prison back in Rosewood. 
I couldn't stand it knowing all those zombies were trapped in there. So it was time for another road trip back to Rosewood. Oh no, my brand new car! At least I didn't injure myself too. But once again, why waste a perfectly good trip through Muldra? So I cleared out some more zombies along the way. I was snow plowing the zombies off the road with my snow shovel. You would think that Muldra would be getting a little bit clear by now. But there was no one else to do it. It was up to me. Shovels make great weapons. Eventually, I tired myself out and drove the rest of the way back to Rosewood. I felt like I had just been here. Deja vu. After fixing up my car from the damage the road trip took, I headed towards the prison. This prison had been a thorn in my side for a long time and I was finally about to do something about it. Are things still as terrible at here as I remember? Yep, they certainly are. But not for long. Oh man, what a terrible throw. The fire went out in the parking lot in the rain. I took some beta blockers and tried again. That's a little better. Would the building catch on fire this time? Looks like we were getting somewhere. I kept throwing. That one had to do it for sure this time, right? Yes, the zombies inside were on fire. It wasn't a great way to go, but they were already zombies, so, I mean, could it get any worse? I had finally accomplished starting the fire. We didn't start the fire, it was always burning since the world- Actually, I did start the fire. I had some uh, unintended consequences when the zombies on fire escaped the prison since the prison was burning down. This was uh, interesting, to say the least. You know guys, I wanted to burn down the prison, not the entire surrounding area. So if you guys could kindly go back in your cells, I would really appreciate it. Um, no, 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 no. This is not a jailbreak. No, no, uh, please, please go back. No, not this way. No, thank you. No, thank you. Please don't come this way. Go back, go back. Oh man, I have a conga line of burning zombies following me. That's not ideal. Look at the chaos my actions had wrought. Eventually they would burn themselves to death, but what all would they destroy in the process? And would they destroy me? I decided not to take the chance. And put them out of their burning misery. This one almost got to me, and I... Uh, was almost about to do something about it when he burned to death. And now there were flaming corpses lying all over the place. This is an improvement, I guess. Well, looks like I had accomplished my objective. The prison was on fire. 
Would the entire thing burn down from this wing being on fire? I had my doubts. Like shooting fish in a barrel. I did a little bit of target practice on the zombies stuck inside the fence and prison. I shot as many of the zombies as I could and then went back to trying to burn the place on fire. Oops! That was dangerous. Let's try that again. Maybe without throwing it so close to myself this time. I don't think that did the trick that time. Oh, maybe the fire's spreading. Maybe. Maybe it is. What? That's not where I threw it. But I think that one actually went inside the building. So that might have accomplished our objective. Yes, the fire had spread inside the building. This is what I was hoping for. But I had to be careful of zombies coming out to meet me. Especially zombies on fire. I kept firing away and yelling to get the zombies to spread the fire inside. And it looked like... It looked like... Whoa! Yikes! That was scary. It looked like it was happening. Gotta be careful of those windows that I just burned down. I was trying to get the burn zombies to join the group and light the group on fire. They didn't seem to want to cooperate. Until finally, one of them with the that was on fire died and lit up and it lit the rest of them up and unfortunately that also had the unfortunate benefit of freeing the zombies so I had to take care of them with my shotgun before they could get to me look at that fire flare up with zombiness I think it's time to make an escape this is uh this is not what I bargained for let's get out of here as I headed back to West Point, I could only hope that the fire would spread and take that entire cursed prison with it. But that wasn't my problem anymore. My problems lie in the East. Most immediately, Moldra to be exact. Why do the zombies always try to steal my car? Don't they know that that's the last place they should go? That is the first place that I'm going to clear out. You know the routine by now. I fought till I was exhausted and then used the drive across town to recover. Oops. I was clearing Muldraw end by end. Eventually, I would have to meet in the middle. But this strategy was working well for now. While I had been away, my traps had bore fruit. Well, I mean, rabbits. I would eat good tonight. I repaired the broken ones and harvested my bounty. And this got me my final skill up towards master trapping. So of course, the next thing I did was, was read my master trapping book. I sat in the rain and enjoyed a nice lovely evening of reading. I was now a master trapper. The only skill I was not proficient in was fishing. And I thought maybe it was time to fix that. I had a brilliant idea to build a fishing hut along the beach of the river near West Point. So I started clearing out the trees in the area I wanted to build. 
I decided this pre-built dock would be a good starting point. So I started building the floor. After I had a nice size basin, I started building the walls. This project was taking a lot of wood, so to kill two birds with one so stone, so to speak, I started clearing the trees back along the path that I would take back to town. This would make it easier to travel back and forth and give me the wood that I needed. This was exhausting work, and being exhausted around zombies is dangerous business. So I decided not to fight this one. I decided discretion was the better part of valor this day. If, uh, if my car would start. Oh, thank you. Oof. I was making great progress. I had the beginnings of a great looking fishing hut when I decided um, it would be safer if I built out onto the pier instead of in front of the pier. So all this work was going to waste. I was going to start over more or less. I wanted my fishing hut to have a second level for some water barrels, just in case I wanted to stay here overnight. I also needed a roof to sleep under, so I started building. Um, what's happening here? I went into town and got myself a bed and installed it. Now I just needed to cover it, so I wouldn't get rained on while I was sleeping. I was building an entire house from scratch, over the water. Very interesting. Master carpentry sure was coming in handy. This was a project to be proud of. I worked all throughout the day, and into the night. And I was able to sleep in relative safety in my new bed. And just like that, the roof was finished. I had used up my axe, so I had to go back into town to disassemble furniture for more wood. But the zombies got in the way again. After the bedroom was more or less done, I put in some traps to make it much more, much more difficult, if not impossible, for zombies to get to me. The project was almost done. It was time to put my fishing traps in. Next up, I installed the cabinet and sink that I had brought over from a nearby house and plumbed it. To the water barrel I had built on the roof. That being done, I tried to decided that I decided to try my hand at spear fishing. I didn't catch much, but I did get myself a nice fishing skill up. And a big trout. Spear fishing didn't seem to work that well, so I tried to bust out my fishing rod, and that worked much better. I ended up catching all the fish in the surrounding area and barely made a dent in my fishing skill. I hoped with time the fish would replenish and I could do some more fishing later. I had totaled my car driving home in the middle of the night from fishing, so the next project was to replace it. Look what I had done to my poor baby car. Oh man, it was ruined. I salvaged what I could off of it and went looking for a replacement. After driving around for a while and salvaging parts, 
I eventually settled on this sporty looking car that I thought would serve me well. This car would last me well into the next several hundred days and would serve me well all the way into Louisville. If I could get it lined up to tow it, that is. Alright, this is not working. Let's put, move the cars out into the street and we'll tow them from there. That's much easier. Now let's get this thing back to base. At some point I needed to fix up my mover van as well. It was looking pretty shoddy. Next up, I took my new sporty looking car into Moldra and continued my efforts to clear it out. I thought I was about ready to set up my new Moldra base. I would not be moving permanently or semi-permanently to Moldra like I had the other towns. I would keep my permanent base in West Point and established, uh, I guess you could call it an outpost in Moldra for, you know, weekend trips. You know, doesn't it sound super relaxing for a weekend trip of slaughtering undead in a nearby town? This factory on the north end of town would make a fantastic base. It had a nice upper level that I could knock the stairway out of with a sledgehammer to make safe, and an excellent roof. But for now, it was time to keep clearing. got me there wow the auto potty auto body shop sure is jumping whoa almost got me again getting careless gotta focus Watch out behind you. Shooting zombies through windows is a fantastic way to pick them off from safety. As long as you don't run out of ammo. Or, you know, get snuck on from snuck up on from behind. This was supposed to be my for first foray actually into Moldra, but would I even get off the road? There were so many zombies to fight just on the road. It didn't help that I kept luring them to the road with my shouting and gunplay. They almost cornered me, but I made a Tecmo Bowl escape. On and on the fighting went. I was getting sleepy, but still I pressed on. The dead don't sleep after all. But maybe I should. They were getting pretty close to getting me. Guns are both a blessing and a curse, boys and girls. They can kill zombies pretty easily and from relative safety, but the more you use them, the more zombies they summon. So it's kind of a catch-22, and it kind of summons endless waves of zombies. So, you know, be careful out there. Especially when your character is starting to get tired. Uh 
Uh, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Okay, there we go. Ooh. And uh, watch out for the trees. You know, you're not George of the Jungle. Watch out for the trees. Okay, but seriously, is this fight almost over yet? I'm getting ridiculously tired now. But the dead don't care. Expecting sympathy from a zombie is a great way to get disappointed. Ah, some coffee. Uh, some more coffee, please. I'm still tired. That's better. Alright, now we're ready to go. You'll pay for this, zombies. I am back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. But apparently, so are the zombies. A lovely skill up with my spear. Love to see it. I fought until it was dark out, and I figured that was a good time to call it a day. We would come back another day and finish the job. But for now, it was time to head home and get some rest. I had earned it. I took a day or two to recover and do some maintenance around the base and get all my needs met with my trapping and farming, etc. And then it was back to killing. This time, it was back in West Point. I wanted to fully clear West Point. If that was even possible. And for a while there, it seemed I had. Until eventually, I found the undead. Or maybe the undead found me. Either way, the fight was on. There's only going to be one winner in this Mortal Kombat, and it's gonna be me. Or, um, is it? Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of them. Finish him. Where are they all coming from? It was shotgun time, once again. They always like to loiter around my car. Looks like these fire fighters were responding to this house fire when the apocalypse hit. The battery was actually still charged enough that I could turn on the siren, so I thought to use it as a lure to bring the zombies to me. Bring them to me and I will deal with them myself. There weren't as many in this part of the neighborhood as I was expecting. I decided to try to drive the car, the fire truck around a bit, and I crashed it and ruined it and cut myself badly. I was hoping to drive it around to lure the zombies, but, you know, things happen, I guess. This was going to severely impact my ability to fight as well. Arm wounds are always difficult when you're trying to fight zombies. With the car totaled and my arm injured, I decided it was time to call it a day. And I almost cra I almost ruined my car as well. Not having a good day here, guys.
To take a break from fighting and let my arm heal, I decided to go back to my fishing spot and see if I could level up my fishing some more and maybe catch some food in the process. The fish had not replenished themselves as I had hoped. So I headed upstream. I was a little bit worried about running into groups of zombies since I hadn't been in this area before, but it seemed my antics in other areas had drawn the zombies away. I didn't encounter any zombies. And I didn't ruin my car. I found some areas that had fish in them, and I went to work. Spear fishing proved not so effective once again. Rod fishing works much better. That's what she said. I fished until I had fished up all the fish there was to fish. And then I moved to another area to find some more fish and fished up all the fish there. I did this for a couple of days until my arm was healed. And then I was once again ready for combat. Another zombie launch. I thought I had learned my lesson in March Ridge. You would think the zombies would learn their lesson. But I guess both me and them were just as stubborn. So the fight went on. And of course, fog rolled in, as it always does when I want to go fight. I had not picked a great spot. They were coming at me from all sides, but I was able to handle it. I was starting to feel like West Point might finally be reclaimed for the living. There did not appear to be any zombies anywhere. I picked off a few stragglers. So eventually I found what I was looking for. A group of them. But it was a small group, and I dispatched them easily. Another small group proved to be um, of no challenge. I had become quite proficient in killing zombies. You might even call me a master zombie slayer. And that did it. Finally, the fight I was looking for came at the hands of gunfire summoning the horde. But even that was easily dispatched. They were streaming in. When they stream in like this, they are easy pickings. They were coming from all sides, which makes it a little more difficult, but still, I handled it. Let there be carnage. Um, this one's getting close. Ooh, there we go. Got him. Was West Point finally free of the undead? Had I done it? Had I liberated another town? What wasn't liberated was my driving skills. 
I searched high and low, and I could not seem to find any more zombies. I decided to claim that I had cleared West Point. West Point was now my territory. I had made West Point an exclusionary zone. Something even the military couldn't do. Oh, hi. Bye. After I staked my claim to West Point, it was back to less violent endeavors. I cleared out all the machinery from my basement. Well, I mean, it's the first floor, I guess, but I was living above it, so I was calling it a basement to build my garage. With my claim staked in West Point, I decided it was time to establish my Moldraw base. I cleared the immediate area around my chosen factory, or warehouse, I guess it is. And started getting things set up the way that I wanted them. I put in escape ropes and put in a bed for safe sleeping. Next, I would have to knock down the staircase with my sledgehammer. And put in a water dispenser for emergency water. Next step was destroying the staircase so that I was 100% safe while I was in my new base. I set up my generator for power. And then I put in, I guess we'll call it a kitchenette. I didn't need a full kitchen since I would only be making weekend trips here. Or multiple, or day trips, I guess you could say. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the weekend. But I did need clean water. I just didn't need as much of it as I needed at my main base. I figured just one rain collector barrel would be enough for this base. Since I wouldn't be spending that much time here. And the final step, I fortified the lower level by replacing some of the walls that the zombies had broken. And with this final touch, the base was complete. I wasn't going to put too much effort into it since this was just a temporary outpost, but I was happy with what I had done. Just in time, too. I was exhausted. It was time for bed. Base established, I decided to go decoration hunting for my main base. The local bar was my first stop. After clearing out the owners, I took a few decorations and I took the jukebox. This would look nice in my new base. I took all the paintings and the potted plants. And I decided to do some fighting in Muldraw to clear it out before I headed home. It took a little bit of time, but eventually I found the fight I was looking for, and it was on. It is on like a prawn who yawns at dawn. I was using weak weapons both to break them to save good weapons, and because this was fantastic for scaling up. It was dangerous though. The, uh, the herd is not thinning. The herd is not thinning. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Um, the herd is thickening again. It was thinning, but now it's thickening again. Not good.
All right, we've cleared out the swarm. Excellent. There's always one last creepy crawly. As I made my way back to my vehicle, I had noticed that the undead had made their way to the vehicle as well. We fought in the woods as well. Dangerous, to be sure. Where were they all coming from? There can't be that many people camping when the apocalypse hit, could there? As the battle wore on, my weapons felt heavier and heavier, and my blows lost their potency. But on and on we fought. After resting up, my next objective was all the points of interest that I had found on my map throughout my journeys. There were a bunch of them here in Moldra, and I wanted to check them off. My first stop was a house marked Floorboards on my map. I found the local and dispatched them, and then took a look around, and I could not figure out what to do. I could not... I, I was unable to find the secret. I scoured the house, but was unsuccessful in my search. So I continued on my journey. And disaster almost struck. Had I not learned my lesson, holy cow, my armor took that one for the team. That was close. I kind of ran around in a blind panic for a while, so freaked out at what had just happened. I couldn't believe my luck that I was still alive. But then I went back to searching. And found nothing of interest. I was actually so freaked out by that close call that I decided it was time to head back home to check on my crops and make sure everything was going well at my house. Just in time, too, my crops were ready for harvest. Nothing quite like a fresh tomato 
right out of the ground. Mmm, delicious. My next stop was to check on my fishing hut. I checked my traps and checked to see if I could do any more fishing. The fish still hadn't recovered, but I was able to find a spot nearby. So I spent the day relaxing, doing some fishing, recovering my sanity after the close call. My nerves were finally starting to calm down. You know, in the old world, I never believed them when they said how relaxing fishing was. But after nearly being eaten by a zombie, it was the most relaxing thing in the world. With my sanity recovered, I set my sights once again on the east, Valley Station, and then on to Louisville. I heard there was a racetrack along the way. I wanted to check it out. So I started clearing the road on the way. The fight was long and grueling, but I made it to the racetrack and found it overwhelmed with zombies and overgrown with plant life. At least I got to do some fast driving while I was here. I spent the day clearing it of the infestation, not necessarily because I thought I would be back but because it was the right thing to do. And plus, killing zombies was my new favorite activity. Especially when there was a fence between me and them and I could pick them off from safety. Two years ago, if you had at told me that my new favorite activity was going to be slaughtering zombies, I never would have believed you. First of all, who would have thought that there would be zombies? And second of all, who would have thought that it would be so much fun to kill them? I learned my lesson this time. I stayed away from the lunges. If you could time it right, when they came over the wall was a great time to kill them. As long as you didn't get lunged at. They were, were vulnerable while they were on the ground, so that was the time to strike. I suppose these must be the redneck zombies who were all at the racetrack at the time of the apocalypse. Where were they all coming from? Seriously, was it race day when the apocalypse hit? What were all these zombies doing here? I didn't see any cars that they were racing. Maybe the race car drivers drew, drove away. Day turned to night and the rain rolled in. And the zombies kept rolling in. storm started turning bad, so I figured it was time to head home. The storm lasted for days, but I couldn't wait that long. I needed to keep fighting. I had my sights set on Valley Station proper, so I started making my way there. I had a great idea for a base where I could set myself out for forays into Louisville. If only I could get to it and the zombies were determined that I not get to it. Block by block, I fought my way up the highway into Valley Station. The undead did not want to give an inch, but give an inch and I take a mile.
I bless the rains down in Louisville with zombie blood. I fought till I was exerted and then leapfrogged forward until I was ready to go again. Until finally I reached my destination. The gas station and convenience store combo on the outskirts of Louisville in Valley Station. I wanted to set this up as my next base. But first I had to reclaim it from the Horde and they would not give it up easily. It's raining zombies. Hallelujah, it's raining zombies. To counteract the zombie rain, I made it rain shotgun bullets. And when I ran out of shotgun bullets, I resorted to melee. Holy cow, look at how many zombies. This was going to be tough. Could I defeat this many zombies? I was already exerted. What was I going to do? My guns kept jamming. I was not running low on zombies. On and on I fought. I was running low on weapons. I kept breaking them on zombie faces. I tried ducking through the trees to lose them, and while I lost a large number of them, there was still more. There is always more. And they found me. I tried to put enough separation with us between us to use my rifle, but was only partially successful. And of course, this just attracted more. I was exhausted, wet, and tired, and running low on weapons and ammo. This was a dire situation. I was now completely out of ammo except for my rifle, which was not good at short range. Oh, that was a close one. The zombies had actually scratched me as I ran past. I was now wounded, tired, exerted, out of ammo, and almost out of weapons, so I figured it was time to make my retreat. I would be back, but for now, I needed to lick my wounds and make sure I did not succumb to the zombie virus. I made a beeline for my car and quickly juked the zombies and fought them off. Oh man, oh man, that was close. He got me again with a laceration. I was in big trouble now. This time I was able to hop in the car and drive away. But would this be my death? It's entirely possible. I had gotten lucky this time. Neither of my wounds was infected. And after I recovered and rearmed myself, it was back into the fights. The fight for Valley Station had continued. I was a little bit surprised at how many zombies were still in the road, and it was about this time that I had discovered the magical power of the shovel. This was my new favorite weapon. And I made use of it. Little by little, I was thinning the swarm and making my way back to where I had nearly perished not that long ago.
there were so many zombies along the road, it almost felt like I hadn't killed any last time I was here. I was kind of confused how there could still be so many. But then I remembered that I was leapfrogging the groups a little bit when I was getting tired, so that could account for the extra amount of zombies, I suppose. I was getting close. There was one of the huge piles of zombies I had left behind from last trip. And there they were. Oh, back up, back up. We don't want to get out in the middle of that. Let's regroup a little bit. And now we can start the fight. This might have been the group that scratched me. It was time for revenge. You guys thought I was tough when I was tired and injured. Ha! What do you think now? How do you like me now, zombies? Each shovel. They were no match for the power of the shovel. Maybe if I had a shovel last time, they wouldn't have scratched me. Zombies are so gross. Look at them flopping around. So gross. Ick. Get out of here. You're not welcome in this world. Day turned into evening, and still the fight carried on. The zombies were relentless, but I was not going to give up either. I hammered them in the face with the shovel, and they fell before me, but more were always there to take their place. They came out of the woodwork. They came from the nearby neighborhood. They came, well, they came from everywhere. We'll just leave it at that. Eventually, I fought my way to a police barricade and thought to use it as a lure. For days and days, we fought the undead and I in the battle for Valley Station. Every day, I would fight until I was exhausted and then head home to rest. And then, when I would return, the roads would be clogged with zombies once again. Where were they all coming from? I didn't know, but I was determined to get rid of them. A katana, that's a nice find. We'll take that for sure. The evidence of my previous struggles was everywhere. Look at the carnage. Eventually, I fought my way to my would-be zombie lure. It seemed the zombies had turned it off for me and congregated in the nearby area. I was kind of expecting there to be more zombies than this in the area, but I mean, I suppose it was enough. I quickly dispatched them with my shotgun. They were no match for the sheer firepower I brought to bear. On and on I fought until I made it to my destination, my new would-be Valley Station base. First, I checked the nearby liquor store for any supplies there might be. But it was mostly just alcohol, and that's dangerous in the zombie apocalypse. And then I very carefully made my entrance into my new would-be base and made sure that it was clear. For once, it actually was clear. There was plenty of supplies to be had. And I would make this upstairs bedroom my home away from home for forays into Louisville. As soon as I got that corpse out of it. But before I could settle in, I had to clear out the surrounding area. So I set to work doing just that.
The zombies were running around like chickens with their heads cut off. So I helped them by cutting their heads off. Or, you know, bashing them in. Either or. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Watch your back. Another close call. This was, uh... More zombies than I had bargained for, and I was getting tired. This might not be the best idea. But in for a penny, in for a pound. So pound them, I did. Until I was getting too tired. So I tried to make an escape, but they had swarmed my vehicle once again. This was going to be bad. Some coffee would help, but I had more problems than just coffee could solve. Could my shotgun solve the problem? Well, yes and no. It could solve the problem, but it could also create the problem, if you know what I mean. And that's exactly what happened. I kept trying to double back to get to my car, but every time, there were zombies surrounding it. This would take some clever... some clever footwork to get back to the car. In the meantime, I kept thin, thinning out the swarm as best I could. Which was pretty darn good if I don't... if I don't say so myself. Led them all the way over to the road. If I could keep them all grouped up, I could deal with them. But they didn't want to stay grouped up. How much more ammo did I have? Did I have enough? That's always the question when you're dealing with this many zombies. Is there enough ammo? I was now officially losing ground to the zombies. I was heading back away from my base the way I came. Could I turn this fight around? Or could I make my escape? I was popping beta blockers and coffee like it was going out of style, but nothing could stop my exertion from kicking in. Now that I had exerted myself, I couldn't find the space between me and the zombies to recover. And now I was all the way back to the main highway. I had lost a lot of ground. And it didn't seem like I had made a dent in the horde. How was I going to get back to my car? Was that even an option at this point? Would I be better off just running for my base in West Point? But then how would I get back here? Would I have to take my van? I wasn't sure. 
So I kept fighting and did the best I could. My ammo stock's exhausted, it was back to melee, and my shovel did not let me down. Even though I was exerted, and the shovel felt heavier and heavier with each swing, I still was able to take them down. I had done it. At least for now. This gave me a little breathing room to bring my guns back into play, and play with my guns I did. We were still moving backwards, but I was still alive. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And that's all that mattered. Just one more step, one more swing, swing by swing. Finally, I had the breathing room to take a break, and that let me recover some of my exertion. But the zombies just kept trickling in. They were coming just enough to keep me from recovering. How rude. Unfortunately, I found yet another swarm, and man, was it getting hard to fight. I wasn't sure how much longer I could keep this up. I decided to make a uh, very slow break for it. Instead of fighting, I was going to try to make my escape back to the car. Fortunately, I could walk faster than the zombies could shamble after me, so I thought maybe there was a chance, depending on how many zombies are back the way I came. But it was worth a try, because I could not keep this up much longer. I was just too exerted. I was exhausted. My walking strategy seemed to be paying off. While I wasn't recovering any of my endurance, I wasn't... I, I was surviving, and I was making my way back to my car. Now, I was almost there. Would there be enough space between the zombies for me to get into my car? That was the question. And to my surprise, my car was free of zombies. Relatively. I thought I was going to have time to get into the car, but the zombies caught up to me before I could make that happen. I may have made a mistake by doing a little bit of looting first. It seems I had lost my pursuit. But why didn't I get into my car and drive away? Why, oh why? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? This was a very silly mistake that I made here, and hopefully it would not bite me in the butt, literally. Zombies came flopping out of buildings, and I should have known better because I had been hit by lungers before. Finally, I got in my car. But instead of driving away, for some reason I just repositioned myself and went back to fighting. Maybe I was feeling confident because there were only a few zombies. Perhaps I was just too overtaken with bloodlust. You would think that I was the zombie at this point. But eventually, I made my escape. Day 500. I could not believe it. I had survived for one year, four months, and 15 days 
all alone in the apocalypse. It had been a long, strange trip from our humble beginnings waking up in a Riverside trailer to clearing out Riverside, clearing out Rosewood, the prison, and the military base, then clearing March Ridge and even West Point itself. Now we had a fo foothold in Muldrow and Vili Valley Station, and we were moving towards Louisville. I had killed 14,891 zombies. And my skills were nearly maxed out. But what more would it take to clear Louisville and make it to safety? Was there even safety to make it to? Was Louisville overrun? Was anything beyond Louisville safe? We would find out if we could stay alive. Day 501 started with a familiar sight, fog, when I wanted to do some fighting. But I rolled on into Muldra. I was intent on clearing it. I went house to house looking for decorations and things for my new base. Oh, hello there. Sometimes it seemed like the fog was just as much my enemy as the zombies were. I was looting and pillaging my way across Muldraw when I finally set off an alarm. I was amazed that it was still working after all this time, but I thought maybe I would use this to help clear out the area. So I hid in a local building and waited for the horde. While I was there, I might as well do some looting. The alarm did attract the horde I was looking for but maybe this wasn't such a good idea, over-encumbered as I was with all my loot. So I snuck back to my car and deposited my goodies. And then it was time to fight. Keep things interesting, I kept switching weapons. They're coming out of the brickwork. The alarm didn't attract as many as I was hoping, so I did some shouting, and that brought them out of the trees. And then it was on to my next objective. Oh look, more zombies to kill. Don't mind if I do. Maybe I wasn't a very good zombie survivor since I was actively seeking out zombies to kill. Maybe I should have been hiding. But, where's the fun in that? I was starting to feel like a real zombie slayer. They barely seemed like a threat to me, unless they were in really large groups. Like, uh, maybe this group. Or maybe not. Why do they always go for my car? It's my car. Leave it alone. After a quick nap at my Muldraw base, it was back to clearing out the city. Ooh, that was close.
I was now over 15,000 zombies killed. But I wanted to go for 20. Little bit of a close call there, but I was able to zigzag through. Every time I thought I had cleared out an area, there were more. There are always more. It was about time to bust out the big guns, literally. I hate it when they won't group up when I want them to. I seem to have an uncanny knack for getting myself into trouble, but fortunately so far, every time I was able to get myself back out of said trouble. But when would my luck run out? How long could I keep this up? Maybe I should just play it safe. Nah. Where's the fun in that? The weather was starting to turn. It was starting to get cold. So I made the decision to take a drive. I drove back to my... Riverside base, and after some clever manipulation of my inventory, I picked up my antique oven and brought it back to my West Point base. And then, of course, I needed wood for my antique oven. Wasn't going to do me any good without fuel. I wanted to clear out these trees anyways, for better line of sight around my base. Alright, break's over. Back to killing zombies. I started heading back north into a valley station to resume clearing. The ultimate goal was Louisville. That sprawling mass. Look at them all running around. They're gone crazy. Where are they going? Death, that's where. Firearms, melee weapons, it didn't matter. I mowed them down. Day turned into evening.
and evening turned into night, and still the dead marched on into the meat grinder that was me. I alternated back and forth between clearing Valley Station and Muldra. Things were going well. Muldra was pl pretty much cleared out. I had got a lot of the decoration as I wanted when it happened again. I missed and fell and broke my leg yet again. This was the third time since the apocalypse that I had fallen off a roof and broke my leg. When would I learn? Fortunately, back home I had some supplies to help with the healing, including a comfrey poultice and a splint. With nothing else to do but to wait for it to heal, I spent the next couple weeks hobbling around my base doing maintenance, maintaining my farm and all of my supplies, and setting up a few more decorations. I was confined to my base for many days until finally, I was once again healed. So I went on a zombie killing spree to celebrate. And the zombies obliged me. The thing about fighting zombies is that it doesn't matter if you kill one. The horde does not care. All the horde knows is that it will eventually get you. You may be able to outlast one zombie, sure, but can you outlast the horde? The vast, innumerable horde. You are but one man or woman, but they are infinite. They have all the time in the world, but one mistake, and you're done. And that's what they're counting on. Just that one mistake. Eventually you'll make it. The Horde has time to wait. But do you? See what I mean? I almost got it twice there. The infinite horde was wearing me down, as it always does. It's a war of attrition. Their numbers versus your will to live, your energy, your mental focus. Which will go first? This time, I outlasted them. But what about next? After days and days of killing, it was time for a break. I had the bright idea to secure my base with a fence. And to do this, I would need lumber. Lots and lots of lumber. I broke several axes, but kept on chopping. My base was already relatively fenced in, so I decided to take advantage of the choke points and started building walls between the fences. This was taking even more effort and more lumber than I thought it would, but it could be worth it. 
to secure my safety. It took an entire day just to finish the easiest part of the wall. I was starting to rethink things. Sure, it was an added layer of security, but I was already pretty much 100% safe anyway, and this was a lot of effort. I decided a better use of my time would be to secure the lower level of my base. This would be more efficient and easier to get done. I walled in the areas zombies had destroyed. And I barricaded up all the lower level windows. Not only was this an extra layer of security, it would also alert me if anyone had broken in because they would have to destroy the barricades first and I would be able to see that right away. That task complete, I decided to go back to building the wall. I mean, it's not like I had anything better to do, right? It is the zombie apocalypse. It's not like I can sit around playing video games. I worked on this stupid wall for two or three days and I had only made it about halfway into the parking lot. That's when I decided this just wasn't worth it. I had so much more to go if I wanted to complete it, and I really didn't. After being stuck inside for a few days due to cold, it was back to clearing out Muldra. Someone had to reclaim this place for the living, and I was the only one in sight, so I guess it was up to me. Muldraw needed a hero, and there was no Captain America's or Batman's in sight, so I picked up my shovel and started shoveling away the undead. I really needed to do a better job of timing my incursions. I I was kind of tired of fighting in the middle of the night in the dark. You don't always get to pick and choose your battles, but against the undead, you really should. That's better. Now I can see. Um, I can see zombies coming. Lots of them. Maybe I don't want to see what's going on. was having trouble hitting them as they were coming over the fence for some reason. It was finally starting to maybe seem like I had made a dent in the Muldra population. We might be just about done here. The hordes were getting smaller and smaller and less frequent. This had to be a good sign, right? Alright, I'm calling it. I don't see any more zombies. I am claiming that I have cleared Muldra of the undead and reclaimed it for the living. With Muldra cleared for the living, I set my sights back on the northeast. 
to the mall. I wanted to visit the mall. I was hoping for a nice happy trip to the mall, but the undead had other ideas, as they always do. It's always a tense moment when your weapon breaks in the middle of combat. I was almost grabbed, but I was able to sprint away and regroup. Eventually I made it to the front gate. Oh hey, a welcoming party. Yummies, you say? That sounds delicious. Uh, but that doesn't look delicious. Let me just remove this. Apparently there was a good movie playing on the day of the apocalypse. There were plenty of people at the cinema. Or, well, former people? Look at this massive sprawl of parking lot, and it was loaded with zombies just for me to kill. Um, if you guys don't want the ice cream, I'll be happy to take it. Hey, this isn't so bad. Sure, there's a lot of them, but they're all spread out in these easy-to-manage groups. Sneaking. I've got a brilliant idea. This fossil oil truck has a light bar. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? First, we'll pop off with a shotgun shell to get things really started. And then you know what time it is. It's disco time! Yep, it had the wanted effect. Here come the zombies. Um. You remember what I said earlier about, uh, manageable? Um. I think I spoke too soon. Let's uh, let's pick off the guys on the outskirts here, and we'll see just how many that trap brings in. There's plenty for us to kill out here anyway. There's plenty of zombies for everybody. I mean, well, it's just me, so there's plenty of zombies for me. Clearing out this mall is a multi-multi-day project, so I got started. I mean, even just clearing around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, is a several day project. No sense wasting any time. I love it when they're asleep on the job like that. Perhaps even I had learned my lesson as I refrained from popping off with my guns and just casually crept forward, slaughtering the zombies as I went. If 
they were still being very polite and sticking to small, manageable groups. Remember what I said about learning my lesson? Well, apparently I didn't. The conga line was forming. And now they're streaming in from everywhere. I uh, might have made another mistake. Can I pull myself out of the fire this time? Oh man, that is a lot of zombies. This might be the most zombies I had ever seen at one time. Fortunately, my shotgun was up to doing some heavy lifting. And by lifting, I mean killing zombies. Re Redeadening zombies, right? They're not. They're already dead. I wasn't even bothering with my melee weapons at this point. There was just too many. And I had brought lots of ammo. Guns. Lots of guns. Whoa. I know Kung Fu. I had perfected a new te technique with the sawed-off shotgun. I could sidestep and shoot at the same time and still take out loads of zombies. The great thing about fighting in this parking lot is it is a huge open space, so I had plenty of room to maneuver. It seems like I always get into the most trouble when I have nowhere to maneuver. As long as I have space to move, I can always outrun the zombies. Or, you know, outwalk them. Is that a Supra? No time for that. There's zombies to kill. They had formed this nice straight line for me. If only I had an M16, I could really go to town. I was running low on ammo, so I had to resort to the melee. I was hesitant to do this against this many zombies, but uh, I think I, I thought I could make it work, and so far, so good. After all, I had whittled them down considerably with my firearms. Why was I adding more zombies to the group? Why? Why do I do these things? Nobody panic. Stop panicking. It's all good. Nobody panic. Not only was I running low on ammo, I was running low on melee weapons as well. I kept breaking them on zombie faces. I thought I was about done with the horde. And then I saw them. They were still inside the mall. Thousands of them. How many could there possibly be?
Look at the carnage I had wrought. So many zombies slaughtered. So many zombies left. The only ammo I had left was for my rifle, so I figured I might as well use it. This was a dangerous situation. There were zombies on all sides. Strike two. Got him. This strategy was working well for me so far, picking them off from long range with my rifle, and then switching to melee once they got into range. As long as there was no massive horde like I had seen before, I could handle it. Eventually I fought my way up to the front door of the mall where I had left that fossil oil truck. And after getting rid of the would-be car thieves and ignoring the thousands of zombies stuck right inside the door, I found that the zombies had broken the light rail. I could no longer summon them with the light rail. But the horn would still work just fine, so I drove around the mall honking, trying to get the zombies out of the mall where I could fight them in the open. Whoops. That could have been a disaster. Now that I had summoned the horde, it was time to de-summon them? Banish them, yes. With violence. On and on we fought. This seemed like a hopeless task. I didn't think I would ever get into the mall itself. There were just too many zombies. So once again, I set my sights north and started clearing the road to Louisville. We are on the road to Louisville. It seemed like I had cleared them out pretty well when I was clearing through to Valley Station, so I didn't encounter too much resistance. I fought my way to the small warehouse on the outskirts of Louisville where I thought to maybe set up a base for incursions into Louisville. It was right outside the checkpoint and would make easy entry. Plus, since it was a warehouse, there was plenty of opportunities to resupply and rearm inside. And I really liked warehouses to be able to make them secure bases. I could knock down the stairs and be completely safe, as well as set up a rooftop garden if I so desired. The road to Louisville is long and dangerous, and I was starting to see the remnants. It looked like people were trying to flee into the checkpoint when the apocalypse hit. There were ruined wrecks everywhere. And I was making more wrecks. 
of zombies. After securing the area, I decided to make it easier on myself in future trips and worked on clearing the road of some of these wrecks. Or at least a path through the road that I could make my way through. I wasn't sure how many times I would make this trip, but it seemed worth it. Interruptions, interruptions. Always with the interruptions. I'm busy right now. Can you guys come back later? This was hard work for my poor little car, and the excessive engine noise was summoning the undead. But I thought it was worth it. I even used my car to push other cars out of the way. This was more time efficient use uh, way to get the cars out of the way, but it was also damaging my vehicle, and I didn't want that. I was in sight of the checkpoint. When I had a brilliant idea. I would use someone else's car to clear the road. I got one started, it was a miracle, and I proceeded to use that car as a battering ram. I just had to be careful not to damage myself in the process. Oh, I almost flipped it. Oh, not quite. I had cleared myself a path now. It was kind of fun being able to smash into things without worrying about the durability of my car. I was worried about my own durability, but that's okay. And apparently those barricades are very strong. Now that the path was clear, I would be back. With my Valley Station base set up and relatively secure, I started exploring the Valley Station area. Surprise, I found zombies. Goodbye, zombies. Whoop. Watch your six. I was trying to keep them out of the road, but they had other ideas. Are you going under my car? The dick move, man. If the zombies would ever let me get there, my first stop was supposed to be the hunting lodge. I wanted to check it out and maybe get some more ammo. It's the battle for the Valley Station Bridge. Spoiler alert, I won the battle. But the zombies had reinforcements on the other side. As they always do. Eventually, I made it through the rough terrain and through the zombies and made it to the hunting lodge. And I set about clearing the surrounding area. There were a lot more zombies than I was expecting. But nothing I couldn't handle. Perhaps I was overconfident, as I whipped out my guns and started blasting. And that summoned even more. Oh boy, did that summon more. In the trees? This was a bad idea.
How could there be so many in this small remote area? I didn't know, but somebody had to get rid of them, and it might as well be me. This was a lot more than I had bargained for on this trip. But there was nothing to do but fight on. Eventually, I fought my way back to the hunting lodge and decided to take a little bit more of a cautious approach. Somehow, there were still zombies inside. I didn't like fighting indoors, but if I could sneak up on them, I thought this was worth it. Where'd those come from? That's why I don't like fighting indoors. With the building secure, I started looting. I was after the guns and ammo. After that, I started heading towards the hunt the shooting range nearby. I had to fought my fight my way through the undead once again. It wasn't quite as dramatic of a fight to get there as last as to get to the hunting lodge, but there were still a couple of close calls along the way. It only takes one mistake, and you're over. It's game over. Fortunately, today was not the day. I said today is not the day. Zombies just don't get the hint. They always think today is the day. Area secure, I got what I came for. The guns and ammo. I was after 9mm, shotgun, and 308 rounds. Those are my three rounds of choice for the, my three guns of choice. After weeks of killing, it felt like Louisville was not any closer to being reclaimed. When my second Christmas all alone came, at least I was more comfortable than last time. I decided to take the day off from slaughtering the undead and played some of my arcade games. And a little bit of pool and some pinball. And I celebrated by drinking the day away in my fully stocked bar. It was a nice day off, but how much more loneliness could I take? Was there anyone out there? I wanted to keep clearing the mall, but I was out of ammo, so I needed to resupply. So I made my way through Valley Station and headed into the checkpoint to Louisville. Oh look, zombies, of course. Not even the checkpoint for the military is safe from the Scourge. Apparently I am better than the military. I was killing the zombies, whereas the military had fallen. Oh look, they're guarding the gate. How nice of them.
I actually thought there were going to be more zombies than this. Not that there weren't a lot of them, but... This was my first foray into Louisville. Well, I guess this technically isn't Louisville itself, but... I was, uh... A little underwhelmed. I did a little bit of exploring, and I killed all the zombies around. It looked like someone had turned while they were being treated by medical personnel. Yikes. Then I went tent by tent and found the ammo that I was searching for. I combed through dozens of tents and went through dozens of supply crates. And I restocked my ammo. Ooh, cool shades. Once I had restocked my ammo, I took that ammo and headed back to the mall and started clearing out the mall once again. I really wanted to get into that mall with all the goodies in there. The fog provided excellent cover for me as I sniped the zombies. The bad part was I couldn't see where I was, so I had no idea how close I was getting to the mall and the horde therein. I proceeded with caution. You know, other than popping off with my rifle. Man, was it foggy. Whew, I could barely see anything. There it is. I caught a glimpse of it through the fog. The Horde. I kept trying to thin them down from range. There was too many to take in melee combat, especially with the fog rolling in and no visibility. The front door to the mall was in sight, and with it the endless horde. I continued to pick them off from range. They seemed just as hindered by the fog as I was. I had been killing zombies for a while now, but man, them creeping through the fog like this is still... One of the creepiest things I could remember ever seeing. And then they start accelerating. Oh man. Now that is scary. Especially with their weird jerky gates. They were just so unnatural. I wanted them gone. And they wanted me to join them. But only one of us would get their wish. Or now, I was the one getting my wish, but... Eventually, they would wear me down. It was only a matter of time. Overconfidence is the easiest way to get yourself killed, and I was overflowing with it. I walked right up to the entrance to the mall. How long could I hold back the tide? Uh, not very long, as it turns out. I 
I started fighting a retreat. The fog started to lift, but the fog of zombies did not. And as the fog lifted, I got my first peek at the carnage, and man, was it spectacular. So many bodies. And I kept adding to the count. It reminded me of one of those old war movies where you see the quote-unquote women picking through the survivors afterwards trying to find their loved ones. And just like that, it was once again New Year's Day. This was my third calendar year alone in the apocalypse with no one but the zombies for company and i was getting sad after the holidays it was time to set my sights on louisville proper i had conquered the western area and there was nothing left for me but the massive sprawl of louisville I hadn't been super impressed with the number of zombies I found in the checkpoint. The refugee area was much the same. But once I started to get into Louisville itself, business started picking up. Block by block, I fought my way down the main highway of Louisville. Pizza World, get it? Like Pizza World, but it's World. So funny. Hmm, plunky, whatever the hell that is. And we were back on the road again. Oh my, look at this traffic jam, holy cow. Everything I had heard about Louisville was true, wow. Look at all these zombies. Watch out behind you. This battle could go on and on, so I decided to set myself a temporary little up a temporary little base in a two-story house with relatively well fenced in area off of the highway. First I secured it. It was relatively zombie free. At least the inside was. Then I added escape ropes and dismantled the stairs with my sledgehammer. I now had a place I could safely sleep the night away in Louisville. For extra security, I barricaded up the doors and windows. I wanted to keep my lower level safe as well. That done, we were back on that grind, clearing out the zombies.
I made clever use of fencing to shoot the zombies from safety. And then shot them from no safety. Watch out behind you. And then, of course, smashed them in the face when they got too close. I was now over 20,000 zombies killed. But I wanted more. Could I get to 25? Could I get to 30? How many zombies were there? A lot. The answer is a lot. On and on, we carried on, the dead and I. For, I want to say about three weeks, I went back and forth between my bases and into Louisville and fought my way through Louisville. I slaughtered thousands of undead, but it didn't seem like I was making a dent. Hey, I scared those away. They had heard of me, I guess. I scouted the area for a new base or anything I could loot, but pretty much all I found were the zombies. There's some nice houses in this neighborhood. Or at least they used to be nice houses. I spent extra time in the nice neighborhood because I thought maybe I would move there. I was thinking about it, but my West Point base was just so nice I was so comfortable. One year and seven months into the apocalypse, I was at a crossroads. I loved my base. It had everything I needed, and I was comfortable. But to make any more progress, I knew I needed to move on. I was spending too much time driving back and forth to Louisville, so I decided to pack up and move to Louisville. I knew it would take many trips back and forth to gather up everything I wanted. So my for my first trip, I used my everyday car to tow my big mover van. I ran into a little bit of a snag at the bridge and had to drive them both separately across. But once across, we were, we were able to get moving again. I ran into a surprising amount of zombies considering I thought that I had cleared the road. It took me a while to clear them out, especially considering I had done this multiple times already. But eventually, I made it to my new chosen home, a beautiful mansion on the river in northeastern Louisville. I spent a couple of days unloading and organizing from my trip. After depositing my loot, I decided to head back with just the mover van, which had taken a little bit of damage during the trip. I stopped at a matching van along the way and took some parts from it to repair my vehicle. And just like that, my car was back to looking almost brand new. During the drive home, a blizzard hit. After I made it back to my base, I decided to wait out the blizzard in the comfort and safety of my, my warehouse base. Or maybe it was just nostalgia. I was going to miss this base. It had everything I needed. And I had worked hard on it. Either way, I had made the right choice. Look at this weather. Man, it's terrible out here. It took a couple days, but the blizzard finally ended. So I packed up my moving van, along with a trailer loaded full of stuff, and headed back to Louisville. There were much less zombies on the road this time around, thanks to my previous efforts. Still some, but less. Which was good, because I wasn't in any shape to fight, given how much stuff I was carrying. I slammed my car into a barricade on the way and, and suffered a serious wound. I was hoping I could make it back to my new base and stitch it up before it became an issue. It was bleeding very badly, and I was going through all the bandages I had on me, but I was almost home. I made it just in time. I got home. And I found my first aid kit, and I stitched up my wound before I bled out. 
now I needed to move in. So I spent the next few days, weeks even, moving in and getting myself established. After moving in, my first order of business was to secure my safety, and the first step with that was to build a front gate. I wanted to use metalwork so that I could see through it to make sure there were no zombies on the other side, and I would also be able to poke them with a spear from the safety of the fence if they came close. With my front door secured, my next order of business was chopping down all the trees in my yard to increase visibility and to finish the walls in the back of the house. I built nice log walls to keep me safe on my back door. Perimeter secure. Next up, I needed to set up my water containers so that I would have clean, renewable water. So I set about building a outside second story porch. Next up, I built my water collector barrels and set my generator up, and then I plumbed my sink. I started putting in my garden in the backyard, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted, so I took it out again. One of the great things that about this house that I had chosen is that it had a fireplace. I would not freeze to death this winter. I loaded it up. Might as well load up the barbecue also. I wasn't sure what I needed more urgently to get my water supply up and running or to get the farm in. So I continued working on my balcony. I wanted to put tons of water collectors in so I would never run out of water. To that end, I built a stairway up to a second level for my outdoor balcony where I would put the water collectors for the upstairs bathroom. I kept going back and forth, but eventually I decided that I had enough water for the immediate future, and I needed to get my farm up and running so that I would have food in the future. And then I planted my seeds. I like to have a mix of crops, so I planted a little bit of everything. While I waited for rain and for my crops to grow, I figured I should clear the area around the base so that I wouldn't be attacked. And while I was at it, I might as well loot the surrounding areas for any supplies I could use. It's not like anyone else was going to use this stuff. And it was my civic duty to get rid of the trash. I mean, the zombies. Oh, hi there. I didn't realize anyone was home. Oh, bathroom's occupied. My bad. After spending some time clearing out the surrounding area, I felt much more secure in my base. So I continued building and working on it. I knew I would walk off this edge if I wasn't careful, so I made sure to build a little fence to keep myself from doing that. See, I knew, I knew that was what was going to happen. I knew it. This was the fourth time I had fallen off my roof and broken my leg. Since the zombie apocalypse, would I ever learn? But there was nothing I could do about it except splint myself up and keep ki carrying on. For the next several weeks, I was stuck around the house while I healed up. So I took advantage of the downtime to get some little things done that I had been neglecting, like, you know, my hair. And I just took a minute to just breathe and, and just take it all in. I had been fighting and building and surviving for so long, it was nice to just sit for a minute with nothing else to do. 
I got up, caught up on some movie this, some movies that I had meant to watch, but never had the time. This is the life. Sitting in front of the fireplace with a good movie on and a nice can of chili. Can't beat it. This is the most content I'd felt since the apocalypse. This was a great time to work on my fishing skill and catch up some fish to eat. What's your order, fish filet? It was a week or two and I was starting to get very nervous. It had not rained yet since I had set up my farm and my water collectors. I didn't know how much longer I could survive without rain. Not only my lack of food, but also my lack of water could become an issue soon. But finally, at last, on day 697, 597, it rained. Glorious, glorious rain. It would fill up my rain collectors, water my crops. I bathed in it, I drank it, and I just generally blessed the rains down in Kentucky. Day 600. One year, seven months, and 25 days into the apocalypse, I was still going strong. I had reconquered all of Knox County except for Louisville, that massive sprawl of Louisville, but I was working on it. I had taken a foothold and was expanding my power base. I had killed almost 22,000 zombies, and my skills, well, I was pretty much a master at everything. Day 601. Wow. How, how had I survived this long on my own? I was finally healed, so I set about for a gas run. I needed some fuel. And of course, along the way, I found zombies. Lots and lots of zombies. Whoop. Little whiff there. I needed some sheet ropes for my new base, so I took advantage of the dead zombies to take their loot. This was supposed to be a gas run, but it was turning into a clearing zombie day. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I stacked them up into a nice neat pile whenever I can. This is especially important for driving, as we don't want to drive over the zombies later and damage our car. Wait a minute, am I going looting now? I thought we were going for gas. Okay, we're back on the road again. Oh look, squirrel, I mean zombies. Gotta kill them all. I had my sights set on the central gas station here. Thought it would make a great central location for refueling and forays. Where are you guys going? I'm over here. Hey, um, leave my car alone, please. Jerks. The gas station was relatively secure, and I set up my generator. I would leave this generator here, as I had plenty of them. And then finally, after all the distractions, I actually got what I came for and filled up my gas. It took me most of the evening as I had so many gas cans that I wanted to fill. It was getting late, but I didn't want to waste a trip, so I headed into the Gig Gigamart and started some looting. I still wasn't completely established in my base, so I definitely needed some backup food for sure. Unfortunately, pretty much everything was rotten. But I grabbed a few key supplies. My next objective, after getting all my loot sorted and everything like that, was the local racetrack. There were plenty of zombies there that I wanted to clear out.
No shovels are just as good weapons as regular shovels, other than the fact that they break much more easily. I think we got enough zombies that it's worth it to break out the big guns. Whoops. Strike one. Strike two. That got close. One day I might learn that it's a bad idea to set off shotguns in the middle of crowded areas. But today was not the day. Neither was, the, was it the day for the undead. They were taking shovels to the face. Much worse than bottles to the face, I'm sure. I was trying to get to that racetrack, but I was getting pushed back by the horde. I had been pushed all the way back to the main highway into Louisville. It was going to take some work even just to get back to my car at this point. Eventually I created enough separation that it was worth it to bust out the rifle. And I did some sharpshooting. Some sniping, if you will. Look at all this carnage. I know I said my goal was the racetrack, but I got distracted by the nearby hit vids. I mean, block. I mean, blockbuster? No, it's hit vids. That's right. So I started clearing out that instead. Eventually, I made it inside and started looting all the skill tapes that I could ever want. This was a great find. My skills were already pretty much maxed out, but I mean, why not? I also picked up any of the uh, entertainment ones that I hadn't watched yet. I kind of wanted to complete my collection there. So it took me a while to sort through everything and get everything I wanted. This guy is guarding the wrong door. Goodbye. Apparently there's someone in the bathroom that needs to get out. I mean, I guess we'll be polite and help them out. Ooh, hello. I knew you were there. All right, is there any more keys that take uh, is there any more tapes that I need? I think we've got everything. Even though it was late, while I was here, it made sense to check the magazine rack of the nearby doctor's office. These are great sources of magazines. I also checked the liquor store, but I didn't really want to drink any alcohol right now, so I didn't really take anything. I took some bourbon to make some fire bombs. But that's about it. And while I was here, I leveled up my electrical skill by dismantling all the cameras in the in the camera store. And I, of course, I checked this magazine rack too. It was the middle of the night already, and I was feeling brave. So I decided to sleep the, till morning in the back room of the doctor's office. Maybe not the smartest choice, but it worked out. I could have just driven home. It wasn't that far. While I was here, I did some decoration shopping at the local diner. They had some nice painting and plants that I wanted. And then I lugged all my ill-begotten gains home. Right and early the next, the next morning, I restarted my trip to the racetrack. This time I actually went to the actual racetrack and started clearing it out. Despite my previous efforts, there were a lot of zombies here. Though I decided this strategic move would be to start on the far side with the stables and work my way through. Time for a quick drink break. This is thirsty work. Next, I made sure there were no horses trapped in these stables. And after I verified that, I burned the sucker to the ground. Horse racing is a barbaric experience, and I didn't want any part of it. But I lit myself on fire. I was fortunate enough not to die, but uh, I did take a wound. 
Right to the groin, of all places. Oof. I can't believe I bombed myself in the groin. That's kind of hilarious. Not to be deterred, I kept launching my Molotov cocktails. I wanted this place to burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. The undead came out to defend their land. Some of them got lit on fire. Some of them took shovels to the face. Burn, baby, burn. I used up as many Molotov cocktails as I could. I had a lot. Oop. Strategic retreat there. Looks like we've got this thing nice and lit up. How are we doing here? Is everything still burning? Um, not as well as I had hoped. My groin was really hurting. But I really wanted to burn this place down. I'll burn this place to the ground. Need my stapler. It was taking me a lot more Molotov cocktails to get this place lit up than I thought it- Whoa! That one slipped out of my hand. Alright, this building's gotta go too. Can we get a good throw this time? There we go. Alright, let's get this side of the building lit on fire as well. Ooh, that was close. I don't need to be lighting myself on fire again. I don't even care if there's still zombies in there. In fact, it's better if they are. Maybe they'll catch on fire too. And let's light this area on fire too. Nice throw. Yeah, light that sucker up. Boom, baby. Uh, don't light the parking lot. Oh no, there's someone trapped. Oh, it's just a zombie. Goodbye, zombie. My arm hurts. I can't swing my shovel very well. I think I'll resort to the guns while I'm still injured. There we go. Now we got some zombies on fire. This is what I want. I really should head home and let my wounds heal, but I don't think I will. Got too much to do. Too many things to loot, and not enough time. Well, I mean, I guess I have time. This place light on fire yet? Eh, a little bit, but not as much as I would like. So let's go ahead and help it along the way. Boom. And let's get this side too. There's a, uh, a zombie on fire coming towards me. And this arm wound is really in inhibiting my ability to smash zombies. Do not like it. Especially now with that burning guy coming towards me. I better play it safe. I used up all my Molotov cocktails, so I had to make some more. I really wanted this place to burn to the ground. Looks like it was starting to catch. But just in case, let's keep spreading the fire. Yes, I did start the fire. It's been always burning since the world's been turning. Ooh, that's a nice catch. There it goes. You know, that tower looks like an interesting sniper nest. While I'm waiting for this place to burn down, maybe I can get up there and snipe some zombies. That sounds fun. That throw wasn't as good. So let's try it again. Uh, still not convinced that's a good one. This place just doesn't want, seem to want to light up like I wanted to. I mean, we are getting some fires going, but I was hoping that it would kind of spread out of control and burn the whole place down. We do still have some fires burning over in the, uh, the stables area. I let my wounds heal for a couple days, and then it was back to that zombie-killing grind. I, uh, I didn't feel safe in my new neighborhood with so many zombies nearby. There was a, a especially big apartment complex not far away that made me feel unsafe. So I headed on over and started clearing. I needed a way to get them out of the building, so the car horn would have to do. Even after I laid on the horn... They were still kind of trickling in a little bit. 
Come on, let's go, guys. Here comes some. They weren't coming fast enough, so I switched to guns. Not only would this let me kill them faster, but I hoped it would bring more to me. Still wasn't quite as many as I was expecting. Oh, here they come, streaming out the front door. Nope, oh, watch behind you. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's ramp things up a bit. Business is about to pick up. Here they come. This is what I was hoping for. Well, I mean, maybe I wasn't... I don't know. But I got it. Whatever it was. I got it. Here they come. Shotgun was doing some heavy lifting here. Or was it just making things worse? Sometimes it's hard to tell. And the spear broke the next chance I took to use it. That's crazy. That's what you get for using spears. They're great until they break. And break they do. I love shovels. I think they're the best weapon in the game. That's, uh, that's quite a few zombies. Oh, another broken spear. On my head rests the hopes and dreams of a thousand broken spears. And broken shovels. This is why I always carry two pistols. Ah, uh, they're too close for the rifle. This is not gonna go well. Oh man. Run! Run! Run away! They were pushing me back to the road. But I was whittling them down. Who would win this battle of attrition? Me or the Horde? There were so many of them that I was having to rely on my nightstick as a weapon. It's my, usually my emergency weapon. And I guess this qualified. Fortunately, I made it back to my trailer and picked up a couple of backup weapons that I had stored for just such an occasion. And it was back to that grind. By grind, I mean grinding weapons on zombie faces, of course. You know, this isn't really a high-paced action game. This is more of a relentless grind. It's really about endurance. Your endurance versus the zombies. Will you run out of strength first, or will they run out of numbers first? The Horde doesn't care if you kill one or ten or even a thousand zombies. There's always more. And just one of them has to get you whereas you must get all of them. Little break in the action. Whew. I'm exerted. I need to take a break. This is what I mean, though. You need breaks. The Horde doesn't. They're guarding my car. 
Very uncool, man. Not cool, zombies. Not cool. I'm going to take a little break sitting in the car for safety. And then it's back to killing. Oh, man. Where did all these come from? Woo. Almost got me. Stay out of the trees. It's hard to see. How many possibly, how many could there possibly be inside these apartments? Every time I think I'm making progress, another big group comes along and ruins my day. Well, I mean, I guess I ruin their day. Maybe a combination. They're guarding my car once again. Getting exerted. Damage is going down. Not good. Get some beta blockers for the panic. The unmitigated dread that is the zombie horde. Alright, it's getting dark. I think I've had enough for one day. Man, there's still a lot left. I don't know, they might follow me back to base. I think I better stop and take care of some of these. My weapons keep breaking. Do I have enough weapons to make it through the horde? We'll see. They're getting closer and closer. They're always guarding my car. What jerks. Come on, guys. That's my car. Leave it alone. Alright, let's go home and get some sleep. And early ne the next morning, we're back at it. Well rested and rearmed. These zombies don't have a chance. Um, I guess I spoke spoke too soon. When there's this many of them, they always have a chance. Oof! Fought that one off just barely. I think he might have got me. Yeah, looks like looks like we lost some protection in there in our arm. We got a chunk taken out. Thank you, armor. Tailoring saves our lives once again. That's that's like the third or fourth time tailoring has saved our lives in this adventure. Oh boy. Got myself into trouble again. Can the shotgun get us out of trouble again? Looks like it can. Whoop. Watch out now. Stay out of the trees. <laughs> Let's get a better angle. We want to group them up to maximize our bullet efficiency. All right, we've whittled them down a little bit. Let's go back to melee. Oh, maybe we haven't whittled them down that much. Man, they just keep coming.
Oop, another broken spear. We're getting very exerted here. We need to need to take a break. But will the zombies let me? No, they will not. I guess we can take a break from melee by using our rifle and picking them off from range. We gotta watch out from that line of sight, though, from that tree. It's really making it hard. That's what she said. They're getting close. Always keep a pistol on your hip for just such situations. Eventually, eventually, I cleared out the apartment complex. Killed around a thousand zombies or so to do it, but who's counting? Holy cow. After I thought I had the place cleared out, I approached with caution and went inside to do some looting. And boy, was there a lot of loot in all these apartments, but it didn't really seem worth it. I didn't really need anything that badly, and... Uh, just getting stuck, especially in an upstairs apartment, seemed not worth the trouble, so I didn't stick around too long and loot too much of the apartments. My next objective was to head to the pawn shop and farming shop in uh, South Central Louisville. I thought I could find some good supplies there. And of course we had to clear out the zombies along the way. This wasn't downtown Louisville, so it wasn't incredibly busy, but it was pretty busy. Much busier than any of the other cities. Even West Point. But by this time, I was an incredibly efficient zombie killer. So it didn't bother me too much. I was hoping for some guns and ammo, but this pawn shop didn't seem to have any. Most do. I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't really know any better, but I walked right past some of the best pants I could possibly find for protection, those skinny leather pants. Oh well. The zombies were guarding the pizza world like it was, uh, like it, like their lives depended on it. Maybe there was some food, some zombie food in there? I don't know. I didn't, I don't know. I don't know why there's so many zombies at Pizza World. Maybe they were having a pizza party when the apocalypse happened. Either way, I took a quick break to steal some parts from a nearby car, once again, to repair mine. This was a regular occurrence. Not surprising. I went back to the pawn shop. I decided that I wanted that piano, after all. And then the undead and I fought over the farming supply store. Spoiler alert, I won the fight. There's tons of seeds and everything you need to, to farm in here. Really a great place to stop if, you, if you're if you short on seeds or anything like that. Or tools or anything. They even had the farming books. And plenty of my favorite weapon in the game, the shovel. I loaded up as much stuff as I could carry in my car, in my trailer, and on myself, including some decorations, and headed back home. Next stop was the gun shop, way down in the south end of Louisville, near the checkpoints. I fought through zombies in the rain to get there. I planned this trip poorly. We we're not even close to there yet, and it was already almost nighttime. I should have left earlier in the morning, but for some reason I left for this trip in the afternoon. Bad, bad planning by me. We traveled on and fought on through the night. I used coffee to keep myself going, since there was no good places to stop. Good thing I brought my sledgehammer, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get into this place. And we're in. I looted up all the guns and ammo I wanted. By this point I had been up for over 24 hours, it was, uh, it was morning already. I wanted these ammo cases as well for my base, so I grabbed those too. Oh man, some some mighty big hordes around here. I was I was in no position to fight them, so I 
picked my way through. After days upon days of fighting through the hordes of Louisville, I noticed that I had gone over 25,000 zombie kills. So I decided to take a little bit of a break from the slaughter and maybe find myself a nice car to celebrate the 25,000 kills. Hmm, this is a maybe. Let's take a look. It certainly is unique. Uh, it would require a little bit of work, but not too bad. This is, this is a definite maybe. I decided to tow it over to the gas station where I could work on it at my leisure. Where were these zombies going? Either way, they were in the way, so they had to go. Eventually, I got the car to the gas station. I decided to keep my options open, though, and I found a really nice-looking police vehicle, and I decided I would steal it. I fought the law, but the law didn't win this time. I hotwired that baby and uh, got it running pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easily. It even had gas in it. Very nice. This car would serve me very well in the future. I would use the light bar as a zombie lure. But for now, I had to get it back to base. Is that a Supra? I secured the new cop car in my base. And then I went back for that Supra. With the new cop car and... Oops. Got stuck on the fence a little bit. With both new cars secure, I kind of forgot about that. Uh, rancher or whatever it was. Who needs it? If I can just get this thing in, anyway. That's what she said. There we go. We did it. And then around day 640, somewhere around there, it's hard to keep track sometimes, I maxed out my skill with the long blunt. I had become a master of the long blunt. What a grind that was. Now on to spears and axes. Or maybe firearms. Or maybe all three. After that, my next objective was the Army Depot store, where I found lots of great supplies. Especially a nice stock of guns and ammo. That's what I was after. That's the good stuff. A couple of days later, I was out looting, and a really bad storm came along. You know, this uh, Jim's Auto Shop seems like it might be an interesting place for a base. Hmm, something to think about. But anyways, it was time for yet another epic showdown in the rain. Me versus the zombies. Only one could survive. How do I always get myself into these situations where I'm tired and it's dark and raining? The rain turned into snow and still we fought on. And on. And on. They're trying to steal my car again. How dare they? I need to be careful of that apartment complex, or they might come pouring out. You know how I was saying something about being careful? Oh well. So much for that. I think I'll leave this problem for another time. Let's get out of here. The next item up on my agenda was building my home gym, and I knew just where to go. There was a fitness center way at the northern end of Louisville, near the bridge out of Louisville. I knew I could get some good fitness equipment there. I could maybe even find my way out of Louisville while I was there, so I hit the road. I drove through the power plant area, 
And of course, stop to kill a few zombies. Did I say a few? I meant a few hundred. Don't you just love what I've done with the place? There's no time to stop at the strip club. Ooh, I do want this Corvette, though. Hmm. How am I going to get this home? It's not really in great shape, but I think I can make it work. Hey, look, a prepper zombie wearing a school bag. That's interesting. I wonder if it was a student prepper. All right, so maybe I'll tow the Corvette and come back for my trailer? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, I guess. All right, we got it. It's, uh, it's kind of beat up, but I think I can restore it if I can get it back to base. Whoa, this is, this is kind of unwieldy. It's missing a tire, too. Oops. Should have taken care of that before we started towing it, I guess. Oh, man. This is a bumpy road. Whoops. Uh, let's go this way. Okay, I think I think I think I'm in the clear. I think I got I think I did it. I got ourselves I got myself a nice little Corvette. Yes. Now let's tow this sucker on in here. And we'll get it nice and set up so we can restore it. That's uh, good enough. I think we'll wait till tomorrow to go get our uh, trailer back. And of course, as always, fog. I hate the fog almost as much as I hate you guys, zombies. I'm gonna eat some junk food to make myself feel better. Hmm, snow globe and quag cake. My favorite. Where are those zombies migrating to? So interesting, seeing them migrate like herd animals. But, I don't want them around. Herd animal or not, they got to go. So creepy fighting them in the fog. I think this car has some parts I can use for the Corvette. I'm gonna take them. Wait a minute. Where where did I leave the car again? Or the trailer? Let me just ask for directions. Hey, do you know where the trailer is? Oh, they don't know. I think it's back here. Is this it? Um yeah, there it is. Found it. Whew. All right, let's get this into position here. Oops, a little bit of lead foot there. I'm going to break the trailer. All right, we're back in business. You know, now that I think about it, maybe we should have got the trailer on the way back. We got uh, we got a traffic jam to work through here and um, in the fog, too. That's kind of terrible. All right, this path looks clear. Oh, no, it's not. You know, judging by this traffic jam, I'm guessing no one got out of Louisville alive. But at least we can sneak through now. Drive on the sidewalk, don't mind if I do. There it is, body chisel, that's the place. Look at all this excellent fitness equipment. Perfect for our home gym. And now for a little breaking and entering. And I think I want a treadmill. I'll also take a fitness bench, or a weight bench. Now let's go see if we can find some dumbbells. I hear zombies, but I don't see any. These locker rooms are pretty nice. Oh, there's the zombie I was hearing. And here's the dumbbells I was after. Let's grab some and get out of here. Well, it's safe to say I'm not doing anything today. Holy cow. This is the worst storm, one of the worst storms I've ever seen. The storm went on for a couple days, so I was stuck at the base. After the storm finally ended, I decided I wanted to go to the art gallery and get some decorations to decorate my house. This was well into downtown Louisville, so this might be a difficult trip. I wasn't wrong. Apparently I wasn't the only one that thought a trip to the art gallery would be fun. 
Well, nothing to do but start clearing them out. I want my art. And I'm not leaving without my art. You know, there's probably a sneakier way to go about getting this art, but I've never been one to shy away from a fight. Although I really didn't like fighting indoors, but uh, it looked like it might be relatively clear, so I decided to take a risk. And I found some lovely paintings for the home. And some zombies. Why stop with just artwork? I wanted the sculptures, too. Aw, oh, look, you can li literally see him trying to figure out what happened here. That's what happened. What's in this room? Whoa! Whoa! Oh man, he almost got me. Yikes. Oh, that was a close one. I have got to be more careful. Whew, that was close. I guess we'll check upstairs, too. Oh! Zombies upstairs. Not too many, though. We can handle this. No problem. It seems to be like classes and offices up here. No more art for us to pilfer. You know, this canvas looks like it needs a little something. Maybe a little zombie blood. Now it looks good. Ooh, I like this painting. Let's take this. What the heck is this thing? Weird. Okay, now we must be getting into the modern art section. This is just colors. And what is that? So weird. I don't want that. Okay, now you've got to be kidding me. A zombie in a box with a bed. And there's a toilet on a, a throne on a throne over there. And here's a bunch of garbage. What? I'm so confused. Is this is this actually art? More of these weird sculptures. I don't even know what they're supposed to be. All right, I'm out of here. We've got, we've got enough. I think we've got enough. And it's getting weird. Looks like we got some friends out front with our car. I'm going to pick them off from range here. Uh, this might be a bad idea from inside the building. I'm, I'm rethinking my life here. Yeah, I, uh, I may have made a big mistake. Man, that gunfire is loud inside the building. Holy cow. Step away from the vehicle. All right, we got what we needed. Let's head on home. So I think uh, on my way home, I think I'm going to go lights and sirens here. Just to pull the zombies out of the buildings and into the road where I can see them. And next time I'll know what I'm getting myself into so I can fight them or not. If I, if I so choose, depending on what I can see. I always like to be able to see what I'm walking into, even if uh, even if it makes more zombies at once. I'd rather fight them all at once than have them jump out at me later. Now that we got all these decorations, it's time to place them. I think the statue will look good right in the entrance here. And then we'll put a painting right here on this wall. Just basically, basically we'll put paintings on every wall. I've got I've got enough paintings that I can put them on pretty much every wall. I think that looks good there. This is a great spot for the water lilies. And this one will definitely go there. That looks great. Uh, I want to put the naked lady in the bedroom, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. I guess that's a good spot. Now that that's taken care of, it's time to pick a fight. And pick a fight I did. Oh my goodness. Maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, that's scary. Oh, man. Trusty shotgun. Save us, trusty shotgun. Save me, shotgun! So far, shotgun is saving me. Oh, look at all those zombies. 
<laughs> oh man. This is, uh, this might be more than we even saw at the mall. And I'm getting tired. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Getting tired. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Getting sleepy. They're trying to box me in, but I won't let them. I'm too quick. All right, let's... I'm gonna eat some coffee. I'm getting very sleepy. Gotta stay awake. Can't fight zombies if you're sleeping. Whoop. The trick is to use little bursts of speed so you don't tire yourself out. And always walk when you can. I am so close to maxing out my aiming skill. I can feel it. I'm about to become a master gun firer. And there it is. Level 10 aiming. I am a master of using guns. I am a marksman, a sniper, if you will. But the zombies don't care. They still want to kill me. There's no time to celebrate. Only more zombies to kill. Oh, uh oh, they're they're coming from everywhere. I I I might I might be in trouble here. Might might be time to to make an escape here. Let's lead them on a merry chase. Whoop. That was a close one. As long as we have bullets, we're still in the fight. And there it is. It might be, uh, might be time to try to make an escape through an alleyway or something. They're trickling in from all sides. This is not good. Alright, they're thinning out a little bit now. I think we can, uh... I think, whoa. Oh, never mind. They're not thinning. They're not thinning. Oh man, that one almost snug up on me, and I'm out of water, getting thirsty. This is, this is bad. Things are bad. Things are very bad. This might be the end. I'll keep fighting. And walking away. And I have to, and I have to try to lose them. I don't think I could fight this many with no water. I'm gonna try to lose them in this alleyway if I can. See how many we can kill before, uh, before we run out of space here. Alright, the fence will help. The fence will help slow them down. So maybe we can make an escape. Oop, there's more in this area. They're everywhere. And now I don't know where my car is. And I gotta take coffee, which is gonna make me even more thirsty. Oh, man. They almost caught me there. Alright, I'm gonna try this alleyway next. That one just came out of the trees. Is this where my car is? I'm gonna try to duck in. Oh, there's zombies in there. Never mind. I think I, I think I lost most of them. Oh, never mind. Never mind. There's more. All right, maybe I can sneak. No, ne I can't sneak by. There's too many. And they're guarding my car. There's my car. They're guarding my car again. All right, there's not too many. I think I, I think I, maybe I can make it. I think I can make it. I think I can make it. Get in. Oh, oh, almost made it. Damn. All right, I'm in trouble. Big trouble. I'm getting very, very thirsty. There's a lot of zombies following me. 
Um, and there's a couple guarding my car. If I can get them away from the car, I can run over and get in. Okay, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. All right, I'm going to get home and drink some water. So thirsty. One year, 11 months, and five days. That's 700 days. I had lived 700 days in the apocalypse and killed 29,400 and 46 zombies. I had traveled from Riverside to Rosewood to March Ridge to West Point and Muldra and all the way to the heart of Louisville. I was clearing Louisville, but there were thousands of zombies. I was a true modern day Renaissance man. I was fit, strong, and fast. I could use many weapons, the long blunt being my favored, as well as firearms. My crafting skills were all but maxed out, and my survival skills were not far behind. But how much can one man take? How much longer could I keep this up? Was there anyone out there? I didn't know, but I was determined to find out. Day 701. I was a one-man zombie wrecking crew. I had depopulated all the suburbs of Louisville, most of Knox County, and was working on Louisville itself. I had settled in and made my home in Louisville and killed countless zombies. My thoughts turned to where the, the virus originated and I decided to check the local Peregrine Hospital. Shocker, I found it infested with the undead. But I was well armed and loaded for bear. I made my entrance to the hospital through the face of a zombie. Fighting inside is risky. I don't like it. There's nowhere to maneuver. But if I was going to investigate, I had to go in. And there was quite the welcoming party. They were coming from all sides, streaming from the upper levels and the hallways. I was starting to develop a false sense of security. When this happened, they were everywhere. They were coming out of the woodwork. Streams of them. With nowhere to maneuver, I was getting nervous. I held my ground as long as I could, and then decided to make a tactical retreat. The undead streamed out of the hospital like ants out of an anthill after it's been kicked. Fortunately, I was the boot. I needed a break, but there ain't no rest for the wicked. The zombies kept coming. Eventually, I earned myself a well-earned break of sitting in the car. And then it was back on that grind. That zombie killing grind. There were hundreds of them in this hospital. Here comes another wave. They are billions. I kept fighting till exhaustion and then I would take a break in my car to recover. What's this? The zombies are having a party and they didn't invite me. I'll show them. My newest move is smashing zombies through windows. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I killed so many zombies that I wore out my pickaxe. Fortunately, I'm a renaissance man and can kill zombies with any weapon. Somebody's trying to beat the lunch break, the lunch rush up there. And others just wanted me to be their lunch. Both groups would be disappointed. 
Um, or would they? They finally broke down that door, and here they come. Gotta watch your six. Oh boy. Time to execute a fighting retreat. Oh man. They're coming from every direction. Time to, uh, time to get out of here. That's why I hate fighting inside. There's so many of them that they stuck on the doorway. <laughs> they couldn't get through. There were so many. Got a, got a uh, World War Z situation happening there. And I'm not just referencing the corpse, corpses piling up. Just when I thought I was starting to make progress. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Things are, uh, things are getting, things are getting tricky in here. Ooh, close one. I fought the entire day until I was getting tired. I decided to head home, but on my way out, I let them know what I thought of them. And the next day, we were at it again. Oops. There's still so many zombies here. Holy cow. Maybe this is where the virus originated. Idiot. I got a little peek down the corridor, and, uh... I wasn't thrilled with what I saw. But the zombies were thrilled with what they saw. Me. Until I started chopping their heads off. But they didn't care. There were so many of them. They figured at least one of them would get me. And man, that's a safe bet. There are so many of them even outside the hospital. They're even falling from the skies. I killed dozens and dozens of mankind's fa I mean, uh, zombies, before I even made it inside the hospital. And what I saw didn't make me too happy. No signs of infection starting here. Oh man, they were waiting for me outside. I spent all day fighting and killing zombies. I killed so many zombies that I broke a machete. So I channeled my inner Leonardo and got out the katana. This thing cuts through zombies like a hot knife through butter. And the sound is just plain cool too. My katana was like a paintbrush painting the walls red. All day I slaughter them until I hit the magic 30,000 kills number. That's pretty cool. My katana allowed me to cut a path into the inner area of the hospital. And I saw signs that maybe this was where the infection had started. There were dried blood stains on the floor. And evidence of zombies bursting out of waiting areas. And a whole lot of zombies. I wanted to investigate further, but it looks like I kicked up a hornet's nest. They were streaming into the room. Maybe they had finally broken down a barrier somewhere, and here they came. I was doing a good job of fighting them off until I broke a katana, and then I figured it was time to make my retreat. 
now that I knew what I was up against if I wanted to breach that hospital, I decided it was a good idea to raid all the pawn shops and gun stores in the area. So I did a bit of a grand tour. Of course, I encountered resistance. Lots of resistance. But I was able to stop up, uh, stock up on tons of guns and ammo, so it was worth it. Hello there. Aw oh, man, this pawn shop's burned down. That's rotten luck. Next up on my agenda is a building marked on my map as commandeered by the military. I went inside to have a look around, hoping to find some M16 assault rifles. I did find a bunch of weapons, but not very many guns and ammo as I was expecting. I did find zombies though. Yay. After a long hard day of looting and killing zombies, I wanted to hit up the night glow to blow off some steam. Looks like I wasn't the only one with that idea. They really want to get in to see those strippers, huh? Okay, this is super creepy. Maybe I'll have better luck at the Velvet Tassel? Hmm, no. No, not really. Still super creepy. I wanted to complete my book and tape collection, so my next stop while taking a break from slaughtering zombies was all the hit vids and any uh, places that I might find books and videos in the area. And anything that I had not seen yet, I grabbed. Oh, come on. Can I not have just one day of peace and quiet? You know what? Fine. You want to get loud? Let's get loud. This isn't really how I imagined spending the day, but it is what it is. You know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you're not careful and you're not ready for it, guns can really be more trouble than they're worth in this game. I was, uh... I was developing a problem here. And as always, they've got the car guarded. How do they know how to do that? Maybe I should make a break for the car? Oh, too late. Too late. Alright, how am I going to get myself out of this situation? Maybe if I start meleeing, it'll be more quiet and I can lose some of them? Maybe that's wishful thinking. Uh-oh. Um, apparently I'm out of water. Starting to get a little thirsty. And I can't shake this exertion. I'm uh, definitely starting to get a little nervous. Definitely getting nervous. Uh oh, Wh whoop! I guess I'll just lead them on a merry chase for a little while while I try to figure this out. Definitely getting a little nervous about that, uh, the, the thirst. Definitely getting thirsty. Aw oh, man, they're guarding my car again. They're camping all over it. Alright, let's fire off some guns here. Get them away from the car, please. I, um,. I may have made a fatal mistake here. Things are things are looking bad. Oh god, and now I'm starting to get tired too. Hey, you zombies, leave my car alone, please. Come this way. This way, please. Over here. Oh man, there's already more over here. Alright, this is super risky. But 
I'm going to die of thirst if I don't do something. I'm going to try to duck into this building and get something to drink before they catch up to me. Oh god, this sink is empty. Oh boy. Here they come. Alright, let's try this bathroom. Oh, whew. Okay. We're back in business. Fill up our water real quick. Oh god. Alright, let's try ducking into this building. Again, this is really risky, but I'm low on options right now. Okay, I, I've got, I got myself some breathing room. Take a little rest here. Got my exertion under control. Got everything refilled and rewatered. Had a little snack. And now we're back in business. Definitely not out of the woods yet. Holy cow, there's still so many zombies. But I brought, bought myself some breathing room and a fighting chance. Well, maybe not literally. I don't know if I really want to do any fighting right now. Things are things are bad. Things are very bad. There's hundreds of zombies chasing me. Okay, there's my car. It's still guarded. Ooh, they're they're coming from behind too. That's what she said. Maybe uh maybe there's enough of them. Maybe there's few enough of them that I can fight my way through. But I have to be quick before the horde gets here. Oh boy. Oh, they're closing in. Alright, um... Getting exerted again. Uh... Oh, it's open. It's open. Oh, it's open. Let's make a break for it. Make a break for it. We can do it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, they're right there, right there, right there. Get in. Oh, yes. We're out of here. Whew. Oh, my God. Plow through, plow through. It was the two-year anniversary of the zombie apocalypse. I had come a long way, and I went through 31,000 zombies to do it. From my humble beginnings in the trailer park on to my utilitarian base in West Point, I was now living the life of luxury in Louisville, with my fancy new house. Objectively, it wasn't quite as safe as my fortress in West Point, but it was much more comfortable and I was much happier. But how much longer could I survive? Two years is a long time to be alone. I kept talking to myself. Was I going crazy? Was I turning into a zombie? Who knows? I decided to resume my investigation at the hospital. I thought maybe since it had been a few days, things would be calmed down. But boy was I wrong. There were still just as many zombies, it seemed like. Even though that mathematically doesn't seem possible, but there were still a lot of zombies. And I was determined to make their less. Preferably none, but it didn't look like that was going to happen, so I would just have to settle for less. So many zombies died that the pitchfork broke, and it was katana time once again. And maybe I'll save the katana for inside. I'll use a spear next. They were streaming out of the hospital, which works great for me because I didn't want to fight them inside the hospital. I was getting super exerted. Even my mighty katana was not killing them in one hit. I was so tired. Time to take a break. But not too long of a break. I mean, I wanted to take a longer break, but the zombies just had other ideas.
What the heck? Where did all these come from? I cleared this area. And of course, they're guarding my car again. Jerks. Eat spear. I am not getting in this hospital tonight. Jeez. Are those zombies just chilling on the roof? I think they are. Alright, it's time to go. I'm starting to get corpse sickness from all these dead zombies. I'm gonna have to go and come back later after they've uh, decomposed. Yeah, yeah, gross. All right, it's time for some well-earned lunch. Wait, wait, what? What? What is happening? Oh my god. Oh my god, my house is burning down. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh man, it's going up. Oh boy. I haven't even slept yet. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, turn everything off. Grab everything. Grab the generators. Grab everything. Loot as much as I can. Get it out of here. Oh no! My water barrels! Everything! My food, it's all going up in smoke! Quick, save the armory! Get the uh, get the guns and ammo! Ah, I, I don't even know what to do! Ah! This is... Oh my god! Oh no! The garage is lit too! Quick, we gotta save the cars! At least the cars have supplies in them for backup storage. Get the box fan out of here. Oh man, all that work, all that guns and ammo I collected, oh, all the weapons, it's all gone. I worked so hard on it. Oh, we gotta save the Supra. Get the Supra out of here. Careful. Ooh. Oh man. Save the Corvette too, oh my, my, my precious Corvette. Get it out of here too. Oh man, all that artwork I collected, oh my farming supplies and everything, oh it's all gone. In my 734 days alone in the apocalypse, this is the lowest that I've felt. I considered just letting the zombies have me at this point. I was essentially was going to be starting over completely. And I, I, I just, the thought of it, just, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. But I did the only thing I could and saved as much as I could. If I shed a few tears to mourn the loss, I mean, no one was around to see. And who could blame me, even if they were? Oh god, I'm still in danger. Oh, it's still flaring. Oh boy. After the fire burned itself out, I kind of wandered aim aimlessly and picked my way through the wreckage, hoping for just anything to take with me as I rebuilt. A day late and a dollar short, it started pouring rain while I was moving to my new chosen base. If only this rain had occurred a day ago, maybe it could have put out the fire and saved my base. To save some self myself some trips and some walking, I loaded up all my cars with as much as I could carry in them and used them to tow each other to my new chosen base. A few houses up the road, another of the fancy houses along the river. It was the house at the far end, closest to downtown Louisville, right across the street from the gas station. It was a good location. I didn't like it quite as well as the base that burned down, but it, it's a nice base nonetheless. And once I get it set up, it'll be even better. It took several several trips, but not as many trips as I would have liked because my stuff was all burned down. I wish I had more. While this house didn't have the nice big garage that the other one did, at least it had a nice open driveway with room for my fleet of vehicles. Obviously, my next course of action was to loot the surrounding houses to try to replenish my lost supplies. 
I had a lot of work to do to get this base up and running, so I got started right away. Moving in all my supplies. Clearing out the riffraff. Setting up some traps. Taking out the garbage. And perhaps most importantly, building a gate and fence to keep the hordes away. I really like metal fencing because you can see through it and because you can poke zombies through it with spears. But unfortunately, I just didn't have enough metal to complete my fence yet. I would have to take care of that ASAP. Now, my house had burned down, but the fencing was still intact. So I was still 100% safe in this old base. And fortunately, one of the beds did not burn down. So I spent one more night in the safety of my old base. And fortunately, there were some metalworking supplies left in the garage that didn't burn down. So I grabbed those to build my fence. Mmm, delicious two-year-old sink water. Fortunately, I didn't forget any of the carpentry I had learned along my journey, so I was able to fairly quickly rebuild my base. I wanted the double upper levels once again for water collection, and just for, for safety, I put in fencing as well. This roof, rooftop area would be great sur for surveying the area against encroaching threats as well. Clearing the surrounding buildings of zombies was also a very high priority for me. I didn't want them sneaking up on me while I was sleeping or tired from my construction projects. Things were taking shape. Slowly but surely. And don't call me Shirley. I destroyed a nearby office for supplies to build my fence. And once that was done, I felt much better about my chances for survival. All this stuff can just go right here, I guess. Uh, never mind, this is not a good spot for it. I'll build some storage back here, but for now, it can just stay here. Cutting down all the trees in my yard was killing two birds with one stone. Actually, three. It was giving me space to work with. It was clearing out the area to for visibility. And it was giving me plenty of building materials to work with. And boy, would I need plenty of building materials. That's for sure. Man, this is an exhausting project, but it was necessary. Just the building project alone was about a week's worth of work. And I hadn't even got my water barrels in yet. Well, I had one, but I wanted way more than that for safety. Look at all these logs. I couldn't possibly use them all, could I? Could I? Challenge accepted. I finally got all the trees and all the bushes cut down. So my next objective was to clear the ivy off the walls and make it look nice. construction project was coming along, but I was about ready for a break from all this work. It had been a long time since I needed to do a looting run out of necessity, but I thought it was probably time. Oh, what was that noise? I think my trailer just broke. That's not good. Methodically, house by house, I searched for supplies. This icy fridge would serve me well. We were two years into the apocalypse, so unfortunately, pretty much everything was rotting. 
but canned goods and candies and stuff were still excellent. The farming supply store would be an excellent source of goods for me, including some water barrels. A necessity right now. And I replenished my medical supplies at the nearby, nearby pharmacy. I made it to the Gigamark just in time to get tired, so I decided to head home and come back at a later date. On the way home, I set up some traps for some rabbits to cook up for some meals. It was time to start making my new house my home with some of the de decorations from the old house that I salvaged. My next brilliant idea was to head back to all my old bases to see if I had left anything behind that I could replenish my lost goods with. First stop was the temporary base I set up in Louisville when I first made it to town. Next up was West Point, one of the coolest bases I've ever built, to see if I had left anything there. Oh man, I missed this base. This was a, such a cool base. I was. Really sad to leave it behind, but had to do what I had to do to take care of Louisville. Look at this cool base. Next stop was my Muldraw base. I hadn't spent a whole lot of time at this base because it was so close to Louisville but that I really didn't need it. But it was a nice factory or warehouse with lots of supplies, so it made a good stopping point to grab some gear. Next I had to head back to base because I was in a bit of a car wreck and seriously injured my foot. Don't ask me how. But this was a real bad injury, a deep wound, it would require stitches. And then of course after that my car would need repairs so I cannibalized a nearby van for parts. Oh, zombie interrupting me. Come on, dude. Can't you see I'm busy? Where did that guy even come from? I cleared this area. There we go. Good as new. Well, uh, almost. Now it's good as new. With my foot and car taken care of, the next item on my agenda was rebuilding my armory. So I headed out to hit up some military homes and the checkpoints. Apparently I wasn't the only one with this idea. Unfortunately I had already checked a lot of the checkpoint, but there were some military houses nearby that I hadn't been to yet. So I forced my way in with the sledgehammer. Aw oh man, about half of them are burned down. This house has what I'm after. Guns and ammos, and I wanted those lockers. They would be great for my armory. Check, check, check. Oh, whoopsies. Good thing there's not that many zombies around and there's a bunch of barricades in their way anyway. But, uh, this is dangerous. Oh, are you guys stuck? Here, let me take care of that for you. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I love building metal fences around my base. You can stab zombies through them and they can't get to you. What's this, a military prepper house? I have got to check this out. Whoa. No one there? Whoa! Yep, someone there. In here, too? Uh. Oh, hi. Good to see you there. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Pay dirt. 
One day, I, while I was reading a book to regain my sanity from being alone all the time, I stumbled upon something interesting that inspired me. I thought maybe I could find better pants than what I was wearing to protect me from the zombies. Leather pants might be better. I had recently searched the clothing stores in Louisville and I didn't remember seeing any leather pants there, but I couldn't remember whether or not they were in any of the other towns. So I loaded up the car, gassed up, and took off. It was back to my old bases. I didn't anticipate heavy undead resistance because I had attempted to completely clear out the towns before I left. So I packed light. Ah, the familiar sights of West Point. I had spent a lot of time in this town, and I had missed it. I made it to the West Point clothing store with no incidents and searched everywhere. But I didn't find anything I wanted. Next stop was the bargain clothes in Dixie between West Point and Muldra. This time I actually had to exercise some caution because I hadn't really cleared out this area. And right away I ran into the undead. But I easily dispatched them. After a little breaking and entering, I took a look around. And I found something interesting. Black leather trousers. This might be what I was looking for. But I kept looking. I was confident that I had found what I was looking for, but I decided to continue my search anyways. On to Muldra. But first, a quick stop in the Dixie trailer parks for some hanging cabinets. I wanted them for my kitchen. I quickly grabbed what I was after and was back on my merry way. By the time I rolled into Muldraw, it was getting late and I was getting tired, so I decided to spend the night in my Muldraw safe house. Fortunately, it appeared to be just in the same condition I had left it in. While reading before bed in Muldra, I stumbled upon an entry that indicated that the pants that I had were the same as the other ones that I was thinking of, so I had accomplished my mission and I could head back to Louisville. But I really didn't want to spend to drive home in the fog, so I spent the day wandering around Muldraw, finishing clearing it out. There were a few zombies left that I had missed, so I took care of them. Once I made it back home, I decided to try on my new pants. They were looking snazzy. I hated to mess up the look, but I needed to add extra protection, so I went ahead and patched them. They don't look nearly as cool now, but they will keep me alive. Here was my old protection. I had 30s and 60s in my pants. And now with the new pants, I had 40 bite protection and 80 scratch protection in my groin and thighs and 50 bite and 100 scratch in my shins. Excellent. I'm feeling safer already. In all the <clears throat> excitement, I almost forgot about my investigation at the hospital. Once I had things kind of taken care of, I decided to head back and resume looking around. There were still zombies all over the place. But at least the corpses had decomposed, so I wasn't in danger of any more corpse sickness. I wonder if I can shoot those zombies on the roof. Let's find out. No, I can't quite aim at the ones on the roof, but I can shoot these ones on the other side of the fence for sure. Well, that got some attention. And, uh... Not exactly what I would call good attention.
Oh boy, they are all over my car. It's time to bust out the great equalizer, the shotgun. Cl click, click. Uh oh. Oh boy. Here we go. Man, there are so many of them still, and this is like the like the seventh day that I've been fighting at this hospital, and there's still so many. I switched back and forth between my guns, depending on the situation, and I was whittling down the horde. But can you ever really whittle down a horde? Their numbers are endless, and my ammo is not. Which would run out first. They were driving me back away from my objective and my car. But they had spread out enough that I could switch back to my melee weapons. Watch your six. Always watch your six. Did I fight them off? At least the ones that had followed me, that is. I had reduced them to a mere trickle. I retraced my steps back to the hospital, clearing up any zombies along the path. They were hiding in the trees, waiting to ambush me, but I was ready. They're running around like chickens with their heads cut off in that parking lot. I think they can't get to me. I think the fence is in their way. Good for me. Bad for them. I had finally driven them back. Back to the hospital. Those zombies are still up on that roof and they're kind of making me nervous. I honked my horn to try to pull them out. And, uh, it worked. Maybe not the ones on the roof, but... Wow. They were still more in the hospital. I could not believe it. And apparently I had missed some backpedaling on my path. I was getting it from both sides. That's what she said. Fortunately, I was up... Whoops! As I was saying, fortunately, I was up to the challenge. But exertion was an issue. You know what they say, the solution to exertion is a good shotgun. I was mowing them down. Just call me the lawnmower. Ah, uh, they're pushing me back again. The ebb and flow of battle was turning against me once again. Where did these come from? It's like they were like hiding in the corner here waiting for me.
Watch out for the trees. Oh, yep. Yeah. As I was saying, watch out for the trees. The tide was turning in my direction once again. And I pushed my way back towards the hospital. And my vehicle. Night was starting to fall, and our battle was not nearly completed. Me versus the Horde. So far I was winning, but it only takes one. I had to be ever vigilant. Darkness was falling as I finally made it back to my car, only to be pushed back once again. Ooh, that guy's got a katana, and I want it. Quick, quick, quick. Ooh, didn't have time. I was getting very tired. My swings were losing their potency. But I grabbed the katana. It was time to make a retreat. This was getting... Things were turning against me. I popped some drugs to allow me to force my way to my car. The zombies would not give it up without a fight. But I made my escape... I mean, strategic retreat. And came back again the next day, this time approaching from a different direction, hoping for a strategic advantage. seemed like I might finally have turned the tide on this hospital battle because there didn't seem to be any big groups. They were just trickling in around me and I was able to dispatch them one at a time. So I made my incursion back into the zone that I wanted to investigate. And yes, I was no scientist. But it looked for sure to me like the zombie outbreak had began here. The telltale, the telltale blood splats on the ground, as well as the signs of zombies bursting from waiting rooms. I thought that I had found my origin. But what should I do about it? Is there someone I could report my findings to? Or was I the only one left? You know, this is kind of a big morgue here, but there are no signs of any zombies bursting out of the of the 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 morgue, so maybe I had it wrong. Although there were the telltale blood splat splatters on the ground as well. Those zombies appear to have lost track of me. Although, now that I thought about it, when that huge horde came at me last time I was here, they did come from this direction. Is it possible they came from the morgue? Yes, it is possible. Oh god, oh god. Oh, he took a chomp out of me, or she. Oh man. Oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. They didn't break my armor. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. That'll get the blood pumping. You know, I think I've seen all I need to see of this hospital. I could and try to get in, up to the upstairs and investigate upstairs, but that seems extremely dangerous to me. So I think, I think we're going to call this investigation complete. 
That's CSI Louisville Zombie Edition Investigation Complete. It was eerily quiet in here now that I had seemingly killed off all the zombies. Oh, no, I hadn't killed them all. They were just waiting for me outside. How, how polite of them, I, I guess. Have you ever just thought to yourself, you know what this house needs? A big old fancy piano. So I headed out to get myself one. The undead didn't want me to have it. But I knew just where to go. The blue fox. There she is, that baby grand piano. I've got to have it. Six pieces, wow. And they're all heavy, too. I'm not even sure if this will fit in one trip. I might have to make multiple trips to get this piano. But I was able to pull off the heist, and I set out on my journey home with my prize. On my way home, I happened to stumble across a fire truck, and I had an idea. It would require a little breaking and entering. Always with the distractions from the zombies. Alright, let's see if the car has enough batteries to pull this off. Oh, the lights came on. Oh, and there's the siren. Alright. That should hopefully pull all the zombies out of the, the, the hotel into the street where I could fight them. I wasn't sticking around, but I would come back later to inspect my handiwork. And let's get this piano in place. Looking good. Yeah, that's beautiful. A fine addition to the base. Love it. A couple days l Whoops. <clears throat> A couple of days later, I went back to check on my lure. My siren lure, as I was calling it. Fast and Furious Louisville Drift Edition. I didn't even make it back to my to the lure before I encountered resistance. The chase is on. Ooh, a katana. Gimme. I was piling him up left and right. And center. I kept breaking my weapon weapons weapons? What's a weapon? On the zombies' faces. I was going block by block, slaughtering undead. Still no sign of the fire truck. I guess when you're in Louisville, you don't really even need to lure zombies out. There's just so many of them. I really should have labeled the lure on the map so I would know where to go. But, I mean, it's not like I was hurting for things to kill. They were all over the place. Hey, this area looks familiar. I think this is the place where I almost died a few uh, dozen days ago. Maybe a hundred days ago now? I don't know. It was where the epic chase in the, hall in the, in the alleyway happened. Whoop! 
Almost got bit there. Not even the devil himself can use a pitchfork better than me. It was starting to get dark by the time I finally made it back to the fire truck, and I found the siren not running. I was very disappointed, to say the least. My plan had been thwarted somehow. I wondered how, because their zombies weren't even around it. Sometimes if you leave a lure running like that, the zombies will destroy the light bar, but there weren't any zombies around. So I hopped in and checked, and it was still working. So I wasn't sure what happened. Oh, here they come now. Hallelujah, it's raining zombies. Now I've got their attention. But I'm not sure why it didn't attract them before. Oh yeah, we've got them now. This is what I did not want to happen. I wanted to be able to see how many there were before I engaged and maybe peel them off a few at a time, not have the entire horde rushing out at me and falling off the falling from the rooftops. Oh, it's always it always cracks me up when they do that. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Might be getting myself into another uh bad situation here. See if I can fight my way out of it. Oh boy. Oh, there's a lot of them. Thought about hopping in the car and getting away, but they rushed at me right as I was about to. As usual. I think I'm getting myself into a bad situation here. It's getting dark and I'm getting tired. I'm going to be getting sleepy soon as well. This area looks familiar too. I think I almost died here too, not that long ago. Oh man, they're streaming. They're streaming in. Well, as long as they stream in one at a time, it's fine. Oh, they're pushing me back, though. I don't like this, because there might be some behind me. I need to take a break. I'm getting super exerted. And my thrusts are losing their power. That's what she said. Oh boy. Alright, back to work. Oh, and here comes the sleepiness, just like I said. Oh, here they come again. I'm just gonna keep sitting here until the exertion goes away, and then maybe I can fight my way to my car. This is kind of dangerous if someone comes up behind me they can get me in the neck really quickly I've lost friends that way every time I think I'm making progress here they come again all right the groups are getting smaller that's a good sign oh man oh look at them around my car again it I guess I need to stop leaving my car running. I think that's why that keeps happening, is they hear the engine running, and they come and stare at it. Maybe they're staring at their reflections in the windows and confused? I don't know.
All I know is this is a problem, and I'm not sure how to solve it. But check out the hook while the DJ revolves it. Let's go. You and me, Horde. It's on, like Donkey Kong. It is on like a prawn that yawns at dawn. In the words of Andrew Bernard. Woo! -hoo. Look out. I'll take you all on. Did I finally get them away from my car? Is that where all these are coming from? Either way, they're pushing me back hard. It might be time to make a run for it. Look at this. I'm an artist. Oh, oh boy. There's a lot of them. All right, let's see. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, the car is still infested. Okay. All right. Um, getting tired again. Panic. Exertion. Everything's going wrong. And there's that thirst again. I'm literally thirsty, and the zombies are thirsty for me. Oh, there's so many of them. Let's see if I can lose some around the corner here. If they're not by the car, I can hop the fence and hop in real quick. Oh, nope, they see me. Well, there's less of them on this side. Maybe I can fight my way through. Now that some of them chase me the other way. Oh, this is still a lot, though. This is still a lot, though. Ooh, oh, oh boy. Alright, um... Whoop! Fancy footwork there. Oh man, it's still... They're still all over the car. Okay. Alright. Maybe I can create enough separation around the cars. Nope, not quite. Am I out of weapons? All right, here we go, here we go. It's open, it's open, it's open. Go, 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 go. In the other door? Oh, we're gone. We're gone. Let's go. Let's go! I had survived for... 800 days, that's 2 years, 2 months, and 10 days in the apocalypse. My skills were amazing. I was a master of everything. I could build anything I wanted, cook anything I wanted, grow anything I wanted, and the zombies could not stop me. I was a master of the long blunt, and I was almost a master at the spear at the axe. My aiming skill was maxed out as well. It took me 37,000 zombie kills to get here, but I was doing well. I had only scratched the surface of Louisville. The eastern half was still virtually owned by the undead. Could I reclaim it? The journey to day 900 started with the same old problems. Would I ever learn? I was in the dark, in the rain and I was sleepy. I suppose there's no rest for the wicked. There's plenty of zombies to kill. And why waste time sleeping when you can be killing zombies, I guess. Maybe someday I would learn my lesson and not get into these situations. It was time for a nice relaxing day of fishing to reassess my priorities and strategies and just give myself a break. I fished all morning and barely put a dent in my next level of fishing skill. I had fished up all the fish in the area. After taking my fishing break, I decided I wanted to kill some more zombies. So I went looking for a horde. And I found a few stragglers, but no no major hordes. Until I got distracted, I found an electrical supply store. Electronic store. 
and figured I could grind my electrical skill by dismantling everything other than a few distractions it went pretty well the desktop computers seem to be by far the best bang for buck but I disassembled everything in sight I spent the entire day tearing apart electronic equipment I was doing some farming and I noticed that I kept losing my potato crops. I wasn't really sure why, but I figured I would go to the farming surplus store and get some replacement seeds. And I found this lovely lawn chair on the way that I just decided I wanted. Whoop, keep your eyes on the road, please. And here we are at the farming surplus store. All the seeds and farming equipment one could ever need. Since I was in the neighborhood, I decided to stop by the strip mall and do some looting. I had previously cleared this place out pretty well of zombies, so I figured I could just duck in and do some looting without any troubles. I was mostly right. I picked up some black leather trousers and a mini golf course for my base. This would go nicely with my outdoor gym. I wanted to grab the climbing ropes too, but I couldn't seem to carry them. Next stop was the hardware stores for some weapons, tools, and other essentials. And then it was time to load it all up and head on home. All these domestic activities had me itching for violence. So I went in search of some zombies to kill. And as always, they weren't that hard to find. But I'm in search of much bigger game than this small group. That's more like it. If only they would come out of the building. I wasn't going in there after them, no way. Here they come. They burst down the door and into the street where I dispatched them until my weapons broke. Fortunately, I always have a spare on hand. This is getting a little bit out of hand. It's time to break out the big gun. It's always tricky when you have to open up another box of shells. It might be time to start heading back to the car. Maybe I can zigzag through the buildings here and get to the car. Maybe I'll lure him into the alleyway and then jump the fence. Haha, ha, you can't get me. But I can get you. At least some of you. I thought I could loop around the building and head back to my car, but the undead had other ideas. They were guarding it, as they do. Very inconsiderate. Oh boy, they are swarming my car.
After breaking multiple spears and pitchforks, I thought I had made it back to my car, but then even more of them started streaming out of the building. It was time once again to bring out the big gun. Unfortunately, this was going to ruin my little trap that I had placed earlier that had lured the zombies into that alleyway. And oh look, there's more coming from other directions as well. How fun. Oh boy. Look at them all. Look at them all, Anakin. I was getting farther away from my car instead of closer. It might be time to jump another fence. Unfortunately, this fence was not 100% surrounded, so they were going around it. But this bought me a little bit of time, and at least enabled me to pick a few of them off on the way. Now the question was, did I want to stand and fight, or hop the fence? It looked like there were more on the other side, so maybe standing and fighting was the better option. Or maybe I wouldn't even have to, maybe they got lost along the way. Oh look, there they are. But it looks like a few of them got lost. It wasn't. It didn't seem like quite as many. Maybe I could sneak back to my car now. Well, I guess not sneak, but at least maybe I could fight my way back now that the zombies were a little more spread out. Oh, maybe not. Yep, maybe not. <laughs> they couldn't possibly still be guarding the car, could they? Oh, yes, they could. And they were. It might be time for more fancy footwork where I run and jump into the car before they can get me. We might be back to that point once again. Maybe someday I would learn my lesson and not get myself into these situations. I would like my car back, please and thank you. More coming out of the building, of course. And finally, I cleared it to the cleared to the car. I was able to get in and get away. Whew. Another close call. The next day was more of the same. I was sweeping the streets of zombies. I had appointed myself the street sweeper and I was determined to clean up the filth. Hey, isn't that the fence that I almost died at previously? Never mind. There's zombies to kill. No time for reminiscing. Oops, I did it again. I created a horde, got lost in the game, ooh zombie zombie. I've earned myself a snack break, ooh, melted ice cream, I'll definitely take all that. There's a ton of that, this stuff in here. I'll take it all. Nom 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 nom. After clearing the streets, I decided I would take a break from the slaughter by taking a tour of the local campus. I headed on over to the University of Louisville, LSU. I guess that would be Louisville State. My bad. 
Unfortunately, the college kids did not seem to survive the apocalypse. This common area is pretty nice. Oh look, more computers for me to destroy to learn how to do my electrical skill. Nice science lab. All in all, a pretty nice campus. I mean, you know, other than the zombies, of course. The next day I decided to take the day off and spend it at home since the weather was bad. I caught up on my, all my VHS tapes. I was trying to complete my collection, so I watched what I hadn't watched yet. This led me to notice that some videos were missing from my collection, so I headed back to the local Louisville Hitfids to see if they had anything I was missing. There was a couple things, but I had checked this out place out pretty well before, so not too much. My next objective was to fight my, so, my to fight my way to the grocery store. Ugh. Easy for me to say. And do some shopping. The zombies really didn't want to let me into the grocery store. But I can be very persuasive when I put my mind to it. But eventually I made my way in. The fresh food was all rotten, but I picked up some canned goods and other supplies. By then, the undead had come around again, so I thinned out the herd. I spent a few days doing nothing but eating, sleeping, and killing zombies. until I had amassed over 40,000 kills. Seems like quite an impressive number to me. But there are always more. Now the question was, could I live long enough to hit 50,000? Day 50, another dreary, rainy day, and I couldn't take it anymore. I just had to make a change. Otherwise, I would go insane. So I gave myself a haircut. And then I gave myself a nice shave. But that wasn't quite enough. I needed to do something else. I decided to dye my hair green and my beard blue. That was it. That was the change I needed to stave off the boredom. The zombies would never see me coming now. The zombies would think that they had joined the Smurfs, and maybe they would leave me alone. Next I decided I wanted to try to complete my VHS collection, so it was back to the old towns for a little day trip, or maybe a weekend trip. I decided to take the Corvette as it was my fastest ride. This thing can really fly. I drove right on by West Point because I didn't think it had a hit fids there. I didn't remember seeing one. And I drove all the way to Moldra. The Corvette was getting a little beat up along the way. So I stopped to grab some parts and do some repairs. Next stop, Moldraw Hitvids. They actually did have a few that I was missing, because I wasn't in loot everything mode at this point. It was starting to get a little bit late, but I thought I could make it to the next town before I had to call it a night. It was 7pm, I thought I had time. Especially with how fast this Corvette is. Whoops! Oh man, I just fixed this thing. 
should have brought the truck for off-roading. Remember, kids. Drowsy driving is distracted driving. I pulled into my March Ridge base about 8.30 at night. And I was able to sleep in safety because of the way I had left the base. I did make a little bit of a mistake and went to bed really early, which means I woke up really early. Might as well make the most of it, though. Headed into the March Ridge hit vids and found a few more tapes that I needed. I hate driving in the fog. Alright, we need to do some repairs before we head to the next town. Oh, hey look! Another Corvette, and that one looks like it's even in better shape than this one was. Maybe we'll take that one instead of this one. Oh yeah, this thing is in great shape. It even has gas. Let me just hotwire this thing and plug in the emergency broadcast channel on here. And I'm out of here in a brand new car! I'm going to try really hard not to wreck this one like I did the last one. Now, I don't think Rosewood has a hit vid, so I think our next stop is going to be Riverside. But if I kill zombies along the way, maybe I'll roll into Rosewood in time to spend the night. After all, there's always zombies to kill. Always. Another reason why it was such a bad idea to go to bed so early and wake up in the middle of the night. I was getting sleepy and it was only 6 in the afternoon. I felt like I should be in a retirement community instead of killing zombies. There were a surprising amount of zombies out here in the middle of nowhere and it was starting to get dark. When I decided I wanted to fight zombies along the way, I had no idea that it would be this many. And I didn't roll into... Rosewood till, oh, till 11 o'clock at night. But once again, due to great planning, I had a safe base to come back to and spend the night in safety. The next morning, instead of moving on to Riverside, I got distracted and decided to check out the prison and see how things were looking. To my amazement, it was still burning. And some of the zombies had survived. And this is just not something I could allow. I really thought this whole place would have burned down by now. But instead, here I am, once again, killing zombies at the prison. I spent the entire day killing zombies at the prison. And I probably could have spent a couple more days. But I had other things to do, so it was on to Riverside. Rolling into Riverside brought an intense wave of nostalgia. This is where it had all began. This is where my adventure started, as a humble, unemployed gym rat living in the trailer park of Riverside. And here was my first ever base that I built with my own two hands. It was a pretty good base, too. I had really done a number on yet another car. This Carvette was pretty broken up, too, so I stopped and repaired it as well. Once my car was once again in working order, I rolled on into Riverside proper and hit up the hit vids there. And found a few more tapes that I needed. I spent the night in Riverside and then decided that while I was in the neighborhood, I would make a stop at the country club and see if there were any more zombies to kill. There were a few. I thought there would be more, though. I searched around the area and found a few more to kill, but 
not as many as I was hoping for. Why was I hoping for zombies? I don't know. I checked the stables, I checked the barns, I checked the horse racing course. Not very many zombies to be found. I guess I had done a pretty good job of clearing this place the last time I was here. After one more night spent in my riverside base, it was time to leave. Perhaps for good this time. I didn't know if I would ever be back to this base, and I would miss it. It was a good base, and it had treated me well. After a brief overnight stay in my West Point base, I decided to visit the mall on the way home. Let's go to the mall today. It seemed to be just as full of zombies as last time I left it. I thought maybe I could sneak in through a side entrance. And I guess technically I could. But the sheer number of zombies in the enclosed space kind of made me nervous, so I took out a few and then made an escape. It was pretty much the same situation on the other side of the mall. Watch out now. Careful. Back up, back up. Tell me what you're gonna do now. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. What? One day, one day, I would fight my way into that ball. But what, it is not this day. I see you at the crossroads, zombies. Crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. Where you won't be lonely. Because there's a lot of zombies. There were just too many zombies, and I was too nervous to try to make an entrance. So I content myself to clean up the parking lot a little bit. Or maybe a lot of it. It's amazing how many zombies are still in this parking lot. Even after all the trips I've made to this mall. How do I keep getting myself into this mess where my car is swarmed with zombies? Oh, right. By shooting off guns, that's why. In for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. They're, uh, blocking this way. I'm out of bullets, so I think we're going to have to try to take advantage of the fence and melee these guys down. This is not good. Getting tired. I'm in a cold sweat panic, as you do. Got to take some drugs here to keep going. Drugs. Even coffee is no match for the tiredness. Little by little, we are thinning the swarm. Alright, can I get to my car now? Not quite. Almost. It's like the zombies know that I need to get to that car, and they're like, nope, you can't have it. And I'm like, yes I can.
just a few more. Oh, more than a few. More than a few. More than a few. I'm getting very tired. Alright, we made it. I'm getting out of here. I made it home safely, no problem, but unfortunately while I was gone, some of my crops had died. So I had to weed my garden. I noticed that at some point on my journeys, my bulletproof vest had gotten a hole in it. I thanked it for its service and set off to find a replacement. I prefer the mil military bulletproof vests over the police ones when possible, so I headed back to the Louisville military checkpoint to search for a bulletproof vest. I like it both because I think it looks better and because it is camouflaged and it helps you not be seen by the zombies. I was also hoping to find an M16 rifle that I might have missed in my previous trips to this area, but alas, I did not find anything. At this point, it had been several days since I had killed a zombie, and I was going through withdrawal, so I went to find some. And as always, they weren't very hard to find. I wanted to learn how to use new weapons, but this is ridiculous. Kids, don't try this at home. If you want to go for short blades, you have to go with cleavers or hand scythes. The knives just don't work. Hammers are not great either. If you want to do short blunt, go for the nightstick. Where did all these come from? Did I do this? Probably. Ooh, this guy's got a katana. I'll take it. And now it's time to make things worse. That weren't bad enough. We need more. More! Not sure where they all are. I'm making an awful lot of noise here for so little zombies. It's so entertaining watching them flop around. On day 863, I drove to the nearby apartment complex that I had previously cleared out. And after grinding, I finally hit level 10 electrician skill. One more down. And on day 864, I finally hit level 9 trapping. One level to go of trapping. Enough of this domestication nonsense. They, bro, woke up and chose violence. Don't get trapped. Don't get boxed in. Gotta be careful. 
We can use cars as funnels to get the zombies to go where I want them to go. Time for a quick water break. Now it's back to work. Gotta get them off my car again. Got enough of them cleared out. We should be able to clear it out now and get to the car. Or I could stay and fight, which I think I will. The bloodlust is upon me. Pitchfork's working great, but I think I'll cross train and use some different weapons. We'll do the nightstick, we'll do our firearms. Back to the nightstick. Nightstick works almost as well as a long blunt weapon, just a little bit shorter. This is just not enough zombies. Where are all the zombies? Never gonna hit 50,000 kills with this little amount of zombies. That's better. That zombie's got an axe in its back. I want that axe. Whoops! Oh boy. That was almost a disaster. Your boy's been taking lessons from Vin Diesel in Fast and the Furious. Physics don't matter as long as you have family. I think the zombies think they're my family, but they are not. I don't want hugs. No, no hugs. No hugs. No breaking weapons either, please. How many weapons do I have left? It looks like enough. Whoop, watch out behind you. Now it's time to try out the cleaver. The cleaver is the only short blade weapon that I really think is any good. Holy cow, they're swarming the car again. Alright, got no time for cleavers right now. There's too many of them. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hide your kids, hide your wife, because I'm pitch fight forking everyone out here. I've thinned them and out. Uh, I'm thinned, thinned them and out. 
out enough that I'm going to switch back to the nightstick. Oh look, it's floppy time again. Oh boy. Alright. Don't get stuck against the fence. Strategic repositioning. So for one or two zombies at a time, I can use the meat cleaver short blade. For small groups, I can use my nightstick, but for bigger groups, it's best to stick with a spear. They're coming in waves. Ooh, that was close. They're coming in waves out of that building. It's really weird. You would think that they would either come all at once, that's what she said, or stream in one at a time. But no, they're coming all at once. That's enough of that. After my bloodlust had been sated for now, I decided to do some more work around the base. Starting by cutting down a bunch of trees, I was doing this for two reasons. One, to increase my visibility around the base, and two, for building materials. I had a project in mind. I spent an entire day and well into the night just cut, cutting down trees. This is hard work. Then when I woke up the next day, it was off to the factories for an errand and pick up some supplies. I needed metalworking supplies. I wanted to build a fence around my entire base. I would use wood for part of it, but I wanted at least the gates to be metal so that I could see through them. And if zombies came nearby, I could kill them through the fence with spears or weapons or, or firearms. First stop was the Steely Resolve, the metalworking factory. Carefully, quietly. Oh, hello there. You're not welcome. I'm busy right now. Please come back later. I found lots of metal sheets. Lots of metal sheets. I grabbed all the propane and welding bars that I could, but what I was really after was metal pipes and scrap metal. I checked the warehouse across the street as well, and I found some of what I needed, but I figured what I really needed to do to get this done was to disassemble car wrecks. It took the entire day to go through that entire factory and pull out everything that I wanted. And then finally, it was time to go to work. This was going to be a huge project, but I was a master carpenter, master metal worker, master of everything, really. So I was up for the challenge. It was going to take a while, however.
This is a multi-day project for sure. Maybe even a week-long project. This is going to be a massive well going all the way around both my base and the gas station for added security. Can't forget the back side of the base either. Don't want anyone sneaking in the back door. That's what she said. This part is going to take forever. This is a long wall. And that's all of the gates finished. I still needed some more parts for a little bit more fencing, so I went back to the main intersection of Louisville and dismantled car wrecks for parts. This is good also because it was less things for me to hit when I was driving my car, and I am definitely prone to running into things. And with that, I was able to make the corner of my fence metal so I could see through it. Maybe not the entire corner, but a good part of it. Enough that I could see. Well, actually, I was able to do pretty much the entire corner. And with that, the next day, I finished the wall. We built the wall. It's a big, beautiful wall. Nobody's ever built a wall quite like this. I noticed that somehow during the course of my construction project, I seem to have misplaced my military helmet. For now, this police riot helmet would do, but I wanted another military helmet. I looked everywhere in my base, but I just couldn't find the helmet. I don't know what happened to it. So I'll have to go get a new one, I guess. The, the police one looks cool, but it doesn't let me wear my glasses. But for now, that'll have to wait, because I've got a new goal in mind. I killed zombies. Many, many zombies. Until I had killed over 45,000 zombies. Holy guacamole. I'm a one-man zombie killing machine. I killed zombies until their disgusting stench started to add up and make me sick. Ew, gross. My next goal was to hit level 10 spear. Charge! Charge! Whoop! That zombie just tripped. Did he just stick out his foot and trip me? Charge! Oh god. Oh man. Thank you, level 10 tailoring. Just saved my life yet again. Nothing's broken, though. Interesting. Hmm. Not sure how we survived that one, but I'm still alive. Ah, 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 ah. Staying alive. Alright, zombies. That was a free shot. Now it's my turn. I like to have one spear in my hands and one on my back because spears break so easily. I go through them so, so quickly. I like to have two ready to go. So close. I'm going to take all these meat cleavers from the butcher for when I work on my short blade skill. I really shouldn't be fighting all these zombies when I'm carrying so much stuff. But I guess I'm a glutton for punishment because here I go. And if that's not enough, I'm pulling even more. Why? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. I feel like I fought here before. Hmm. Seems familiar. Is this the... Is this the art gallery? I think it's the art gallery. In which case, I've been here twice. Yeah, it is the art gallery. But 
I've already fought here, so whoop. why are there so many zombies when I've already fought here? Hello. Please don't sneak up on me. I don't like it. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, look. I found myself in the dark, in the rain, fighting zombies again. Big surprise. from every direction. This is a little dangerous. But I think I'm okay. Okay. Over here! Come on, everyone! This way! Hey! Hey, you! Here they come. Got their attention now. Whoop. That's what I don't like. Almost there. there and we got it level 10 spear after taking a few days off at my base I set my sights on my next goal level 10 axis this was gonna be a bit of a grind as in grinding axes across zombie faces that is I've got myself in trouble again. They're always guarding the car. It's like they know that I need to get that car. really went to town on the zomb zombies this time. They didn't know what hit them. But I did. It was an axe. I fought zombies the entire day, whacking them with my axe, chopping them down like trees. Hey, look, there's another axe. Once again, the zombie stench started getting to me. So I drove to another part of town, and the murder rampage continued. Fighting all day, all told, I killed around 1,200 zombies this day. Or, I mean, you know, re-deadened, unanimated, these zombies. 1,200 of them in one day. I broke multiple axes, and so I was left with a pickaxe. One of my favorite weapons in the game. Pickaxe, dicing through the competition. I hit level 9 axes. But there was still more to do.
Or at least the zombies felt there was more of them that I needed to kill. Once again, they're guarding the car. Man, I don't know why it surprises me anymore. I do wish they'd stop. If they can't stop, won't stop. Never stop, never stopping. And so shall I. Never stop, never stopping. I killed so many zombies that I was getting corpse sick at a second location in the same day. That is a lot of zombies. So I suppose it's time to call it a day. After that, I decided to take a nice long weekend of relaxing fishing. I started by checking my traps. The fish hadn't recovered from my last fishing expedition, so I had to drive down the street a little bit of a ways to find more fish. Fishing always makes me a little nervous, especially at night, so I wanted to break into this little fishing hut and fish from relative safety. And then I fished until I leveled up my fishing to level 5. My fishing skill is way behind my other skills. I fished up all the fish in the area to the south of my base, so then I turned around and went up north. Fish were not biting very much today. But I kept at it. Until I had fished up all the fish in this area too. With that nice relaxing weekend of fishing behind me, it was time to go back to work on my axe skill. And the zombies were only too happy to indulge me. They had missed me. But I wasn't missing them. With my axe, I mean. It's so funny when they jumped out of buildings. <laughs> They're so funny. Zombies, you crack me up. And now I'm going to crack your skulls. Seems fair to me. I'm creating art on the ground by hastily arranging zombie corpses. Can't you tell? Doesn't it look artistic to you? Another full day of killing. This time I racked up about a thousand kills in a day. But still, it didn't make a dent in the zombie population or in my level 10 axe skill. Once again, I'm being driven away from my car by the zombies. This is bad news.
Fortunately, I have plenty of axes because I'm going through quite a few of them, breaking them on zombie faces. I think I'm gonna be sick from the stench of all these corpses. Blech. After I finished slaughtering the undead, the next day my paranoia got the best of me and I spent the day removing every single tree and bush from my base. I didn't want any problems with line of sight. I didn't want to not be able to see anything, so they all got to go. Just seems like such a stupid way to die for a zombie to be in the trees and not see them when I could just cut down the trees and not have to deal with it. I don't know how a zombie would get in here to get into the trees, but that's why I say it's my paranoia getting the best of me. Plus now I have plenty of materials if I ever want to build anything else. The apocalypse is no excuse not to look good. Time to work on my fitness and keep myself in shape. Day 900. It was December 10th, if that even mattered anymore. What use were mortal caroled? Two years, five months, and 20 days, all alone in the apocalypse, with only 48,000 zombies killed for, com for company. My skills were almost maxed out. My crafting was completely maxed out. My aiming and foraging as well, with trapping close behind. I was a master of most weapons, with a few left that I was still training. I was working on my fitness, my strength was unbelievable, and I could sneak, and I was nimble. I had conquered Riverside, Rosewood, West Point, Muldraw, March Ridge, and half of Louisville was mine, but the undead were still out there. Were there any survivors? Could I find them? Find out in the next hundred days as we approach the thousand day mark. Day 901 on the journey to 1000 was supposed to start as a nice relaxing trip to the suburbs. I wanted to make sure I fully explored all of Louisville and cleared out the undead the best I could. So we did some zombie killing and looted some houses. I even set off my police car siren to attract zombies to me. It was all fun and games at first. Whoops! Fun and games is over. Time to get serious. My tailoring skill had once again saved my life. The zombies had ruined my day, and now it was my turn to ruin theirs. Oops. It wasn't quite as relaxing as I had hoped, but it was a successful day. I mean, for the most part. Until disaster happened. I crashed my car and broke my ribs. Oh man. This is terrible in the zombie apocalypse with no doctors in sight. I had broken my ribs. A simple band-aid would not do the trick. I rushed home to make myself a splint. But then I couldn't figure out how to apply it to my broken ribs. I could disinfect it and I could bandage it, but for some reason I could not apply the splint. 
Not knowing what else to do, I cleaned myself up. And then I repaired my armor. Thank you for absorbing that bite, armor. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to go to bed, but I was in too much pain. This is going to be a theme for later. It was about time to make use of all those survival skills I had been cultivating for the past three years. I went foraging for some comfrey to put on my broken bones. I found some fruits that I took, but no comfrey. This is pretty dangerous, but fortunately I had done a pretty good job of clearing out the area of zombies, and I didn't really run into any resistance. Where did you come from? A full day of foraging later, still no comfrey. I did find some food, but I didn't really need any food. I needed comfrey. Without the comfrey, I was in for a long and painful healing process. So I decided to drug myself up on painkillers and sleeping pills and try to sleep away the time and get healed as soon as possible. I also kept myself fully fed to try to improve my prognosis as well. For about a week straight, my routine was wake up, take sleeping pills, then go eat something, then take painkillers, and go back to sleep. It's a pretty boring and uneventful life, but, I mean, I had to heal. About a week later, I had to make a choice. I was running low on medical supplies, so I had to risk going out with my broken ribs. And while it was delib deliberate... Blah. It was debilitatingly painful, and it was slowing me down for sure. It wasn't my arms, so I could still swing my axe and cut down zombies. So I put my helmet on and snuck into the Peregrine Hospital nearby. This was very dangerous, with tons of zombies inside, but I needed the medical supplies, so I had to take the chance. Fortunately, this was my third or fourth, I can't even remember, trip to this hospital to clear out the zombies and for my investigation into the source of the zombie virus, so there was pretty much no resistance. There were a few stragglers that I had to kill, but I was able to loot pretty uninhi uninhibited. Going upstairs is probably a tactical mistake, especially in my weakened state but I needed the supplies, and I was pretty sure I had cleared all or most of the zombies already. Okay, so not all. Not gonna lie, this is creepy as hell. I can hear the zombies nearby. This is like every horror movie I've ever watched. you're in there. Oh man. So creepy. Fortunately, I'm good at creeping. Ha <laughs> ha Get it? Ha ah. Oh man, it's the old blood splatters on the ground for me. I did not do those. But, I found what I was looking for. Tons of sleeping pills and painkillers. I also took some beta blockers too. You, you can always use those. Or at least I can. I also grabbed any precious antibiotics I could find as well. Those things are hard to come by. I think that's enough for now. I don't want to take the risk when I'm still not feeling well. So it was back to drugging myself and sleeping the time away for a few more days until I just got so bored I couldn't take it anymore. This was probably going to slow down my recovery, but... I just, I, I couldn't just sit there anymore, I had to do something. So I started building some watchtowers for my wall around my base. All along the watchtowers. Pretty good view from up here. 
I like it. Oh man, I need to fix that. Fortunately, I didn't add another broken bone to my collection. It was only one story drop. Happy New Year to me. It was my third New Year's Day alone in the apocalypse. And it was day 922. That's two years, six months, and 12 days all alone in the apocalypse. I spent the day drugged out of my mind on sleeping pills and painkillers and forced me to feeding myself as many vegetables as I could stomach to keep myself well fed to try to recover from these broken ribs. Pop the balloons everyone. It's a happy new year. Another week gone by and I just couldn't sit around anymore. I was wasting my life away. And while I needed to heal, this wasn't a life worth living at the moment. So I decided to try to do some light looting. Maybe go to areas that I thought were relatively clear of zombies, where I wouldn't have to do a lot of fighting. I could just do some looting. And maybe I would let my car do some of the work for me and tow some trucks around to get them out of the way for later. Oh, hey, look, more medical supplies. I needed a new helmet. Mine had gotten lost somewhere along the way, so military checkpoints were one of my first stops. Oh, man, this hat's dripping. I gotta wear this. My plan to avoid fighting failed spectacularly, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. I even got a katana out of it. I call that a win. Yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. Apparently I hadn't really spent any time on this road. This is really not what I had in mind for the day. But as the old saying goes, when life gives you zombies, chop their heads off. Or, you know, something like that. I was sure that I had been down this way before, but apparently not. This is getting to be an, a, a lot here. And my ribs are killing me. Never send a meat cleaver to do an axe's job. That's much better. I cut them down with my axe. Finally, I fought my way to the other checkpoint and looted all the guns and ammo that I wanted. It was late and I was tired, but I was so close to my next objective and so far from home that I decided to just push through, relying on coffee, and I hit up A.A. Ron's hunting supplies for some more guns and ammo. And the nearby hardware store, E.P. Tools. Are you 
freaking kidding me? Oh man. I'm busting the hell out of myself and this car. Might as well loot the fire department while I'm in the area. Seems I'm not the only one that had the idea. Alright, let's go. Oh, don't, don't crash the car again. Okay. Oh, okay. Alright, let's head home. More boring days pass trying to heal these stupid broken ribs. At least they were getting better, slowly. So I spent some time sitting in my car listening to my CD collection. Both to complete the collection and to pass the time and keep myself entertained. After a few few days of that, I needed to repair my car. I decided to refill all my gas as well uh, while I was at it. And do my usual generator maintenance as well. Man, I really beat the hell out of this thing, didn't I? Holy cow. After refueling the car and all my many gas tanks, I decided to head out to look for parts to repair this thing. First stop was the parking lot of the racetrack that I had burned down. Just had to find some compatible parts. Except I accidentally picked up some sports parts when my vehicle is standard. Oops. Looks like a sports car, doesn't it? This thing is in such bad shape that it almost it look it looks better without the hood and without the windshield. That's a that's a bad sign. Well, at least I can repair the engine. Maybe it won't die on me then. That's looking better already. Snow turned into rain as I kept working, but the car was looking almost good as new. Rain turned into snow, and snow turned back into rain. What fun. But I had a working car again. Yay me. Another few days passed in a drugged out daze trying to get my ribs to heal. Until I once again got too bored to take it, or maybe the bloodlust overtook me. Was I as bad as a zombie? Was I worse? Maybe. So I drove around for a while looking for zombies to kill. I had done a pretty good job of clearing the area though. Other than a few stragglers here and there. Until I found a group of them at the medical center. Hmm, medical center. I actually need more drugs. The drugs. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc, you got my prescription? No? No, he doesn't have it. Well, I guess I could kill two birds with one stone and kill some zombies in the medical center. This is a much smaller medical center than the hospital, so there weren't quite as many zombies. But there were plenty of medical, medical supplies, so I grabbed them all. Just thinking about what goes on in this room. I'm out of here. This time I lasted about a week before the bloodlust and boredom overtook me again. And despite my injuries, it was time once again for a zombie hunt. And hunt them I did. And I cut them down. Whoop. Watch out now. Yes, line up for me. Thank you. Let's get a zombie conga line going. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 You don't win friends with salad. You don't win friends with salad. The zombies thought I looked like salad. Or maybe not salad? They're up on the rooftops. Santa Claus. Maybe I could get them to come down. But for now, I'll just slaughter the ones in the street. Or I'm redeaden, I guess. 
Can you slaughter something that's already dead? Hey, over here! Hey, hey, hey! Hallelujah, it's raining zombies. Check out my nifty spin move. Whoop, broken weapon. Good thing I got a backup. I always carry backups. Let's cut these fools down to side. Anyone else want a piece? You want a piece of me? Look at them flopping down from the roof. <laughs> so funny. It's kind of funny that the fall doesn't kill them. But, oh well, my axe will. Man, these ribs just will not heal. At least we're down to just a fracture now. First it was severe, then moderate. And now it's just a fracture, so I think we might be getting close. So I spent more time drugging myself out of my mind and sleeping the time away. More time went by in a drug-addled haze. I wasn't exactly sure how much time had gone by at this point. But I, once again, had to get out. So it was zombie killing time again, when suddenly inspiration struck me. I had comfrey patches back at my old base in West Point. So it's time for a road trip. Grab your snacks, put your tunes on, gas up the car, and let's go. And here we are, back once again, to the coolest base that I've ever built. I love this freaking base. I wish I could have stayed in it. I went through everything looking for some supplies that I could take with me. Because unfortunately, I didn't think I was ever going to be back to this base. As much as I love this base, there's really nothing left for me to do in any of these towns. But there it is, my comfrey. Yes, we're in business. I thought for sure I had a mortar and pestle somewhere. But apparently I didn't, so I went ahead and just crafted one with my expert carpentry skills. And then I went ahead and made my comfrey poultice and applied it to the wound. Hopefully now this thing would heal faster. Then it was time for one last look through this amazing base to find any supplies I wanted to take with me. And then it was time to hit the road, Jack. Back on the road, back home to Louisville. On the way back, I grabbed a second generator. I wanted to set it up so that I would have power when doing my maintenance on my generator, generator I could switch generators and always have one running. Next up, I should be resting, but I was feeling better, so I went to work for another construction project, finishing off my watchtowers. This way I wouldn't fall off them anymore. All along the watchtower. All that comfrey I brought back from West Point only lasted me a couple of days, so I went out in the middle of the night to forage because I knew that comfrey was more common at night. So it was time for another round of foraging. This is really dangerous out in the dark in the forest at night. But I really wanted to heal and the comfrey was definitely helping. I could barely see anything but it would be worth it if I could find some more comfrey. Spoiler alert, I did not find any comfrey. 
But fortunately, I didn't find any zombies either. On day 974, that's two years, eight months, and four days, I woke up and my broken ribs were finally healed. 70 days later. It's a good thing I had plenty of supplies to spare, otherwise I would have been in trouble being stuck at my base for 70 days. What a waste of time. But at least we're still alive and kicking, and now we can get back to our favorite pastime, zombie smashing. In my excitement to get back to that zombie smashing, I almost had another car wreck. It seemed like the zombies were hiding from me. It seemed it, it was almost like they knew that I was finally back to 100% and they didn't want none. But I finally found some and dispatched them with ease. I wanted to push this car out of the way, but the zombies had different ideas. Oh hey, maybe we can use no, never mind. No power. Oh well. It was an idea. Hey, over here! Over here, everybody! Hey, hey, hey! Hey! Hey, you! Hey, you guys! Need more zombies! More! Look at that little clump there. What are they doing? They're just chilling. Everybody, follow me! Zombies this way! I was getting close to 50,000 kills and I wanted to hit it today if I could. Whoop! Got out of that car a little close to that one. Here we go. Bring out the big gun. A little distance here before we open a box of shells. Spin a Rooney. Whoop. This looks familiar. Didn't I have another showdown with a board in this area? If so, how are there still so many? Maybe all the areas are just blurring together. Who knows? Yeah, I could have sworn that I've had a fight over here before. Maybe I'm just making things up. I've been alone for three years. Maybe I'm hallucinating. Either way, these zombies gots to go. Follow me, everybody. Let me just grab a quick snack while you guys are chasing me. Because why not? Over here, everybody! Everybody, we're almost to 50,000! Come join me! Who wants to be kill number 50,000? Normally I like to throw my weapons into zombies so they'll decompose with the zombies, but... It's a little hairy right now, so I'm just gonna throw this one on the ground. Nom 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 nom. Zombies can wait, I'm hungry. Man, okay, there's a lot of them. Uh-oh. Ooh, they're backing me into a corner. Gotta do a little quick spin. Little by little, we are thinning the swarm. Oh, okay, maybe not. The swarm is uh, continuing to grow as we <laughs> whittle it down. So I don't know if we're making any progress or not. It kind of looks like I am making progress. Although they are pushing me back pretty hard here.
Okay, I got him. Victory at all cost. Whoa! That jerk tore my helmet off. How dare you! I'm gonna put it back on. And take my vengeance. Vengeance, I say! As many zombies as this is, I don't think I'm gonna hit 50,000 kills today. Oh well. Oh well, there's always tomorrow. Yeah, I still need like 400. Tomorrow it is. Or maybe tomorrow it isn't, because I hate fighting in the fog. Oops, I forgot to have a weapon out. That was almost a big mistake. Quick break in the action to do some vehicle repair. And then it's back to the slaughter. But who would be slaughtered? Them or me? This time it was them. But what about next time? I was going easy on them using a short blunt weapon instead of my preferred axe or long blunt or spear. I was teasing them, making them think they had a chance. But they really didn't. <laughs> Or maybe they did. When there's enough of them, they always have a chance. Fortunately for me, this wasn't enough. You didn't bring enough. I decided to help them get enough. firing off my guns. But I was so good with my firearms that it almost was counterproductive for my goal of getting more zombies. Okay, maybe not. Line up, please. One at a time. One at a time, please. Uh-oh, I'm backing myself into a corner. Time for some fancy footwork. And some drugs. Drugs are always the answer, kids. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said that. Not that there's anyone left alive, anyway. They're all zombies. Oh, hello. Where did you guys come from? Just when I thought I had finished the fight, I learned that the fight was only half over. They were once again camping my car. Whoop, watch out now. I was turning this parking lot into a zombie carpet. Am I done now? No, I'm not. Um. Uh-oh. Oh boy, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Oh my god. Look at the size of this horde. Was this finally going to be my end? Did I bite off more than I could chew? Save me, shotgun. 
trusty shotgun to the rescue once again. Watch out for the corner. Watch out for the corner. Use the cars as a funnel. Corner, corner, corner. Watch out for the corner. There we go. Get a little distance here. Wow. Look at how many zombies. I hadn't seen this many zombies in one place in a long time. I was well over 50,000 kills now. Oh man. I'm just barely staying ahead of them thanks to my nimble skill. They're making a pyramid of zombies. As long as they fo don't form a wall, I'm okay. As long as there's just one or two at the front at a time, I'm okay. And I'm so strong and fit that I can do this all day. I can do this all day! Avengers Assemble. I can do this all day. And maybe I would have to. Look at the size of this horde. Oh my god. They are really pushing me back hard. But I think it's starting to thin out. Wow, I did it. Look at this conga line of dead bodies. I have never seen anything like this. Oh, hey, look, some stragglers. Don't mind if I do, finish them off. I'll even give them a chance and switch to a different weapon. Oh, hello. Maybe not. I tried to make it fair, but they didn't want to play fair, so... Axe time it is once again. Even after all those kills, look how many there are. I might hit 51,000 kills today. Get away, get away. Is that everyone? Nope, it's not everyone. Here's some more. They're hiding in the trees for some reason. If they thought they were going to ambush me, they were wrong. Because I wouldn't have gone into the trees except to look for them. Their plan was flawed. But was my plan flawed, too? It seemed to be working so far. Oh, oh she spoke too soon, maybe. Little zombie-killing pirouette there. Look at this road. This is crazy. This is crazy. And it's about to get worse. Time to cut them down again with my axe. Cause I'm an axe man. Ooh, naked zombie from behind. 
I don't play like that. That's what she said. This battle has been going on so long that it's starting to get dark. And who knows how many were still around my car, because they like to camp my car for some reason. After three years of killing zombies all on my own in the apocalypse, I had fought all day without getting tired once. My endurance was through the roof. Better than a marathon runner, even. Because I was used to zombie killing marathons like this. I kept fighting. I almost made it back to the parking lot where my car was. Whoop. And I'm being driven back again. Corpse sickness is kicking in. All the stench of these zombies. Ugh. Oh, it's so gross. So disgusting. Ugh. Could I get back to my car now? Looking around the corner. Oh, it's relatively clear. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. I lied. Please, I would like to get to my car now. I'm getting sick from all you zombies. I just want to get out of here. Please? Please, may I leave? Uh, just a couple more. Just a bit more. Oh, more than a couple. More than a couple. Alright, now we're out of here. Whew. We made it. We made it. It had been months, maybe even a year, since my last visit to the mall, so I decided I was overdue to take a look and see how things were going at the mall. Let's go to the mall today. Today, today, today. Driving to the mall, I saw something that terrified me. This message on my emergency broadcast system. It's breached, damn it, hold the line. We need us. And then it went blank. Where were they that they were getting overrun with zombies now? How far had the plague gone? Was this Washington? Was this farther? Would this mean the end of my emergency broadcast channel? Who knows? All I know is that it scared me, and it should scare you too. But I had no time to think about that. It was clear at this point that no help was coming for me. If help was coming, it would have been here three years ago. Either I was on my own or I wasn't. Nothing I could do about it now. So I pressed on. I fought my way through the mall parking lot. It was definitely clearer than last time I had been here. And made it to the mall entrance. It was still pretty infested, but once again, it was less than I had remembered. Oh man, I, I want to go in there, but I'm scared. It's scary. The zombies were trickling out, but most of them got stuck on the barricades. Ooh, I'm nervous. This is making me nervous. I know they're just going to jump out from somewhere and get me. But for the first time I've set foot in the entr front entrance of the mall, I had snuck in the side once, and but didn't make it very far. This time, I had breached, and I had held the entrance. Was this the day that I would clear the mall? Seems unlikely, but you gotta start somewhere.
Now that I'm inside the mall proper, there's actually not that many zombies in here. Most of them I had pulled out with my various zombie lures and the sounds of combat and gunfire outside. So there was really only a few stragglers left inside. It still made me nervous though, fighting inside a building with who knows how many zombies. And them coming down the stairs made me even more nervous. I did not want to get surrounded inside for sure. That's what she said? Okay, now that's what was making me nervous. All these zombies here at the front entrance. But at least they're mostly in front of me, so I can fight from one direction for now. I just have to keep my head on a swivel, and I think I'll be okay. I had grown in power since the last time I had been here. There was no doubt about that. My boat powers have doubled since the last time you saw me, zombies. Might literally be true, actually. I am a zombie killing powerhouse now. But it was getting too dark to continue inside the mall. I would have to come back again another day. I stayed overnight in my valley station base and was back at it again the next day. Looks mostly clear. Might have to actually go upstairs today. And that makes me nervous. There's a decent sized amount here. And they're flopping down from upstairs. Good. Come downstairs. I don't want to fight. go upstairs and fight you. Yeah. <laughs> That was kind of scary when he flopped down behind me, though. Coming down the escalator again. They're descending down the escalator since, like a, uh, a certain person using that term loosely, that we shall remain nameless. Oh, they're cornering me in the store. I don't like this. Lots of baseball bats. Too bad I'm not, I'm still I'm not leveling my long blunt skill anymore. I have moved on. More zombies flopping down from the second floor. Thank you guys. I appreciate you not making me go upstairs. Look at this carnage left behind from my visit the day before. All right, I guess I can't put it off any longer. It's time to venture upstairs. Oh, and this is what I didn't want. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'm cutting through them. There's more of them up here than I was hoping, that's for sure, but less than I was afraid of. Head up the electronics store to pick up the CDs I was missing from my collection. And the zombies that I was missing from my kill count. Oh, this is making me nervous. I'm streaming into this back room. It's starting to look pretty clear in here. Might be uh might be able to claim victory soon. Never mind, I can still hear a few stragglers back in the back rooms. Hello, friend. Goodbye, friend. Looks like these guys over here were attracted to my battle at the food court, but didn't quite make it all the way. Hey, look, that one's standing on the roof. Doesn't seem to want to come in, though. I know he's gonna jump me from behind while I'm fighting these other ones. Really? He's just chilling there? Alright. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Playing fiddler on the roof, I guess. Well, there might be a few stragglers left in here, but I'm calling this a victory and saying that I have completely cleared out the mall. Oh, there's one more. Yeah, there's, a, there's probably a few stragglers back in the back rooms, but 
I've cleared out the horde, that's for sure, so I'm calling this a win. Let's get on out of here. Oh hey, you stuck there? Let me help you. Oh look, they're waiting for me outside. How nice of them. I much prefer fighting outside. There's actually some pretty big groups out here, surprisingly. I thought I killed everyone outside already. Or, I mean, re-killed. Re-deadened, whatever. However you want to say it. I smashed the zombies. That's it. Well, that was so much fun that I think we'll go to the other mall, the Ohio Mall, way up in the north of Louisville, northeast of Louisville. This is the first time I've ever been to this mall, so I think I'm going to sneak in the side door and try to get to the gun store, the Stars and Stripes gun store. Quite the wel welcoming party, even sneaking in the side. Apparently a lot of people were shopping on the day of the apocalypse. I fought my way through the clothing store. And then back into the hallway again, where zombies were flopping in from all over the place. Even from the ceiling again. You know, I know they're a deadly threat and all, and they're super scary, but it kind of makes me laugh when they flop around like that. I fought through the hair salon next. The zombies pushed me back, then I fought forward, back and forth. I caught them coming down the stairs trying to get behind me. There were even a few survivor zombies in there. I guess their survivor gear didn't serve them well. A couple hundred zombies later, I was finally able to make it into the gun store where I cleared it out and then started looting. I fought on clearing the mall until corpse sickness overtake took me. I was trying to hit level 10 axe skill, but it was not to be today. I would come back later and get it done. The very next day, in fact, I decided to go through the front door, both for something new and to avoid the corpse sickness pileup I had created the day before. Despite the fighting yesterday and me pulling them back into the mall more, there was still plenty of zombies at the entrance to greet me. Oop, they're flopping. I just started my push into the mall itself when it happened. I hit level 10 axe. So I made a strategic retreat because I really wasn't equipped to fight with anything else at the moment. I mean, I had some short, blunt backup weapons, but nothing I really wanted to fight in the mall with, per se. So I decided to go check out the gun store across the street. But I couldn't get in. It was all boarded up. And I didn't bring a sledgehammer. Oopsies! I would have to come back. Fail. Epic fail. But, why waste a trip? So I- oops. Oh boy. Um... Well, I guess I could try to stand and fight. I'm not sure how many zombies are in the area. We'll see. Keeping in mind that I'm still using a short, blunt weapon. Is that it? Really? Is that it? There's a few, but, I mean, not nearly as bad as I was afraid of when that alarm went off. So that means it's once again time to make things worse. This would get some attention for sure. If 
that alarm didn't, this would. Whoop. Careful now. Even this is really not as many as I was expecting. Time for some, some katana work. I decided I needed a base of operations in this part of the city because it was kind of a long drive to be driving back and forth. So I decided this house would do fine. Look how fancy. Now I just had to clear out the area of zombies. Man, look at this road. Look what I've done to this place. So this is the location of my new outpost here. I didn't want to spend too much time on this outpost since I didn't think I would be spending a ton of time here. I just needed a safe place to sleep at night when clearing out this neighborhood of the of Louisville. So basically all I did was knock down the stairs and put in sheet ropes. After clearing out the zombies, of course. And then I used my na new base of operations to start clearing out the area. I was on a killing rampage until I got distracted. Is that a Supra? I decided I wanted it, so I started towing it back to base. It was slow going, my car wasn't pulling it very fast, and I had to stop to kill zombies in the way because I couldn't drive around them driving this slow. But I would eventually get it back to base. Then it was back to clearing the area around the new base once again. Until I once again d got distracted by a shiny new car. This time a nice red Supra. Ooh. Gotta have it. I need it. I want it. I gotta have it. This one is even in better shape than the other one, and it's red. I had to have it. This is some tricky driving, though. I had to recharge the battery with my battery charger, but other than that, it was in almost perfect condition. Oh, did I mention I ran out of gas on the way home? Fortunately, I keep gas cans in my trunk. After that, I spent three days going back and forth between my new outpost and the Ohio Mall, clearing it out. It took me three full days, and it was about 5,000 kills, and I almost died at least twice along the way. But I think I did it. I think I had cleared out every zombie in the Ohio Mall. What a project. I was proud of myself. The loved ones of these zombies might not feel the same if they were still alive out there, and if there was a cure someday. But for now, I had done my job. I had removed the undead from the mall. With the mall cleared out, I was starting to feel like I had been everywhere and done everything in Louisville, and maybe it was time to find somewhere else to go. So I was looking around downtown, and surprisingly enough, there's still hundreds if not thousands of zombies there to kill. So kill them I did. Careful now. Whoa! Don't get cornered. Stay cool. I 
I don't get panicked very much anymore, but this amount of zombies was doing the trick. I was creating another carpet. Of zombies, I mean. I was a little confused. Things were all blurring together at this point, but I was almost positive that I had cleared out this area previously. So I didn't really understand how there were still so many zombies here. But I was determined to make them not there. They were determined to make me join them, become one of them. One of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. Time to use some fencing to my advantage. Oh, look at him floppy! <laughs> oh my god, there's so many. Definitely need to take every advantage I can get when there are this many of them. Was I even making a dent in them at this point? It was unclear, but I fought on, determined to not succumb. My heart was thumping like a disco, but I didn't let it stop me. I killed them with my shotgun, I killed them with my katana, with my nightstick, with my machete. On and on we fought, the undead and I. During the huge fights, I came across the baseball stadium and I decided I wanted to burn it down because baseball is boring. So I started visiting the local liquor stores looking for bourbon to make Molotov cocktails. I also visited the Night Glow nightclub and grabbed all the liquor they had there. As well as the Velvet Tassel Strip Club. And just when I had gathered enough Molotovs and made it to the baseball stadium, it started to rain, ruining my fun. So I had to make up for it by entertaining myself by killing a bunch of zombies. You know what I mean. Not killing, because they're already dead. Obliterating? I don't know. I like redending, kind of. But I feel like I've used that term before, so we need something else. Even giving them the advantage and using my weakest weapon, they were still no match for me. How many more zombies could there be in Louisville? Feels like I had killed tens of thousands of them. Two years and nine months in the apocalypse equals 1,000 days. I had done it. What a long, strange trip. It had been. From my humble beginnings as an unemployed gym rat living in the trailer park to fully clearing all of Riverside, then Rosewood and destroying the prison and exploring the military base, on to fully clearing March Ridge and then Moldra and even West Point fell to my might. All the zombies in the mall and Valley Station and I even became the undisputed king of Louisville. I had killed 56,896 zombies in my thousand days, 
and my skills were almost completely maxed out. All of my crafting was maxed out. I was a master with firearms, axes, long blunts, and spears, with short blunt, long blade, and short blade coming up soon. Even my maintenance was nearly maxed, with my sneaking, light-footed, and sprinting close behind. I was maxed out on strength and almost maxed out on fitness as well. Even my survival skills were nearly maxed with maxed foraging, almost maxed trapping, and fishing coming along nicely as well. I was able to afford myself almost unbeatable protection along with my skills to become almost unkillable by the zombies. I had built in a pretty incredible life for myself considering the situation. I was very comfortable in my new fancy Louisville base. I had a fleet of cars to choose from, including Corvettes and Supras, and I was completely walled in and safe from the zombies. What would I do next? Was this the end of the journey? Or was the journey just beginning? Could I fully cl clear every zombie in Louisville? Or I had heard a whisper of another town to the west called Raven Creek. Maybe that would be my next destination.